one thing on there that you did the one thing you out there defense you went out there and stuffed it stuffed him Oh, That's a great job, defense. You stuffed him. Yeah. That's a great job. And offense, you ran the ball, and they said you couldn't run. You ran it right down their throat. That's a great job. Great job. Man, the good thing is we can get a lot better. We can get a lot better. We should have been up, what, 21-something, nothing at half. And it's a freaky deal. That punt, it, that return is the freakiest deal. So you knocked the crap out of that guy. And it's just a freaky deal. But, man, you fought, and you fought 60 minutes. I told you you went on a 60-minute ball game, didn't it? and it came down to 60-minute ball. I'm proud of you. I'm proud to be part of you. Let's keep on working. Oh, yeah. let's, let's, let's show them what Auburn's all about. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Terry Bowden. Brought to you by your Alabama Coca-Cola bottler. Always Coca-Cola. Colonial Bank. Good people, great service. Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos pressure-treated pine. If it doesn't say Osmos on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Your Alabama John Deere dealer. Nothing runs like a deer. By Golden Flake Snack Foods. One taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. LDDS Communications, the official long-distance carrier of the Auburn Alumni Association. Likes hot dogs. One bite and you'll know why they say, when it's likes, it's gone. Your Alabama Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. And by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, the caring company. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review, and welcome to the beginning of the Terry Bowden years of Auburn football. Coach, the script was uh, just perfect yesterday. Well, it sure was. The rain came early, it stopped, and the clouds parted, and we had a great SCC football, just like it's been played for years and years and years. Tell me how you felt on the uh, Tiger Walk. Well, I tell you, that was worth the ticket right there. <laughs> that Tiger Walk, I'm going to tell you, uh, the feeling that, that the fans give you, that was one that you just can't talk about until you experience it. And uh, I don't think I was more excited until that kickoff as I was at that Tiger Walk. And your team executed so well for three quarters. You, t you just had to be really excited, I'm sure. Well, things kind of fell into the place like we, we thought, we, we hoped it would. Our defense was able to, to, to control their offensive football team, and our, and our offense scored some points early uh, and did not get sloppy. And, uh, and I think that's what we needed to happen. And it was just, it was old-fashioned SEC football. Ole Miss brought some players in here strapped up and ready to play and Auburn came ready to play. Preparation is such a vital part of this game, and boy, the preparation came in handy for the things that happened in that game for you, like the onside kick and things like that. Well, you just don't know which part of the game is going to be critical. Your three field goals that we made, the one that they missed, our coverage of the kickoffs, our coverage of the punts, uh, the recovery of the onside kick, which kicking game area is going gonna, is gonna to cost you, their great return, maybe more great individual effort than a breakdown on our part. Uh, but the kicking game is always so important in a game like that. Yes, it is. Let's go into the dressing room now and, and talk to some of the players right after the game. And we begin first with Reed McMillan after he received that uh, onside kick and really uh, iced the game for Auburn. You are the designated onside kick receiver here, huh? Well, uh, I guess so. Uh, sometimes you pay the price. I kind of paid it tonight well, when you, I caught the ball. I can ball. see you trying to get that ball down. As as <laughs> I wanted to get it down, but I knew there was a chance I was going to get hit in the back. And, uh, you know, it happened, but uh, I got the ball, and, and the guys covered me, and it uh, came out well. You you had the same thing happen last year, didn't you? Yeah, I, I, if I can recall, I, I can't exactly remember what game it was, but it was about the same play. Our game plan at first was to come out and, you know, be able to throw the ball on because, you know, they're a tough defense to run the ball on, and they just kept sitting back and dropping eight guys back. And, uh, you know, we had to run the ball, and we, and we got the job done. You know, the, the line did a heck of a job, and the running backs did. And, and uh, you know, we had to pass when we, when we needed to at the end, but, uh, you know, we, uh, we did a good job executed, and, you know, we see what happens. We just got to keep working hard. They told us uh, we couldn't run the ball on Ole Miss because they blitz a lot and, and throw a lot of fronts on us. Um, the majority of the game, we ran the ball. The defense went out there, played hard, held them to uh, six points, actually. Uh, they broke uh, the punt at the end of the game, but uh, we fought, and uh, we worked hard for this victory. 
<laughs> defense, that's the word. That's what we're living on right now, defense, defense. Every game we're going into, we're going to stone. A lot of third downs in the first half, you stopped them. That was key. Yes, that, I mean, that's Auburn defense, and I mean, we, we're starting to live up to it. I mean, we're going to live up to it every game that we play. Jason, you played the option before, hadn't you? Uh, no, really. <laughs> no, it's the first game doing it. But the recognition was there because you were in the backfield most of the time when they ran it. Yes, um, I don't know, it, was, it wasn't really my responsibility for the quarterback, but uh, I just played down the line from fullback down to the quarterback trying to find the ball. I pulled it back out and then went back out. What do you think, uh, what, would you, what would you say about the defense done? Get the job done? Um, yeah, we got the job done. We still got a lot of work. Busted assignments. I busted a lot myself. I know we have to work on that. Just take out a couple big plays. We'll be all right. Well, you get down on all fours and you make the big play. <laughs> well, you know, it was just one of those great defensive calls, Coach Hall called, and uh, I just was fortunate enough to go in there and strip the ball to the quarterback and recover it, and you know, they started a rally, and I'm just glad I was able to help the team win somehow. Oh, they really put the game in your hands several times. Well, I don't know exactly what kind of, you know, I don't call the plays. I just go out and kick on fourth down. So, um, uh, you know, the, the kicks were big, and, and you didn't know how big they were going to, you know, exactly how big they were until the end of the game. And it turned out, you look at the scoreboard, you're like, well, you know, those are some big field goals. So, uh, but Brian Brinsfield did a great job, and uh, Sean Carter did an excellent job holding the football, and Terry Daniel and Brian Karkowska both had great nights, too. So I think uh, as far as a kicker standpoint, I think we're very pleased with our performance. Air transportation for the Tigers provided by Delta Airlines. Delta, the official airline of the Auburn Tigers. Okay, we're having fun watching the commercials. First time you've seen some of them, huh? That's right. Finally got it. Got to got an Osmos commercial. <laughs> we should say, Coach, that uh, we are, of course, replaying last Thursday night's Auburn win over Ole Miss by a score of 16 to 12. And uh, were you surprised the crowd I was? I thought it was really great. Well, I tell you, that, I it, was a, it, was a, it was so important for that crowd, from Tiger Walk right up to the game time, uh, where the, the total support of that team, and it had an effect. I, I could just see it had an effect on our players, and uh, the, it was a home field advantage. And uh, it was a great crowd. But I, th I thought there was going to be a big crowd. There were people just, the, the, the letters and cards and that we had gotten and indications were that they were going to come. Shame the students aren't back because it would have been a sellout if the students had been on campus. You know, there were a lot of young people there. I think the students, there was a lot of, there was a good group of students, but not the numbers that we'll have uh, when school starts. Yeah. Okay, we will begin uh, with uh, Ole Miss' first possession and a key third down play. Uh, that stops their drive, and this is so important in the first half, you stop them almost every time. Well, the defense was in such control, and, and, and a lot of people say, well, gosh, I thought Coach Bowden was going to throw the ball a lot, but what happened, we got ahead of them, and our defense kept stopping them. We decided we're going to run the ball and run the ball and run the ball and not let the turnovers happen that happened last year or the sloppy play, and so we threw it when we had to. There's a nice catch there by uh, Thomas Bailey. We threw it in the first drive, got ahead, and then we let the defense do the business. You'll see some throwing here. Frank, you know, Frank Sanders caught that little pass over the middle and got us down. Now we're, you know, about the 15-yard line. Fixing to be down inside the 10 here. And a uh, uh, third and one play here. Very critical in the drive. Well, third, very critical third and one here. And then uh, uh, I don't know if it, if it shows it, but, of course, we score a touchdown uh, that is uh, called back. And we have to settle for a field goal. Critical mistake. It'll throw you better correct because somewhere along the line it's going to hurt you. But, but scoring on that first drive is very important. Oh, it's it set the tempo. Then watch this. There's Harold Morrow, one of our tailbacks, uh, made an outstanding tackle inside the 20. Big third and six play coming here. And you stuff him. Well, like I say, the defense was in such control, I kind of let Wayne Hall kind of write my offensive game plan. They were controlling it, so I, I was able to be very conservative and go out there and just try to do the best way to win a game. Great play. Calvin Jackson may have been the most valuable player out there, some of the plays he made. Now, they have, you get a turnover, and uh, then Otis Mounds makes a critical stop on third down there to stop that drive. And so the Tigers have played great defense so far and now uh, lead the game by a score of three to nothing. And you are beginning now to get a feel for the game, I would. Uh, well, that's uh, right. We came into this football game uh, expecting them to blitz us every down. It had been their style all last year. We've had to throw the ball against a blitzing defense. Well, they come out and rush only three linemen and drop eight into coverage, which means we have to run the ball. So the game plan was now established. We were going to have to run the football. And as we got ahead, they blitzed late, but we weren't going to pass then. We were ahead, and so we continued to run, and it worked well. As we look now in the second uh, quarter of the game now, uh, you actually run a conservative play on third down and six or seven at midfield. Uh, to let uh, Terry Daniel, if you don't make it, kick the ball deep and back him up. 
Well, that's what we had hoped to do. Again, we were playing a field position football game, and I know there's a, there's a time and place for everything, for wide open football. The time and place Saturday was for hard-nosed running football, great defense, and getting after their quarterback. You see right there, Damon Premis uh, was our captain for the game, had a great game, and watch, look at big play here. Mike Pelton not only sacks, strips the ball, but recovers the fumble, and now we've got the ball deep in their territory. That's a big turnover and a turning point now to give us a chance to go ahead. And here it comes. Great blocking on the right side of the line. Well, James Bostick had 138 yards Saturday. Saturday's a very strong runner, and uh, he's got great goal line instincts. We feel like he's got great, uh, great ability to run the ball on the goal line. Okay, you're going to stop them again and uh, get an opportunity to uh, score more points in this uh, second quarter when you really had to... Uh, well, that, that young quarterback for Ole Miss is going to be a fine quarterback, but he was in the fire on, on uh, Thursday night uh, as he faced a very good defense. There's a little fake reverse, which holds the linebackers up, and James Bostick goes 50 yards down to about the five-yard line. We run the fake reverse, and, and, and the linebackers will go the opposite direction and open up a hole. But you get the 15-yard penalty and have to kick the field goal. Critical up. penalty. We will, we've will. we got to correct that. We have a personal foul, a taunting type of pushing. They had a little shoving going on. A 15 yards from inside the five, and that's a touchdown callback for penalty. A 15-yard penalty inside the five. We get the field goals, but it cost us eight points, and it's going to cost us. We'll get that corrected. So you play out the uh, second quarter, go to the dressing room, uh, really in control of the game now, which uh, maybe you didn't expect to be that early. Well, I, I think if you, you, what you want to do is just you, you don't want to be behind against Ole Miss because they can do so many things defensively. 13 points is a lot of points because of their young offense. You tell your defense, hey, defense, if they don't score, the game's over. We won the game. Offense, they're kicking off to us. If you can go down and put points on the board, you may just finish this thing off right then and there. So we challenge both of our units in the halftime and see, to, see if they could play 60 minutes. That's what we've been working for during two-a-days. That's what we've been running for is to play a 60-minute football game. And we're going to see that it's going to end up being a 60-minute football it game. It certainly is. And we'll be back with some more halftime comment in just a minute. You're in at the halftime now, Coach, and, and your team has played so well, and you have a 13-point lead, which in a game like this figures to be a pretty good lead. Uh, do you get worried about letdown? Well, I'm not so worried about maybe a letdown as for someone to let their guard down. Maybe not cover a deep ball, a deep ball getting behind you or missing a check or being a little bit lax. Uh, and that would concern you. So we try to make sure our players understand they've got to keep their heads in the game, that we must play just as intensely the second half as the first, or something could happen because no one's ever at a football game. We're going to see that come to belt. And, 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 and coaches worry about missed opportunities, and you had those two missed opportunities, eight points worth it, of missed it, opportunities. It gnaws at you when you think you were inside the five twice and came away with two field goals, not because they stopped you, but because you stopped yourself with a penalty. And it gnaws at you, but you just got to go on. And we'll see as the game goes on how those can come back to haunt you. Okay, and you'll see a fine third quarter played by the Tigers when we come back. Okay, move to the third quarter on a warm night at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Auburn leading 13 to nothing, and things happen the way you'd like for them to happen in this quarter. You stop them on the, their first possession. As we move back into the tape, it's third and eight at the 34-yard line. Well, again, you hope the defense is still working hard, and, and right there, again, their quarterback feeling pressured, misses the screen pass. Our defense is right there uh, and still in control of the ball. They're starting to to blitz more now, I think. Now they're coming after us, and again, if they don't hit you at the line, you pop through like that, and of course, James Bostick, another fine runner offensive line, blocking very well. <laughs> Tony Richardson making a fine run behind that offensive line, Wayne Gandy there, and uh, Jason Taylor, and uh, Anthony Redmond, and Shannon Robeek, and Leonard Thomas. Big play there to get down deep again. Thomas Bailey catching the out route again as it was open, and then... Uh, Scott Etheridge kicking uh, one of his three field goals was 100%. Had a fine night with the kicking game. Still playing the great defense. Jason Miska. I think everybody's come to enjoy watching Jason as he's progressed from a walk-on to a starting linebacker. Like he said, he's got a lot to learn, but he plays very hard as well as all those other linebackers. I think our linebackers had a fine night as well as our entire defense uh, and control the line of scrimmage. Okay. So the third quarter is uh, now in the books, and the lead is now 16 to nothing, and everybody is beginning to relax. I hope the coach didn't relax, but uh, you, you, 
And, and I suspect that you, you didn't mind taking the field goal to go from 13 to 16. Well, see, that, that, the, the field goal there was probably one of those where we set it up because now you're talking about three scores that they would have to have unless they completed two two-point plays. And so that's a cushion that you need to have with only one quarter left in the game. They have not done anything against our defense. You feel like this is probably the margin that we're going to need for victory. That was true. It was the margin we would need, but the outcome was not quite what we expected. Now, we all expected that the Tigers would go on and shut them out and uh, have a, <laughs> one of those big decisive victories. But now as we get back to the fourth quarter tape, uh, Auburn has turned the ball over. And Ole Miss has uh, just completed a 47-yard bomb. And this is the crucial two-point conversion attempt. There it is. Great play. Calvin Jackson broke up uh, the two-point play, broke up two on the evening and had a great night. Then we come back, and here's a critical third down to keep the drive going. We make a, a little out to Thomas Bailey again and again. That kept the drive going. We were able to knock about five minutes off the ball. And then they come back and sack the quarterback. I believe they run him out of bounds here as he can't find an open receiver. Stop him on this drive, and things are uh, you're getting down to around two minutes now after Auburn's possession here, and you're in punt formation well, this two is minutes the, to go. Well, this is about a, a, a less than two minutes left in the game, and all we got to do is make the tackle. Look how many players. Watch what happens now. Everybody's on him, and watch. <laughs> There's a little clip there that was missed. Of course, everybody was on the tackle and, and converged, and no one's left as he runs 70-so yards for a touchdown. And all of a sudden, we're way ahead by four points. But here's a critical play here. And just like last time, there's Calvin Jackson again breaking the play up. And now we're up by four points. We've got to handle an onside kick. Well, my so heart was in my the throat. The right people in the game, right? You must have your onside kick, your hands people, your best hands people. And what more experience can you have than Reed McMillan? Doing it again, getting hit in the back after a great recovery. And that, that enables us to uh, run the clock out and beat a very, very fine Ole Miss football team. And a very excited uh, head coach right there. They had used all their timeouts, so once you got the ball with a minute and a half, you were able to sit on the ball and run the final minute and a half. Also. It's the longest minute of my life, I think, that last one, <laughs> but uh, a sweet victory. Oh, I can imagine. I can imagine. And uh, uh, with, with your dad there and all the family and everything, I guess it was a while before the Bowdens uh, bedded down last Thursday night. Huh? We talked a lot of football Thursday night, and... Uh, uh, it's just there's just so much excitement because there's, there's anxiety when when you got your first game at Auburn and it's your first SEC game and you want to do well and you want the young men to play well as they start this new era and to have them go out there and play with their hearts so hard and win a tough ball game like that it was it was it's one that you don't sleep much after that game. Now that you've won the game, it's really good also to play a tough first game, isn't it? Because uh, you you get a pretty good read on your team. Well, we talked about the pluses and the negatives of playing a tough team. Uh, you have to prepare for every aspect of the game. You've got to be seasoned ready for your very first game. And I think this helps us as we go into the season now. We, we didn't work into the schedule. We had to be ready the very first game for the blitz, for the zone, the kicking game, and all those things. And so we're not completely ready, but I think we're much closer than if we'd played a, a non, not a very competitive football team. Yeah, you had to have a little better feel of how things are. And we'll be back with uh, some comments about next week's game in just a minute. Okay, Coach, you have worked through the emotion of a first game. Now you have to uh, switch gears a bit to the emotion of playing the team from whence you came. That's right. The three days we've had since the, the victory now, we've got to think about the next game, and it's Sanford, where I came from. And, of course, I know That's a lot about them. That's to be a trip. That's, I know a lot about them. And, you know, I know how they feel. They're going to come in here with a plan to win. They're going to come in here with hopes that they can come in and upset an Auburn University and make their season. They would love nothing better. And I feel like you know, that we, we're going to give them the respect that they deserve, and we're going to treat them like any other team on our schedule, and we will prepare as we prepared for Ole Miss and as we prepare for LSU and Southern Miss right on down the road, uh, prepare to play the very best football we can play uh, and expect anything on that day. You gave your, uh, your guys a couple of days off after the game, uh, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, the Thursday, although it kind of was, a, was a difficult for some people in travel, it worked out where we had tough two-a-days, a Thursday game, nine days before our second game, so we can kind of get well for a couple of days, not only recovering from a game, but from the two-a-day schedule. And so it works out pretty well. We'll still get the full week of preparation for Sanford, but after a good two-day rest, and we needed it. Our, our young men uh, have had a hard preseason and a tough first ball game. You sound like you wouldn't mind those Thursday games occasionally. Well, I, I do, but again, I think I've got to respect our fans and our people and understand the difficulties, maybe high school football games, how does that affect the high yeah. school football games right. in this state? Uh, how does that affect our people who work? 
you can't turn them down uh, like people think you can because we have agreements with the CFA and the SEC. But we must always keep in mind the, our, our fans and, and it, that this is their football team. We know there's going to be at least one next year and the year after because of the ESPN agreement. Congratulations to you and the staff. You did a great job, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Uh, Auburn Sanford, 6 o'clock start Saturday. The Auburn Network, the radio network, will be on the air at 4.30, and we'll have the replay for you here on Sunday. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Coach Belton's apparel provided by The Locker Room. This has been the Auburn Football Review. Brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, The Caring Company, your Alabama Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. Likes hot dogs. One bite and you'll know why they say, when it's likes, it's gone. LDDS Communications, the official long-distance carrier of the Auburn Alumni Association. By Golden Flake Snack Foods, one taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. Your Alabama John Deere dealer. Nothing runs like a deer. Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos Pressure Treated Pine. If it doesn't say Osmos on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Colonial Bank. Good people, great service. And by your Alabama Coca-Cola bottler. Always Coca-Cola. Night's going. That's a good win. Good win. Wasn't pretty all the time. We don't worry about that. It's a great win. We get back to our conference now. We get back in the conference now. Play hard every time you go out there. You could be complimentary to those fellows in the press. Be complimentary to that team in the press. Took it to them. You did what you had to do. Came out here with an easy win. You saw a lot of junk out there. And we didn't really prep you for a lot of that stuff. We ain't got time to worry about that. We got other things to worry about. We got LSU. That's what we're going to be on right on tomorrow. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Terry Bowden. Brought to you by your Alabama Coca-Cola bottler. Always Coca-Cola. Colonial Bank. Good people, great service. Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos Pressure Treated Pine. If it doesn't say Osmos on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Your Alabama John Deere dealer. Nothing runs like a deer. Buy Golden Flake Snack Foods. One taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. LDDS Communications, the official long-distance carrier of the Auburn Alumni Association. Likes hot dogs. One bite and you'll know why they say, when it's likes, it's gone. Your Alabama Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. And by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, the caring company. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review and a look back at last night's 35-7 to Auburn victory over Samford University. Coach Terry Bowden is with us, of course, and I would guess that uh, you had quite a few Samford ticket requests last week. <laughs> I, tell you, I had more, uh, more requests from Samford people than <laughs> Auburn people. It was a good win for us. I tell you, it was a great football game and uh, uh, one that we, we, we got ahead early and, uh, uh, and played a good game and Samford played a good game. With the intensity that uh, you had last week against Ole Miss, did you expect or did you even want to approach the intensity for this game that you had last week? Well, you know, uh, the Ole Miss game was so big. I'm not sure you can get that same intensity every yeah. week. And uh, at Sanford, it was important that we go out there and, and establish control of the football game and then play a lot of people. And Sanford gave us a little, a little bit of football we, did, we weren't expecting. Yeah. Did a super job. And so, really, it was a game that was good for everybody. I think you're right. Let's go in the dressing room right now, and we'll talk to some of the uh, players and get their reactions to last night, uh, last night's game. I see some of the plays they got was just breakdowns on us. I mean, we we got a pass rush, but we didn't get enough sacks, and um, didn't have that real tenacity that you had. Last yeah, I mean, you know, by it being Sanford, I you know, 
but I feel like next weekend everything will be different. Well, I made a few mistakes myself, you know. That's what cost us a touchdown, really, but they came out with a lot of motion, and we had to adjust early, and we couldn't. So. You've seen some things to work on going to LSU, huh? <laughs> yeah, we got a lot to work on. Your thoughts going back to Louisiana? Uh, we're going to play hard. We got to play hard. They had a good team this year. Uh, I was watching the game before our game, and they give Mississippi State a run for the money. Uh, you know, I'm excited about going home, playing in front of a lot of my friends and family, but uh, I'm going to go down there and play hard as I can. They got some work to do, huh? Yeah, we have a lot of work to do. Uh, you know, we wasn't a pretty win tonight, but uh, they came in here ready to play ball. And uh, you got to give a lot of credit to them. You're the go-to guy tonight, son. Um, it, it seems that way. I caught two touchdowns. Um, me and Stan was on a good page, and um, the offensive line did a great job blocking the coach, call the plays, and we try and execute to the perfection. So he had some he had some time to stand back there and wait for you to come over deep. Huh? Yeah, um, they was playing a man, a sort of like a press man, and the line did a great job. With the black the bike stepped up and did a great job of picking up the blitz, and Stan just let it out. And I made the catch. Still got a lot of things you can coach though going to LSU. Man. Yeah, we got a lot of things. We got a lot to work on um, going to LSU. We made a lot of mis some penalties, but I mean it was a good win for the team. Coach Bowden, he all week long he was saying we need to go out there and treat like an SEC team, but um I think we went out there and got a little Next the days going on, but um, the second half we we started rolling. The offense played real good and defense played real good, but um, Stanford has a real good team, so we had to just give them all the respect in the world. Well, how did it feel? Um, it felt great. Um, the offense line gave me some great blocks. Um, I just felt good being out the whole season, coming back this year, and everything was just great. Steven had a great night. Uh, I don't know how many yards he had, how many TDs he had, yeah. Yeah, but uh, you know, I tell you, I tried to block for him out there one time, and he's too fast for me. I can't, I can't catch up to him. So uh, I'm gonna I, go find that tape. Yeah, I tell you, I just kind of, I kind of watch you. I just kind of trail and say, okay, you get it done. So I, I can't do that. <laughs> I got poked uh, early in the so, second yeah. quarter, and um, yeah. I tried to make it through the game. We came in at half, and they checked it out, and they told me uh, since we was up. You know, it wasn't no need to try, uh, aggravating it, so uh, they took me out and patched me up. You know, we were going to put the uh, shield on and uh, some shades, but we didn't have it, and <laughs> so we just went with the patch and surely the, undressed. Surely some of these wide receivers have got some shades around it. Uh, no, I don't think they, <laughs> they, they barely catching the ball now. Big senior tackle can get away with remarks like that. We'll be back with Terry Bowden's uh, assessment of last night's game on the Auburn Football Review. Okay, as uh, we're going to see that Auburn comes out and scores two quick touchdowns, and, and I, I felt that you were looking for an opportunity, the right opportunity to put uh, Stephen Davis in the Well, I did not want to present a, pro a situation where there was a chance where he got in there and things were, were not to his, to his benefit. And I thought this was a perfect situation. The game was not out of reach. It was still in contention. Uh, we needed him to, to play well, and he came in, and right off the bat, he scored well. I recall in the uh, press conference on Tuesday, you said uh, when he gets his chance, he's going to have to produce. I believe he did. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. He came through and played very well on the okay. very first snap. Let's go to the tape now and uh, see Sanford's first possession. They actually moved the ball a little bit on this first possession. Coach. They had a few things that you weren't ready for. I tell you, I, I tell you it was the diff most difficult thing. I, wa I went out there and watched my players, the players that yeah. I had recruited at Sanford, and watched how well they executed an offense that we had not seen. They played, see, they played down last week. They played a division below them. Mm -hmm. There's old Gary uh, uh, making the tackle right there. Uh, and there's, there's Sanford, and there's a good pressure by uh, Willie Whitehead making a pressure on them. A big, Anthony Harris is playing great football right now. A big interception for us. Okay, you're going to cash the, uh, the uh, turnover almost immediately, come out throwing the football. Well, we wanted to throw the ball a little bit more. We had run so much, we felt like this week, Regardless of what Sanford is doing, we were going to go out there and try to throw the football. Stan White throws to Derek Dorn and makes a big completion. Stan was 8 for 8. Look at that big play to Frank Sanders. Get a touchdown real quick on a little bit short pass. He makes a big play out of it. Four plays to get in the end zone and make it 7 to nothing. Auburn midway of the first quarter. Here they go. Again, they got a first down or two before. Uh, this actually uh, was an interception that was disallowed because of an offside, which you had several of, Coach. Well, I was really, I was, if I was, if I could say I was disappointed. There's a big fumble recovery. Look at Mike Pelton just gets around that football. That's his second big week, a fumble recovery. But if there was one phase of our game I was not happy with, we were offside about five or six times. We've got to watch the football. Here comes James the heavy Boston. Man. That's a short yardage play. Great run there. He was hitting the backfield, made a great player, a great, great play there. And uh, here's Stan on the. Uh, a uh, little bit fake reverse. Watch Dead Gum Thomas Bailey. Great run there. Breaks two tackles. Andy Fuller getting out in front of him. Mm, leading the way. 
So Auburn is on the board so quickly, 14 to nothing now, still in the first quarter. Here comes uh, Sanford's uh, next possession, just before the end of the first quarter. So it has, it has great pressure. So you, we really want to pressure that quarterback, Bart Nancy, out of Briarwood, Christian Academy, Birmingham. I had signed him, and I was kind of excited for him, but I wanted us to sack him every time. Stephen Davis, first carry. Look at him 30 up. yards. I tell you what I liked about Steve Davis. He was very excited to get in that game. His family came down from South Carolina. He ran uh, hard, but he ran over people. You know, people are always wanting him to run, outrun people. He ran over a few people. All right, as the second quarter begins, here he comes up the middle, and he will carry three of the four possessions, uh, 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 three of the four downs on this possession and score. And so, uh, Stephen Davis has made his entrance into the Auburn record book, uh, scoring on his first, uh, his first series of plays, and Auburn leads 21 to nothing, two plays into the second quarter. Well, the only thing I think we did wrong, we got ahead 21 to nothing, and we kind of, kind of got sloppy after that. We got a little bit lackadaisical. If we'd have stayed with what we were doing, we'd have been fine. But I called some plays, tried to get a, another, another cheap score quick, and made some mistakes, but it, it, it got to the point where I think we were in control of the football game at that point, and it was just a matter of, of making sure we just played a lot of people, did the right things. Stan, at this point, is 6 for 6, 102 yards and two touchdowns. He's having his best day. Well, you know, we, we did not throw the ball last week. We wanted Stan to come out and throw the football, throw it under a situation where the game was not in control. He was almost perfect to start the game. Very pleased with Stan White Saturday. It was interesting the way Sanford used Ron Green, which is, must be a great talent because they threw quickly to him and let him operate against the, uh, the cornerback, and uh, then they're going to go to him uh, on this touchdown play. Ron Green is a wonderful little athlete. He, he was signed at Sanford out of a junior college on a baseball scholarship, and uh, he did a super job for them, him and, and uh, the tight end, the, the little H-back they have there that, that played so well. And, uh, yeah. But Ron Green with a wonderful job. He's a good little athlete. All right, we pick up the action in the second quarter now, and Sanford is about to get their touchdown. It was almost too easy, huh? 21 nothing. And uh, well, 21 nothing. They do a wonderful fake here as they make a, a double fake and throw a little play to Ron Green over the middle, and it was a it was a well executed play. We made some mistakes there. I think that's a good lesson for us because, again, you've got to play coverage. You've got to play coverage football. But look how quickly Auburn answers. White going up to Derek Dorn again. Derek Dorn made a couple of nice plays short, and I think it was about a two-play drive because we hit him short, and then we go over top on the next one. Right. Made a good fake. Big play coming here. Look at the time he has to wait for the receiver to come over. Well, they, they had nobody in center field, and we let the let Frank Sanders come across the field, hit him on a post pattern, and it was 28-7 to at that point. Okay, for the rest of the second quarter, watch the Tigers play defense. Well, there's Willie Whitehead again. He plays with such enthusiasm. He plays, he's a reckless football player. And consistency, you know. Well, he's going to play harder to every play. That means he's going to be around the football. Mm -hmm. Oh, there, there's another great play there. Look at the good tackle there by our defense and get a sack there. And so it's 28-7 to seven at the half. Uh, your offense is, has been very quickly. They have, they have possession uh, on you. They've, they've held the football more, but you've scored so quickly. Well, we, you... we scored four out of the first seven times we had the football and uh, got ahead quickly. And I think at that point we were, just, we, we were doing some things, started to sub already in the first half. And uh, it got to the point where we were ahead of the people and we were able to sub some people and, uh, and get a comfortable lead. You are starting to think then that this is going to give you the opportunity in the second half to use a lot of people. Huh? Well, we were already in the second quarter using some good people. Uh, and mixing it up a little bit and substituting on our line. Uh, and it, it, did not, it did not stretch beyond that, but it gave us a chance to play people when the game was not out of reach. You've got a lot of things to talk about defensively, though, at the half. Well, I'll tell you, we'll see. Sanford did a super job offensively. I tell you, our defense only had one game film to look at mm -hmm. uh, because they had the, Chan Gailey at Sanford had one game under his belt in college. Mm -hmm. He had not had any other game film, and they played, they played a Division II team. They didn't use much. And so we were just trying to react to things that they did but in the second half, you'll see where our defense shuts them down. And he used his, uh, Chan, to his credit, used his diversity of, uh, of experience in football to have a pretty good plan. Well, I tell you, he did a great job. That was, that was a much better offensive performance this year than what I did last year against Sanford, against it, Auburn. It was obvious that they played really vanilla last week, too. Right? Yes, there's no question. We did not prepare for anything that we saw. Okay, we'll be back uh, with some uh, halftime comments in just a minute. <laughs> We are at 
We are at halftime as we review last night's uh, Auburn 35-7 to victory over Samford University. Uh, the offsides penalties uh, were something of a problem because you lost two turnovers. Uh, Concerns me very much. We had two interceptions that were called back on the offsides penalty. And again, that's just that's a lack of concentration. A defense well, they doing anything on the count that may have caused that? Well, they, they, just, they just changed their count on one, on two, on three. We need to look at the football and go on the football. It's an error that we, I'm thankful that we saw it in a game which we won because it's something that will hurt us down the road if we don't correct that. All right, watch this, Coach. Uh, this is the Auburn Alumni Band coming at you on, at halftime last night. You missed this, but this is about 400 folks. Can you imagine the thrill of these people uh, dusting off the old horn and, and finding the batons and coming out and uh, performing? Well, I got a lot of letters from, from former band, band members who said they were coming and were excited about the game, and uh, I knew they were going to have a great band there tonight. But look, they were so excited. In pregame, I could hear them. Playing. They played uh, <laughs> as they marched around the field. It was a, a great experience. We had a great crowd. Yeah, I tell you, the yeah. crowd is continuing to push us through, and we're going to lead them down the stretch as they were there on Saturday night. It was a great night at Jordan Hare, and we'll be back with uh, second half highlights with Terry Bowden in just a minute. Okay, we'll get back to the third quarter in a moment, but did you feel like you wanted one more score before you felt totally in control and could play anyone you wanted to? That's right. We wanted to come out and establish the ball game, get a score, set the tempo for the second half, and then we were going to say, whatever the score is, let's go ahead and substitute and just do the best that we can with that because we've got to get some depth at our, at our positions, and depth was the most important thing, much more important than score. All right, let's go to the third quarter tape now, and we will see a big interception by Brian Robinson, who I thought played an excellent game. He had a, uh, a cause fumble in this interception. Well, Brian Robinson is getting better every game. He's getting a lot of early experience. They try to throw a little trick play, watch Brian react, make a great interception there, and make a good return, and you'll see he makes the great return down the sideline, and I think in about two plays, uh, Steve Davis, or, or we put the ball in the end zone. Right. Starting at the 13-yard line, Davis runs for three, and then watch this play coming up for the touchdown, his second of the evening. Just a little toss sweep, and he finds a crack. You watch how he bulls his way into the end zone. And Again, he's 220 pounds, so he's a powerful tailback. That's now, why those backs go backwards when he hits him. Is that right, Coach? That's right. I mean, <laughs> when you've got that kind of size, if you run hard, you're going to knock field backwards. Good break up by the defense there. Again, as we, I thought the defense came out second half and played very played, well. Uh, yeah, the adjustments obviously were good. Here comes the big run of the night, the longest run of the night, but you don't get anything out of this one because a couple of mistakes down inside the 20. Well, we were starting to sub the second second half, and we threw a pass. We tried to throw a pass right off of that play, and we substituted, and we've had some missed assignments, and they got some sacks. And again, it's disappointing that we get sacks like that, but maybe we'll, get to, we'll, we'll gain some experience doing that. Mm -hmm. Willie Whitehead, again, it's like every time I say something, it's Willie Whitehead. Third and 14 he here. Great play there with Willie Whitehead again. Boy. Just the way he plays. He's always running very hard and working very hard. So it's a 35-7 to 7 game at the end of the third quarter. Now, you have the, you have the game, and now you can really get a look at some of the uh, people you want to uh, see and, you, and, and, and people you want to re reward with some playing time. I well, that's, that's right. I think this was a time when you substitute and put a lot of people in. And again, I think if we would have passed the ball and done a lot of mixed-up plays, I think we could have produ produced a few more points. But... At this point, I'm looking for uh, people who get game experience, get the jitters out, not worry about uh, uh, the playing time and get that out of the way. And so at this point, we played a lot of people, and it was a good finish. You had a smorgasbord of punt returners, and was this, was this intended? Uh, well, you know, uh, Thomas Bailey, who was our number one punt returner, had a little bit of back, had, had got bruised back in the first half, and instead of worrying about it, we just took him out and got him dressed and went to some young freshman, Lewis Battle, at the punt return then. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to see Sean Carter yes. make the uh, make the best punt return of the night. He is a steady, isn't he? I mean, he's a tough little guy, and he plays, uh, what, at about 140 pounds? He's not it? very big. Sean Carter was a walk-on who plays a lot. Sanford last year, he got his first punt return, got killed, broke his uh, shoulder, broke his collarbone, I believe. But look at that great return. Sean Carter came back a year later against Sanford and had a great return on the one of two punt returns. And that's what college football is all about, to see little guys like that out there playing and contributing. Look at, look at Patrick Nick runs a little fake reverse uh, and hits uh, uh, Tyrone Goodson, his first catch of the year. A young uh, true freshman out there getting his first catch, been hobbled by a hamstring, but made a good catch, and now we got the ball down. We'll just show a few of big plays uh, as the uh, game winds down now. Carlos Thornton making the play there, and you got a lot of folks in the game now. 
Well, this is where it's important to get playing time now as people start to make tackles, numbers that you haven't seen very much. And there's the good tackle there as he claps in on the play. Marcellus Marstella, we got to have him some playing time. Linebacking depth has got to come through for us because next week LSU is out there. Well, here's a name, number 17, handing it off to Malcolm. Well, I tell you, Ramon Malcolm, I tell you, there's a name that you're going to see down the road. We talk about Stephen Davis and Harold Morrow and, of course, James Bostick. How about Patrick Sullivan? <laughs> we run a little negative. Look at him pick up yards there. Patrick is a wonderful person and plays. Everything he does seems to go well. So it was a play with There's Chan Gailey again. You got an opportunity to say hello to some of your guys out uh, here, your former guys. Well, it's the first time I've had a chance to. And again, that was a very, very uh, tough thing to leave. I want you fine players. But I'm in Auburn now. Yeah. And I've got to be close to my players. But there's some wonderful players at Sanford. A great experience for both teams. 30, 35 to 7. They all came out to see you. That's nice. That's nice. Okay, we'll be back with some final comments in just a moment. Big challenge for the Tigers Saturday night. They go on the road. First big road game against a conference opponent and a team that just comes off a terrific win over Mississippi State. Well, I tell you, there's no, there's no tougher place to play than the LSU Stadium, the Tiger Stadium. Um, it's going to be a tough one. The, the conference is, like always, a battle, and now we've got it's to prepare. It's a scrap, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Everybody, I tell you, you don't know who's going to be tops in the conference. We go into a very tough stadium to play a team that won a, had a big win over Mississippi State, and uh, we have got to have a great week of practice. Okay, and tune it in on uh, the Auburn Radio Network to get the play-by-play -play from Jim Fife and Charlie Trotman. They are on the air at 5.30 Saturday evening. Game kicks off at 7 o'clock. And, of course, we'll be back here Sunday with the replay. And watch the Auburn football preview on Saturdays. Check your local listings for that one. See you next week, Coach. Good luck to you and the team. Thank you. Coach Bowden's apparel provided by The Locker Room. This has been the Auburn Football Review. Brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, The Caring Company, your Alabama Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. Likes hot dogs. One bite and you'll know why they say, when it's likes, it's gone. LDDS Communications, the official long-distance carrier of the Auburn Alumni Association. By Golden Flake Snack Foods, one taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. Your Alabama John Deere dealer. Nothing runs like a deer. Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos pressure treated pine. If it doesn't say Osmos on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Colonial Bank, good people, great service. And by your Alabama Coca Cola bottler. Always Coca Cola. down here since 1939. And you're three and oh. And you know what you're doing, men? You're bringing Auburn back. You're bringing Auburn back. And we got seven days to bring it back one more time, and I'm proud of you. Me and I am proud of you. Defense has a great job. Great job. You went out and you Offense, you came to play. You came to play. Now, we got a game ball now. You know who this got to go to. The all-time passing leader in the history of Auburn. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Terry Bowden. Brought to you by your Alabama Coca-Cola bottler. Always Coca-Cola. Colonial Bank. Good people, great service. 
Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos pressure-treated pine. If it doesn't say Osmos on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Your Alabama John Deere dealer. Nothing runs like a deer. Buy Golden Flake snack foods. One taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. LDDS Communications, the official long-distance carrier of the Auburn Alumni Association. Likes hot dogs. One bite and you'll know why they say, when it's likes, it's gone. Your Alabama Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. And by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, the carrying company. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Auburn defeated LSU 34 to 10 in Baton Rouge last night. And coach, I suppose if you were going to write the script, you couldn't have done a better job than what really happened. Well, I'll tell you, it was an exciting opportunity to go down to LSU and play. And uh, our young men were excited about it. We were kind of anxious to get on the road, to be honest. We'd have been, been around the campus a long time, but it was a great show. And we had, we had a tiger walk at LSU Stadium. And it made us feel at home with our people. Great win for us. Uh, it was remarkable. Quite a crowd. And, and uh, at times they were louder than the, than the LSU people. I really felt that there was ever a, a, a Auburn win where the offense, the defense, the kicking game, and the fans paid a, played a significant role. This was one because they were always there for us. And, and, and it made you feel uh, like there was somebody there for you when things weren't going so well at the beginning. Rarely do you see as many big plays as you saw in that game. Well, I think, I think big plays are what we look for offensively. If there's a, a, a little uh, definition of this game, it would be this is the game that big plays made the difference. Defense has been there. Uh, some of the running game has been there. But when you have big plays, they overcome a lot of the little things that don't go right. When we start making big plays, uh, uh, we can play with anybody. I'm so impressed, too, uh, Terry, with the Auburn secondary because they had to defend the field last night. Well, we were going to be attacked all over the field with the passing game at LSU. They're a wide-open offense that throws it in every possible way. Uh, the secondary, Coach Hines, and his secretary did an outstanding job. I know they had a lot of underneath stuff, but we kept them from hitting the big pass over the top, and that is what's going to get you beat. Mm. That was a major, major factor in the ball game. Yes. Yes, it was. Let's go in the dressing room now and talk to some of those young men who played so marvelously last night. Uh, it seems like we're playing as a team now. I mean, defense goes out and do what they have to do, and the offense comes in and do what they have to do. I mean, so that's a big friend. I mean, we're back. I don't know how many times he threw it. He didn't get it deep, Dave. That's all I know. <laughs> you all were waiting, and you were you were you were hitting the receivers. Boy, it, it worked after a while. It started. Then it came. Yeah, they, they they got kind of timid back there. Uh, we weren't giving up the big plays today, and uh, we was really getting after them on defense. Oh, it's now. Had a big play. Yeah, it feels good. That's my... Of course. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, yes, I mean, I'm real, I'm real proud of our offense. Our offense, you know, we're struggling last year, but this year they're coming on strong. You know, we got a pass attack and a run attack. I'm real proud of them. Yeah, I think that everybody was just playing hard, running to the football. And that was the main thing. That was the key. Husband's play. And the secondary played great. As long as we play and keep everybody healthy, I feel like, you know, we're going to be able to, I mean, if he can throw it 40 times, we're going to be able to put some pressure on in my mind, those two big catches set up the uh, game that kept the sparked you and got those two big touchdowns. That's, I didn't, I don't, that's what most of the players told me when I came out, but I think the offense, what we really need to do is come out and get the, um, get our jitters over with, but after that, I mean, that was it. We, we wanted to come out there and establish the passing game and the running game, you know. It, it, was, it was told us that they, you know, they was kind of afraid of our running attacks. We wanted want to come out and throw the ball and run the ball when we needed to. So what I didn't do, we had to do the win. Stan likes to to you, man. Yeah, you know, uh, we probably this all week, uh, a lot of fullback players, you know, they probably key on the tailback a lot, and the fullback position came open tonight. Yeah, you were delaying a lot and getting open over the middle? Yeah, it was, you know, uh, number seven, the defensive end, you know, he would like to rush a lot, so we just, you know, kind of bump him and squeeze by. This is what you've been working for since you've been at Auburn, to go on the road and knock somebody out. Hey, it's great victory, 3-0. Everybody's just overwhelmed and excited. Uh, it's just it's just unbelievable for us. We've worked really hard, but uh, we know the, the working hard's not over with. We're going to have to work harder, because we got so and miss next weekend and there's a good chance they're probably going to be better than than lsu and they're definitely going to be waiting for us they've slipped up on us uh two times since i've been That's here right. so uh they're, they're no team to take lightly with your family watching for the quarterback that wants to go over you four times two touchdowns and two first downs on the uh, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty exciting it's pretty exciting there you know i mean you know uh playing here in front of my family and friends i'm really excited uh i just i can't say anything i just, i'm excited as can be let's take reverse and throw this work perfectly
practice it, didn't it? Oh, yeah, it was, uh, we practiced that all um, week, and, um, you know, Coach Bowden said it would be there as we just executed, and it was wide open. It just seemed like it took so long for the ball to get there. And, um, there about three days. And I was kind of scared I was going to drop it. Those are the easiest passes to drop, and um, it's just I was praying that I catch, caught it, and I did, so I did something with it. I'm happy for Sam and the whole Auburn team. The greatest fake off the reverse I've ever seen, and you look up and you see Thomas Bailey down there all by himself. Oh, man, I tell you, it was a great call by Coach Bowden. He, he, sometimes he, he just he tells me, he's like, man, I just feel these things coming. we got to call this, you know, and it was a great. Uh, it's, it's pretty hard to sit back there and fake it to Frank and sit there two seconds with, your, with the ball and just waiting, you know, waiting for somebody to hit you. And it's, it's, uh, it's a good play, though, and, and it came at the right time, and Thomas was just sitting there. All I had to do was catch it, and I was just glad I didn't overthrow him. Indeed. We'll be back with Terry Bowden's insights into the game in just a minute on the Auburn football review. As well as things turned out, they didn't begin so well last night. You had some assorted offensive problems starting out, Coach. Well, you know, a penalty can, can cause any series to, to falter. First drive, we get a first down, but we have a five-yard penalty. And when you add that in, we only get about 14 yards instead of the 15 we needed on the first down play uh, instead of the 10. And, noise uh, factor? It all, well, the noise factor had a part in it. It sure did. And old Shannon Robeek, that's his home. He was primed and ready, wasn't And he? as you saw in his interview, I think he was more excited than anybody <laughs> on our football team. Uh, but that happens sometimes. You just cannot let that get to you. You've got to be patient. Okay, we'll move into the uh, uh, first quarter of play, and we'll see a great punt by Terry Daniel, who had himself another great night. He was going against uh, the other top punter in the league, and I think he won the night handily. Well, he averaged 48 yards a punt, and again, everybody, it makes everybody hold their breath because he kicked so far beyond our coverage, but I don't think the answer is to ask him to kick short. Now, there's the safety. We thought for sure we had a safety. Uh, the official ruled that his foot had stepped on the line, but I think the ball has to go over the line. That's what it causes to get a touchdown, and that's what it should be to come out of the end zone. But it looked again, like the referee ruled it, but the linesman must have uh, overruled him. Well, you see the defense playing good team football there as we have a good, aggressive team play. Uh, Coach Hall had an outstanding game plan defensively. Uh, we were very, very uh, enthusiastic, very uh, good pursuit of the football. It's raining right now, and it kind of washed your troubles away because <laughs> after the rain, Auburn was a different football team. Right? Well, it was a very humid night, and I was concerned because of our lack of depth at certain positions. They're standing, faking the toss sweep, throwing over top. Stan White, I mean, uh, there Frank Sanders makes the big catch between two defenders and gets us off the goal line. Big play for us. It was the first of our big play. Third and six at the 45, another big play here. Well, Frank Sanders is really rising to the occasion and deciding he wants to be our big play guy. And him and Thomas Bailey did continually good, good jobs. And then this guy always wants an opportunity to make something happen. <laughs> he does the heavy work, doesn't he? <laughs> well, the deep offensive line opened up a great hole for him there. And the top sweep, if you're running enough time, eventually he's going to make something happen. Right over Shannon Robeek for the touchdown. Well, Stan, Stan White got the, got the touchdown on the quarterback. I think the line had a good surge there uh, to push the defensive line into the end zone to tie it up. And that it makes you a little more relaxed. There's that great fan. We had as good a fan as I've ever seen. Boy, defense is playing good. Taking the line of scrimmage back to the ball carriers. Uh, I tell you, the quarterback they had did a great job of not getting sacked, but the pressure like this was there all night long. And, uh, if, you know, he was like 9 for 30-something, which means he was throwing the ball away to keep from getting the sack. Solomon causes the fumble, and Jason Miska comes up with it. Well, that's a big play now because uh, it gives us a chance to get the ball in their territory. The defense gives us an opportunity. Here's a big play to the fullback. He, uh, he got open in the secondary. And uh, we were able to get a big first down there uh, to uh, Tony Richardson. Tony had six catches on the night. That was that that fullback pass was good to you. Then with that little split draw there, they were rushing their ends upfield, but their guards were playing really on the line of scrimmage. It opened up a seam, and uh, uh, James Bostic ran the split draw and uh, got a big touchdown for us to get us ahead. Two possessions later now, and Auburn is about to go up again. Well, we're on our goal line, so let's just go ahead and come off again with something big. We threw the same play over the top, but Frank Sanders rounded it off as they went deep and got us out, and we tried to make some big plays here. And here we go. We fake the reverse. We fake the toss sweep. We fake the reverse. And the cameraman. Well, it's a play that I felt because their safeties were so involved in the running game. Mm. We felt in practice, looking at the film all week with their safety involvement in the running game, that they would take a fake like that and gave us a good bit of excitement, and that quiets the crowd. Yeah. Now he gets hit as he throws right here, so... There was not a sack, but there were many pressures in this game. Well, again, that made for, for the uh, for the errant throws, and the coverage, again, was, was extremely well. There's good effort and pursuit of the ball. Almost interception there by Brian, Brian Robinson. He made the great play and, and uh, reacted to the football, but he dropped it as he went down. Boy, the Dillard High School guys had themselves a night, didn't they? 
This was critical. About three minutes left in the half, and James Bostick dropped the ball. Nobody hit him. A fumble put our defense in a very, very critical situation. Great pursuit, uh, rush on the quarterback. He threw it away. They come out of here in the end of the half. No points. They missed the field goal. That was a major, major uh, uh, hole stand by our defense. At this point, you have, uh, uh, he has thrown 26 times. Uh, the front has rushed the passer so much in the first half. As you go in, are you worried about the, the fatigue factor? Because it was a terrifically hot, muggy night. I tell you, it was one of the main things that I was concerned about. And again, that's why I mentioned the rain early. It seemed to take some of the humidity away once that rain came down. But you know, when you, when you practice very hard and you have a strong desire to win, sometimes that can overcome the fatigue. That's why I don't worry about fatigue, because if you have heart, you're going to overcome fatigue. You can't overcome cramps. And the cramping just never came. And, and the thing that's going to happen now is the offense is going to come out and just control the clock in the second half. And the defense, as it turns out, doesn't have to play as much as they did in the first half. Well, at halftime, we talked about the fact that we could not come out and just expect LSU to give us the game for a victory. We had to go take it. Offensively, we need to go out there and score points to show them we were here to play 30 more minutes. And as you see, although they, they stopped us the first drive, we came back and put points on the board. And I think that pretty much set the tone for the second half. Okay, we'll be back in just a minute with some halftime coming. I can't remember Stan White having a better night, and uh, maybe the first half was uh, one of the best he's ever had. He was 13 of 16, coach, 191 yards, ran for a touchdown, threw for one. What a night. Well, Stan plays with a lot of poise and a lot of experience, does not get flustered uh, or uh, uh, too overexcited. His calmness is very important because it seems like he's not rattled at all. And uh, that's what you need because uh, if you're going to be calm, then when the big play opportunity comes, you're able to produce. and. Uh, I'm seeing better and better things out of Stan like I always thought I would. On that first long pass, uh, the 38-yarder to Frank Sanders, uh, of course, Stan went by uh, Pat Sullivan as the all-time passing yardage leader. And as it happens, Pat Sullivan was in the stands to watch it. I suspect more to see his son Patrick than to see <laughs> his record broken, but we talked to him afterward. Stan's a class person, and uh, I'm tickled to death that uh, he's got all the records now. Were you aware that on the big play there that that's when he went by? That Not really. Uh, you know, I, in fact, I didn't even know until um, this week. I had a couple of calls out in Texas that it was coming down and, and it was going to happen. Uh, but I'm tickled for Stan, Phil. Indeed. Uh, and uh, he got to visit with Patrick. I saw them on a Friday around the, uh, I guess, the noon. No, in the evening. No, no, Saturday at, at noon. And they, they got a chance to spend some time together and visit. Well, I think it's outstanding that here, here is uh, Stan White's coach. The, the coach, the mentor that you probably trained him more than any early in his college career. And they became close and from the same hometown. And uh, uh, someone that was trained by the, by the man, uh, and I'm not talking about Stan the man, I'm talking about Coach Sullivan. Uh, was able to train him and their closeness and then able to watch him break the record. It's truly something that, that I think feel, fits in with the Auburn spirit. I know it uh, will be a memorable night uh, for Stan White. And we'll be back with uh, second half action in just a minute. I know as you went to the dressing room, the thought crossed your mind that uh, Jamie Howard came back and scored three touchdowns uh, in the second half to, uh, to go ahead of Auburn after they had a big lead last year. Well, anytime you face an offense with that type of passing attack with the arm that Jamie Howard has, it concerns you. Uh, but I said one thing. I said, you know, they can't put him in and surprise us. He's already <laughs> in. So all we can see is what we've been seeing in the first half. And what you're going to see is another fine defensive effort. We'll begin uh, the second half with a great play by Dale McGee, who came on and, and, and started last week for injured Calvin uh, Jackson. But Dale has great instincts and quickness for a defensive back. He's going to fit into that corner position perfectly as it matches his, his individual talents. Here's a good third down play. Third and six. Harold Marr now, who is a lot of our, he catches the ball well out of our backfield. Third and six. He catches across the middle, gets a big hit, but... He's excited because he's now made a big play to keep a drive going. You'll see us throw again. Reed McMillan, as he always does, finds the way to contribute and help our team win. 
breaks a couple of tackles for another first down to get this big long drive going and there is uh, James Boston. This is the mistake. Don't try to, to strip the ball. You better remember to tackle James Boston because oh, he man. fights ahead for a first down. Oh man, what strength. This is a great drive, Terry, because you go 14 plays and the defense is sitting over there in this humidity resting. Well, that was big, and to finish off with uh, Derek Dorn catching the ball down to about the one-yard line, and Stan goes over the top again. But it was able to keep our defensive uh, team on the bench, keep them rested up for that fourth quarter as we get down to the late parts of the third quarter, and we need them to be rested. Okay, they come back and go 86 yards, uh, but you hold them on the goal line. They got a first and goal at the five, and you hold them on the goal line, and then they kick the field goal, but you answer almost immediately. Well, when a team kicks the field goal, and they had to settle. They wanted points, but they were getting discouraged. They got points. But we come right back and answer their three with three more. Scott Etheridge, five for five for the year. But James Bostick is the game to pound away with that toss sweep. And here I was trying to throw for the end zone. But Stan came down when they covered it. And uh, uh, Thomas Bailey made a key first down there. Now we're inside the 10-yard line. And you have to kick the field goal, but you got uh, the league's best kicker in there. So uh, that's always a nice thing to have on hand in a time like this. Well, you feel good now. You've got three touchdown lead now going into the fourth quarter. Your defense is getting a little fresher. They saw our playbook, called the same play, but Otis Mounds makes the big interception. <laughs> Otis had a big play when he stopped the long run, too. Well, Otis is fine. beginning to feel comfortable back there, and he has extremely lot of amount of talent. There's Stan going to, our, to, to a, Mr. Clutch there, uh, Frank Sanders, on a critical third down play. And now we run the reverse. We haven't seen it this year. We faked it enough times. And Frank <laughs> Sanders makes a big run there and picks up a three first down. And we begin to mix it up and make them guess where the ball's going to go. And again, uh, Scott Etheridge kicks the, this time, the 36-yard field goal. He is 5 of 5 on the year. And the fourth quarter, you spend on uh, their 20 yards, inside that 20 yard line, really. But. Well, we were able just to keep the pressure on. I tell you, you had to recognize, and I tried to recognize our crowd there at the end coming off the field because they were so, so much a factor of that ball game. And I can't say enough for the Auburn people, the number of people that went down to LSU when supposedly we couldn't win down there, but they went down believing that good things would happen. And I really think our crowd and our fans were a major factor in the outcome of that game. What a night it really was. We'll be back with some final comments in just a minute. There ain't no such thing as an ugly win. There ain't no such thing as a bad win. You celebrate like any win because that's a big win. When you big win. If we did all the little things that get you beat, let ourselves get behind. I mean, I didn't see one down face out there. I didn't see one person that thought we were going to lose that ball game. Everybody believed we were going to win. We'll correct those things and look out. I mean, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of every one of you. Let's take this thing to the house. We are 4-0 and we're ready to go. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Terry Bowden. Brought to you by your Alabama Coca-Cola bottler. Always Coca-Cola. Colonial Bank. Good people, great service. Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos pressure treated pine. If it doesn't say Osmos on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Your Alabama John Deere dealer. Nothing runs like a deer. By Golden Flake Snack Foods. One taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. LDDS Communications, the official long-distance carrier of the Auburn Alumni Association. Likes hot dogs. One bite and you'll know why they say, when it's likes, it's gone. Your Alabama Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. And by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, the caring company. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review. The Tigers have to rally in the second half to a 35-24 to victory over Southern Miss. Coach Terry Bowden, Southern is no surprise. They always come to Jordan-Hare to play. Well, we knew it was going to be a, a wild, crazy game. I thought maybe 17-10, you know, one of those type of games would have been similar to the last year's. But the scoring kept coming. And... Uh, we saw ourselves uh, get behind, and I was so proud the way we came back in that fourth quarter. Perhaps it was a good thing to do that, in, in a sense, for, for, for the maturity of this team. Phil, only in retrospect, <laughs> only <laughs> in retrospect can I say it was a good thing, because as we turned the ball over and, and gave up big plays, uh, I couldn't think of anything positive to say about our execution at times, but when we did not get down and lose our confidence, 
and felt that we would come back and then came back and win by 11 points in the fourth quarter. Uh, those are very good things that can happen to your football team to make us better. Oh, the uh, the big plays, the long plays, two touchdown passes for them, a long run for them. We have a big touchdown pass, a long run. It was a, it was an exciting game. Well, when you have the miscues on both sides, they turn the ball over two times on punt returns. We fumbled twice, actually fumbling six times, only losing twice, an interception for a touchdown. If you, those get those things will get you beat on either side. But big plays can, can change all that. We saw some big plays plays plus sustained drives by our offense. I think ultimately that's what uh, uh, decided the outcome of this game, our offense's ability to sustain drives and control the football. Right, that uh, final one was the thing of beauty to run the clock out at the end of the game. Uh, we'll go to the interviews now, and let me set this up. Reed McMillan had a, the, the longest run from scrimmage yesterday, 64 yards. Now, you know Reed is not the fastest guy in the world, and he had the ball stripped from him uh, as he was tackled. That uh, Stephen Davis, however, got on the, the fumble, and Auburn went on in to score. Now let's uh, talk to Reed in the dressing room. Look over your shoulder. <laughs> and I, yeah. Well, I knew once I got through, I knew I wasn't fast enough to get to the end zone. I figured somebody would be catching up with me pretty soon. And uh, sure enough, they did. But thank goodness Steve was there. And, uh, you know, the only thing I can think after that guy hit the ball is, man, my coach is going to kill me Monday. That's supposed to be Frank's act going up in the end zone and catching the ball. Oh, yeah. Well, Frank, he's capable of doing it. Um, kind of, I think I'm capable of doing it. I um, believe you are. <laughs> um, Stan did a great job of, you know, throwing the ball and it begins up front with the offensive line. They get, did a great job of holding him out. Brian, on the second extra point, he had to spin the ball to get the lace in proper play. Hey, that's Sean. Uh, Sean was at the wrong distance because I snapped it the same as I always snap it. He was, I'm just kidding. I'm not perfect. I'm it's sorry. Best snap, I'm sorry. Best snapper in America. Yeah. We came back from new things we, that can make you lose the ball game. We overcame that and got down. And then everybody knew that we could come back and win. So this went out and played our ball game. Uh, I thought you got your bill wrong toward the end of the first half. Yeah, yes, I did. Um, it was a pretty good hit on goal line down there. He shook me up a little bit. But like I said, luckily we got my like Steve Davis come in behind me and just pick up the slack. Call your touchdown back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not upset about it. All I want is to win for the team and just go. We should go out next week and try to correct the things we had mistakes on this week. Many more snaps than you thought you'd get today. <laughs> a lot more, a lot more. What, uh, uh, how did you, how did it go there? Well, of course, ain't nothing ever perfect, but, uh, I got a lot of things I can correct. But uh, we won. That's all that matters. It's the first one um, all year we, that we've had when we were down in the second half. And, uh, you know, everybody responded great. You know, it was, um, we had to come back and, and get a couple of touchdowns, and we did a great job of that. And, and uh, defense did a great job all day. They got a couple of big plays, but that was it. But, uh, you know, it is the first one where we've had to come back in the second half, and everybody responded just terrific to it. Quarterback scrambling, and we kind of lost sight of our men. They got wide open. They had some big plays. And on defense, we had some big plays also, breaking up a couple of passes. Made some big hits coming up from secondary. I think played well, but we did we did small things that can get us beat, just like Coach Bowden said, but we can, we can improve on that. What I, I see is this team is starting to find ways to win, even when things go bad. There's one thing that's different, uh, like I said about in the past, you know, we believe that we can win every game, and that's a big thing. If you know you're going to win, they jumped up 28-24. There's nobody on that team that didn't think we could win. You read the bootleg. No, it was uh, called by Wayne Hall. It was a great call. Cornerback blitz uh, on third and short because they was running a lot of option to the uh, boundary side. So, you know, we're trying to get some help over there. And it was a great call. And they ran the right play for me to be wide open on the quarterback. Well, uh, boy, it was a big play. Yeah, it was a big play for our defense. Uh, you know, we was down and we needed that stop, you know, to hold them down because they was, they was coming on aggressively and uh, we stopped them and it was great. Highlights of the game coming up with Coach Terry Bowden on the Auburn Football League. I did want to make the point that uh, we had some audio problems in the uh, post-game dressing room because of some interference in our wireless mic. Sorry about that. We'll, we'll do better next week, Coach. Near capacity crowd, 83,000, over 83,000, and you're going to see the crowd help the team in, in this game when, when really when the game gets on the line. Well, we really did have a great crowd, and we need our crowd to come back and be a factor in these ball games. And as we go on through this season, quiet when we've got the ball, but excited and loud when the other team has the ball. You'll see it make some differences on certain situations when other than this has the ball. But it was a wonderful crowd that was pulling very hard for Auburn. Turnovers immediately in this game. Well, they got one. Brian Robinson gets one. And we turn it right back over. Uh, and unfortunately, that set the tempo for us for a little bit uh, and gave them an opportunity when we should have been uh, taking advantage of ours. Okay, as we pick up the action now, uh, Southern Miss has the ball out at the 47-yard line, and they are about to go in for the touchdown, and this is one of those crazy big plays, Coach. 
Well, we won the toss and deferred because we, we like that because we think it gives us the opportunity in the second half. And right off the bat, we've got great pressure on their quarterback. And uh, But watch him make a great play uh, as they throw to uh, the young receiver Brock from Mo Montgomery. Right. We have him scrambled, and yet he makes the big play. It's not just the secondary. It's the protection. It's the, it's the, it's the containment of the quarterback. Get a break here. Auburn three downs and out on the punt, but you're going to get a turnover here. Well, you know, our kicking game improved. We had no long punt returns or kickoff returns. It bothered us. We go down there and cover, not only do we cover, but we cause two punt fumbles. Mm -hmm. And so that phase of our game was so much better this week, and, uh, and no the penalties were cut down half of what they were before. And this gave us good field position. Now we take it down. Boston runs a sweep on the goal line, takes somebody into the end zone. A great job by Boston. Now watch the big, big Willie Anderson come out here on that linebacker. Watch this 320-pound guy lock up on a linebacker. Mm -hmm. Great blocking by that offensive line as we made all of our short yards and goal line plays. Okay, the score is tied 7-7 now, and uh, here we go with a uh, good defensive stand by the Tigers. Well, the pressure on the quarterback was important there. Again, that young man, even if he had caught it, would not have made much. Our defensive front, coached by Joe Witt and Kirk Crane, uh, did a great job putting pressure on their quarterback. Gives us good field position. Here's Stan White. Tidy was covered. Going to his second receiver there, uh, Frank Sanders on the outside after the inside route was covered. Made a big 30-yard gain there uh, to get our offense rolling. At this point, we've got some momentum running the counter play. Bostic had another 100-yard day. Well, if Bostic had not had the turnovers and fumbles that he had, it uh, would have been a great day, but he's got to improve that. There he is just running through tackles. They have, a, they have a defensive lineman, number 94, right here, bursting through right here to make the ball. He is a great player. His name is Tobias, and uh, I'm glad we don't want to play him again this year. He did a great job. So after giving up the opening touchdown, Auburn comes back in the first quarter to seemingly take control of the game, and it must feel pretty good. Well, I think we, we have momentum going right now. Football, as much as we try to, to take things that superstitions out, is a game of momentum. You get things going your way, the confidence factor, uh, get the flow and the emotion, and momentum goes your way. And it was our way here for a while in the second part of the first half. We're going to see now as we go to the second quarter, Auburn plays defense very well, holding them to just uh, two first downs, I believe, in the second quarter, and also a big stand down at the 10-yard uh, line. Well, there's a no gain that, and, and an approach there by Terry Sullivan, running him out of bounds. Here's where the crowd comes up and really helps you, I think, along Well, there's the a great open field tackle by Calvin Jackson that he needed that and puts up with a third and six or so. And now the quarterback, uh, with the noise of the crowd, could not get his skates and his signals down. And they could not check off properly, caused them to have a delay a game. That's where the crowd comes in and caused them not to have a drive there. All right, they've just broken a 47-yard run now. Here's the, here's the stand at the 10-yard line. That's third and three there. It's fourth and one coming. Well, this was a critical. I was going to write my post-game script right here where they're fourth and one. <laughs> they miss it. And then Reed McMillan, there's a great hit for no game. Mm -hmm. And Reed McMillan takes the play, and we end up scoring with a minute left and a half. This was the post-game script, but <laughs> games are 60 minutes, not 30 minutes, and I learned it as well as our players. That's why you run that fullback play, isn't it? Right up the middle right there, <laughs> went for 64 yards, and uh, there they are stripping the ball. You know, they caused, they're the best team I've ever coached to get just to caught, taught to strip the football. Uh, we, we lost six fumbles, and, and we recovered all but two or four of them, two of them. And uh, great job there by Reed and then Steve Davis. And now instead of them getting a first down on our 10, we've got the ball right here. Look at oh. him hit up in there. Oh, now you've got to see this on repeat now. Now watch this defensive back try to tackle Steve Davis at the line of scrimmage. Number 32 there. Steve runs through, uh, gets the score. And now with about 30 seconds left and a half, we're up 21 to 7. And as we go in, you feel like we've got things under control if we will do our, do our job and take care of business after halftime. Well, Coach, I don't know what your uh, halftime speech was, but I think you ought to throw it in the can. <laughs> it wasn't very effective, I promise you, because it was defense, don't let them score, and we win. <laughs> Offense, score the very first drive, and we win. And neither of us did any of that. And uh, we were very disappointed in, in that part, but uh, the great comeback was much more important. Okay, we'll be back in just a minute with uh, a talk with Bobby and Ann Bobby. Back to Well, yesterday was something of an, uh, a Bowden family reunion. Twenty-six members of the Bowden clan were there. Uh, Coach uh, Bobby Bowden, and, uh, he was off, Florida State off this week. Uh, he and uh, wife Ann were there and uh, consented to do a news conference uh, after being requested, and they did that prior to the game. Now, 
uh, Coach, we need a little setup on, on this little sound bite we're about to play because you and your dad went head-to-head -head on a recruit uh, during the recruiting season. And would you please fill us in on what transpired there? Well, we had a recruit that had narrowed his choices down to Florida State and Auburn in the last week of recruiting. And I told the young man uh, uh, in the heat of the battle that uh, he better play quickly if he goes to Auburn because my dad's 63. If he goes to Florida State. If he goes to Florida State because my dad's 63 and 65 is mandatory retirement in Florida. <laughs> and my father came back and said, well... I promise you one thing, I'll be at Florida State longer than Terry's at Auburn. And so it got kind of hot, but that leads you into this discussion, I think, right. that they have. Now, now as we go to the, uh, go to the sound bite, uh, Ann is talking about worrying about her sons more than she worries about Bobby these days uh, because she wants them to do well, and he's already established. Now we pick up the, uh, the interview. And then what I'd like to do is forget these nepotism laws. Get Jeffrey up here with the rest of them. Let's retire him and bring him up here. Let's all get together and, hey, and coach together. <laughs> well, I mean, you know. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm excuse me. That's her. <laughs> I didn't mean to mention that word. Oh, well, a family, a family joke there. <laughs> Dad, uh, you know, after that recruiting thing got over, he quickly came out publicly and stated, "I'm going to coach for the year 2000 for 20 year, 25 years at Florida State." So we may see him around for a lot longer. Yes, I suppose we should make the point that Bobby Bowden will be around at Florida State for quite some time yet. <laughs> we'll be back with the second half in just a minute. Okay, this is going to be a wild third quarter. I guess if you were uh, just a casual fan, this would be very entertaining, but I don't think it was very ent entertaining from the sideline. No, it wasn't. I mean, everything that happened was the, wor was the worst thing that could happen to us. Halftime, we said, hey, offense, you get the ball first series, go score, and this game's over. Defense, don't give up one point regardless of what the offense does, and we're going to win the game. And yet we came out there and fumbled a snap and, and went for a loss and let momentum change. The wind was blowing this direction. The kicker kicked three of them out of the end zone. We were always on our 20. You'll see where Southern Miss takes advantage of some Auburn miscues. Okay, as we begin the third quarter of uh, highlights, uh, Southern has already scored a touchdown and looks like they're about to score another one here. This turns out to be a, a big stand here at the goal line, Coach. Well, it sure was. They're about here to go out here and score another touchdown there. And it's just getting their momentum up higher and higher as they do this, but they come out and make a great uh, bootleg, and the guy, young man makes, almost makes a great catch, Chris Schilling over there to cover, and they have to settle for a field goal. And again, our defense is playing very well, goal line situation. But still, uh, they are about to come back and get a turnover and score again, score 17 unanswered points. Uh, two-thirds of the way through the third quarter. It's really a wild Well, game. this was just a poor call on my part. I, they were not... Pre-game, I studied film all week. The, the screen was there. But it didn't take me too serious to know that they weren't rushing the quarterback. And I made a poor call. Stan didn't help matters. Made a poor throw. And got us behind. And I, and I felt very bad because I didn't think our players needed that to happen. But our defense came on now. And this is where we found out what Boy, we made of. Right. The game is really on the line now. And that's the third down play stopped. Southern Miss, and now the drive. Well, that's a third and eight right there, a big 10-yard reception. We come right back off that, see the open receiver, their defensive back's playing too tight, and there's the big play by uh, Stan White throwing to Thomas Bailey for seven points, puts us back on and gives us a little breathing room. An interesting fourth quarter coming up. You've, uh, you've taken control of the, well, you've, you've gotten the lead, but still you don't have control of the game. They still are feeling like they can win this thing. Well, it's too close. The game is too close, and we've got to do something in the fourth quarter. But what we did was go out there in a 15-minute quarter and hold the ball 12 minutes and 50, 16 seconds. They had it 2 minutes and 46 seconds in the fourth quarter. We scored a touchdown. We had a 7-minute drive. They had no chance to come back. Our offense finally put this game away. Okay, let's look at that final drive, that final put-away drive. We don't have time to see that great 7-minute drive to close the game, but this is the the drive that won the game. We have a great catch right there. Thomas Bailey making a big catch uh, on a third down play. Uh, and again, James Bostick comes back in. He had, he had been out in the third quarter, got his bell rung a little bit uh, by a big hit by their line, but comes back. We're running four straight times. You're seeing the last two runs as he goes in for the score with that front line blocking so well on that play and puts us up 11 points. And now, as we had our seven-minute drive, we pretty much iced it away. But come back, watch Calvin Jackson again as they try to their last about tip they could to pull it off. 
in the last minutes of the game. And the play that we didn't show was that great uh, corner blitz by Chris Schelling on a key play in late in the game. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry we don't have that video, but uh, boy, was that a big play. Well, you thought the game was turned around by the early fourth quarter stop and the touchdown bus. And then I think it began to turn when Chris Schilling on a third one, they ran a naked boot. He comes in, makes a six-yard loss, and we get the ball that kills their drive, go down and score to go us up by 11. That really changed the momentum of the play along with a bomb by Stan White. But it was a game in which we gave up five big plays on defense, two or three uh, critical turnovers on offense. And when you do that, you just wonder how you're going to win a game. But I think the perseverance and attitude of our players in not giving up made the difference. And, and, and some offensive ability to come back and do some things that you have to do and score the points you've got to have in a high-scoring game, as this turned out to be. Well, we've got to remember, 35 points, 416 yards of offense uh, normally would be a good day. Uh, we did not have the penalties we've been having. We did not have the punt coverage and kickoff coverage we've been having. Uh, we've improved all of that. But we let some other things slip up on us, and we've got to play the entire game if we're going to continue to improve. And you have some things to coach this week, Coach. Well, that's good. <laughs> you know, it's not hard to get your players' attention when they make mistakes and they see them make self-make mistakes. And like you said earlier, in retrospect, getting behind in the fourth quarter may teach you more lessons than it would have been to jump up and go 28-7 quickly in the third. We'll have some final comments in just a minute. The official airline of the Auburn Tigers. Well, uh, Coach, you know, uh, uh, we all know that uh, Auburn is not on television uh, this year, and uh, some of the creative, innovative folks uh, in the silk screening business over in Auburn have put this uh, shirt out. It says, uh, the best team on radio. <laughs> I tell you, at times like these, you can't you thank even more our, our radio affiliates and our, and our sponsors who put us on radio is that the only way we can get to many of our fans? And then our highlight show right here is the only television we get. And uh, you kind of take it for granted at times when you're on TV six and seven times. But our radio and our highlight show, they've become even more critical this season. And they're on the air 5.30 this Saturday at, uh, at Nashville for the 7 o'clock kick. And those guys are doing a great job bringing a lot of good insights into the game. Let's talk about Vanderbilt. They're sitting there watching uh, on Saturday, getting ready and resting up. Well, Vanderbilt, uh, again, we, I have not looked at any film of them as, uh, as uh, uh, we just got finished, but we'll be concerned, obviously, with the wishbone, the triple option. If they can run the football and run it effectively, uh, you may not see it on offense. And so their job is going to be to run the option and to keep the ball away from our offense. We have got to find a way to go out there and stop that option. We did it fairly well last year, but each year there's a new wrinkle in that offense as they try another way to effectively attack you. Quick word on Wayne Gandy, who was injured in the game. Well, our, our preliminary indications are that it's not a serious injury. Uh, we don't know if that means uh, back right away or out a week or two, uh, but we'll know more now Monday and Tuesday as we get some further analysis. Okay, Vanderbilt next week here on the Auburn Football Review. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you then. Coach Bowden's apparel provided by The Locker Room. This has been the Auburn Football Review, brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, the caring company, your Alabama Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. Likes hot dogs. One bite and you'll know why they say, when it's likes, it's gone. LDDS Communications, the official long-distance carrier of the Auburn Alumni Association. By Golden Flake Snack Foods, one taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. Your Alabama John Deere dealer. Nothing runs like a deer. Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos pressure-treated pine. If it doesn't say Osmos on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Colonial Bank, good people, great service. And by your Alabama Coca-Cola bottler, always Coca-Cola. I'm going to tell you. 
That's that's character. That's character. That's what Auburn wants is character. You play, I'll tell you, that defense is stand. Defense, that's the best. Hey, hey, Dean in that offense went all the way down that field. That's, a, hey, that, that, that's the sweetest one so far, if you ask me. That was sweet. 5-0, oh, we got Mississippi State at home. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Terry Bowden. Brought to you by your Alabama Coca-Cola bottler. Always Coca-Cola. Colonial Bank. Good people, great service. Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos pressure-treated pine. If it doesn't say Osmos on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Your Alabama John Deere dealer. Nothing runs like a deer. By Golden Flake Snack Foods. One taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. LDDS Communications, the official long-distance carrier of the Auburn Alumni Association. Likes hot dogs. One bite and you'll know why they say, when it's likes, it's gone. Your Alabama Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. And by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, the caring company. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Thriller in Music City last night. Auburn 14, Vanderbilt 10. You don't have to tell you guys when, when there's a big win, Coach. They well, you know can, it. You can <laughs> see it from the locker room. It's total elation. The thrill of victory, they say. The agony of defeat, that yeah. was the thrill of victory. It was so... Uh, uh, precisely fought. I mean, uh, there was no room for error the way the game turned out. Well, if you look at the statistics, we had 56 offensive plays, they had 55. We had 230 yards of offense, they had 224. But they had one turnover that went for seven, and that was the difference. Mm -hmm. And then Auburn's ability to hold the football in the end, play their game, really, in the second half. Well, when you have two running teams, the game ends so fast. There were so few opportunities. We had just two or three drives in the first half, and it was over. But when it came down to it, it comes down to great goal line defense, a great kicking game punt, and then a long drive to finish the game off. All those were key to making this an Auburn victory. You're right. It's easy to forget Terry Daniels' punt out of the end zone way downfield. Well, it took, it took the entire team, the team effort. And uh, uh, you can't just give it all on one to one person. It was the entire team effort. And uh, 60 minutes, we said we'd have a lot of that. And this was an example of, I think, what we've got to see down the road. Okay, very excited dressing room as you've already seen. Now we'll talk to some of the players and we'll begin with Brian Robertson after that big interception return for touchdown. Yeah, I was reading it all the way because I was expecting the option. And on the option, I got the quarterback. And so as I seen the quarterback roll my way, I seen the fullback. You know, he happened to throw the ball. Did you did you know what happened on the goal line, or were you in the power? Oh, well, I was in the power. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I was first. doing my job. I grabbed leg first. I mean, you know, when I hit him, I knew he wasn't going nowhere else. And then the linebackers, they came over the top and just cleaned him off. And he was, was going crazy on third and goal. Like, what was he doing? I was more of him. I was proud of him, though. He was just getting, he was just getting ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, the whole team got excited. I mean, when I did it. Hey, go hard. Five, no, five, no. Yeah. Hard to trick Vanderbilt on the bootleg, isn't it? I'll tell you what, I, on the play, I knew the guy was uh, not going to bite on it because he was out there for support, and I was like, well, I'm going to have to try to fake him with a quick, you know, quick pass and then try to run it. But uh, it was a run all the way. Coach Bowden said, don't you throw that ball. So, uh, you know, I, I just tried to have to fake him. I don't guess I'm that fast, though. <laughs> they, were, they were hurting you with the fullback play in the first half. Oh, well, yes, it was. I mean, um, the fullback was getting too many players on the dive. We had to concentrate and regroup and really start that fullback, you know, in order to get in the game. We was um, on the fire technique where they always hit with the dive, and we was worried more about the option than we was the dive. And we, when we started to squeeze down and, and, and play it the way we should, we stopped there and they still had to go to something else, you know. We took them out of the basic thing. And then you won the game with that goal line scrimmage. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> Everybody dug down, and I mean, we was establishing a new line of scrimmage, knocking their players back, and the linebacker was just cleaning up. We needed a big play bad. <clears throat> well, I, got, I tried to do my job, and Stan made a great throw. I, did my, I guess I did my job. Yeah, you're right. I guess you did. Well, boy, this was a tough, this was a tough road to hold tonight. 
Yeah, yeah this, this was a tough game. They, they, they really stalled the game by, by running the ball. and um, Defense had to put a clamp on. That's what they did. And once the offense got on the field, we tried to execute and execute it, score. I mean, and then we when we got the ball in the last quarter, we tried to hold the ball. So we did. Boy, they made you guys play their game for a while, and then you beat them with it, with that ball control on that final drive. Yeah, they came out playing. Cole Bowen said they're going to come out playing. They said that He said they might go up 7 to nothing, but we still had to keep our composure. And we went out there and did it, kept our composure. Joe, that ball down the field. And we, fortunately, we didn't score, but defense held them, got the ball. We got it, we got it back. How'd you come through first? Uh, I did all right. Um, he was kind of shaky at first, but uh, I think all the excitement kept me going, and, and I wanted to be out there, and I, and I promised you and the rest of the press that I was going to be out there all night. And I stayed out there, and uh, I'm just happy we won. Point to be made is you go on the road and play a tight game like that, and and uh, you almost have to play error free to win, which you did. Well, the, you're exactly right. No turnovers, no interceptions, no fumbles. We were concerned after last week we couldn't hold on. Uh, really regrouped in that manner. And when you have a tight ball game like that on the road, uh, when the D the other team is so easy to, with their fans to get into the game, no turnovers were key for our football team. Back in just a minute with Coach Terry Bowden's insights into the game on the Auburn football review. Okay, we'll talk about the first quarter of this game. Really went like you wanted to early. You stop them on the first drive, and then you put together a long, sustained drive, but it doesn't end right. <laughs> well, you know, we, we stop them after a couple of first downs, and we get the ball. We go for a 14-play drive and move it down and get in the field goal range and miss the field goal, and now we're into the second quarter. It's a typical type of game. It's very hard to get a feel for offensively because it goes so fast with two rushing teams. And in a sense, that played right into Vanderbilt's hands because they want to control the football, and you actually took a lot of time off the clock there without getting any points. Well, it was their drive, their uh, desire to get the ball into the game into the fourth quarter, yeah. to make it a game that came down to the end and not, uh, uh, not an early game where they got behind like before. And uh, it was one where both teams played to that final conclusion. Okay, we're going to pick up the uh, action now with Vanderbilt with the football late in the first quarter. Auburn is having some difficulty stopping the uh, fullback play, but uh, they're going to hold them here and then get the big play on defense to get up 7 to nothing. Well, our defense was, was designed to stop them from sideline to sideline with an option you don't know where they're going. And they worked between the tackles. They saw we worked what they call five technique or outside shoulder tackles, and they worked the inside game. Every time they tried to get outside, you could see where we stretched out. But the fullback had 50-plus 50, 50 yards in the first half. And the defense, though, slowed it down and slowed it down. And then this is the big play early that comes. There's Brian Robinson jumping Ooh. in front. What I throw play. my headsets off right there. I thought he was going to dance a little bit. He had me burning two holes in the back of his jersey, but he held his composure. Look at it again. He steps up in perfect position. And made a fine play. Brian Robinson is coming into his own from uh, Fort Lauderdale. playing great football right now from the safety position. All right, as we move to the second quarter now, Vanderbilt has put together a long drive here. They will end with a touchdown, and they're still getting that good movement inside. Well, right here, when you're playing option team, you know they're going to get yards early while you're trying to figure out what they do. But what you don't want to do, and which I know our defense was disappointed, instead of giving up three points or a little bit of field position, we gave up the seven right here. And again, not what you want to do, but again, as you develop the game, the, 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 the true uh, value of your team is how you do in the second half. And you'll see our defense correct their mistakes and do a fine job, Coach Hall. And there's, there's a James Boston running very hard. We only had 50 offensive plays this year. We've been having over 70. James Bostick and Steve Davis ran well, Tony Richardson well. Uh, uh, the offensive staff did a super job. The receivers, Tommy Bowden with the receivers, Rick Trickett and Rodney Allison and Rodney Garner and Jimbo Fisher did a great job with the offense also. The defense come back. Great stop there by freshman Derek Robinson. He played a lot along with Jason Miskit, them in the middle. Third and seven here, and they hold him again and uh, get a near fumble, but uh, Vanderbilt gets the ball back. now. Again, uh, Auburn misses an opportunity, and these opportunities are so rare in the first half because you only have the ball three times. Well, like I said, there we had a uh, Willie Anderson made one of his first early miscues. He hadn't made many, uh, but allowed a sack. And then we line drive a punt, very, very unusual for us, and really kick a line drive punt, lose some contain on, on the punt. Got to, you know, that's been a problem. There's so many things that you have to worry about, and that's one of them. And they kick, not only did they kick this 53 yard, they kicked the 48 yard that was called back with a penalty and came back with a 53 yard. They go into the halftime dressing room with a lot of excitement and a lot of momentum. The, right, and that's the third longest uh, field goal in Vanderbilt history. And I mean, it uh, really picked them up and uh, they 
they have to feel really good about the way the game has uh, has gone so far. Well, you got to remember they had a week off to prepare, a week off to get rested. It was a game that they themselves was was an urgent game for them that they needed to play their very best. Uh, uh, but we came out and tried to just do the things that we knew we had to do. Our fans were fantastic. We had uh, so many fans you couldn't tell if it was a home game or a away game. And with that type of enthusiasm, it just worked out for us, as we'll see in the second half. Okay, and we will be back with the second half in just a moment. The new Auburn tags are out. They feature this newly designed. They feature this uh, very prominent Auburn logo on the tag now. As you may know, since uh, the Auburn tags uh, were, were begun in 1988, Auburn has raised $1.7 million for the academic scholarship program. Not athletic, but academic scholarship programs. Coach, uh, have you figured out what you want? And you want that uh, 20,001 doesn't look too bad. Do <laughs> I'd like to be coaching, make sure I'm in 20,000. <laughs> I'm going to let my wife pick that out. That's uh, well, Some people call those vanity tags. That's because my wife is going to pick it out. And that's what <laughs> she'll have something on the back of that. It is a uh, normal $50 donation to the uh, scholarship fund. And of course, then on top of that, you play the, pay the normal costs for the tag. And of course, they can be picked up at your county probate office uh, any time now so uh, get your tags and uh, get the new ones uh, and get, get put those old ones away they've been they've been more than five years now or so we'll uh, let's one question before we go back uh, uh, to the uh, action uh, you had to make some adjustments to to stop the fullback play and what did you talk about offensively well I think I think one defensively we had to go ahead and do some more moving our tackles inside sitting inside a little bit more making them run wide although they had some effectiveness in that uh, there too. Offensively, we just knew we could not waste opportunities. We did not have many. We had to take advantage of our opportunities, and you'll see it took us two series, but in our second series, we go for a long drive and did the things we had to do to win the football game. And we'll take a look at that when we return with the third quarter. When Vanderbilt returned uh, for the second half, you could see how excited they were because they knew they had an opportunity to win this game. Well, they were very emotional, and uh, again, you've got to take your hat to Vanderbilt. They played an outstanding football game. You kind of you feel sorry for a team that works so hard, but not that sorry. <laughs> but they came out emotional. They came out ready to play, but so did Auburn University. They certainly did. Now, uh, actually, Vanderbilt stops Auburn after a couple of three first downs to begin the third quarter, and we pick up the action now. Uh, with Vanderbilt's first drive, and uh, after you stop them here, uh, this sets up the winning touchdown drive for Auburn. Well, we, we had a quick key stop there, kept them on their side of the football. Defense makes a great third down stop right there. Uh, great job by the defense. Kirk Crane was so excited after the game. His defense put the way they played, and Jack Hines and, and Joe Witt along with Wayne Hall. Now, here's the little shuffle pass we used all three or four times we used it. If effective, Stan loves it because each of them are completing passes. And uh, here's the big play. It rolls out for a short little hook. They overplay it. Uh, Frank Sanders makes a great run now and is out running the corner, but the safety comes over, gets him down at the four-yard line. And this is where we've done very well. When we get inside the red zone, we put six, seven points and not three. And a great run by James Bostick and the great blocking up front uh, as now we get back on top and you see the excitement start to begin on our sideline. Frank really has a feel for where he is on the field, doesn't he? He really does. Frank has, uh, has outstanding hands. He's a very physical uh, receiver. He's become our clutch go-to receiver uh, in critical situations. Now the game is on the line. You have the, you have the edge, but you know this game is going to go down to the wire. That's right, because you've got to remember, they've now begun to run the option outside. We've shut the inside down, and when you get outside, any mistakes out there uh, go to long gains, because you've got nobody out there, and it's going to be a battle right down to the wire. And as we, uh, Vanderbilt now will spend uh, the last five minutes of the third quarter grinding out a drive, and we pick it up in the fourth quarter, first and goal at the three. Here's the first down play. The quarterback picks up all the way to the yards right the very first play on the option. But Anthony Harris comes out along the rest of the defense. And Otis they, Mounds. A great run there. Look at Calvin off the outside. And there are those, all three linebackers, Miska, Solomon, and Harris right there. They go again. The defensive line penetrates. Now we've got fourth and about half a yard. And you'll see the great player. Look at there. See the, look at the defense come back through. 
And what a great emotional play. It, it, it was just, now we're in trouble because we've got, there's the great stop again. So we, we, we have to come back and punch the ball out six yards so we can get a decent punt. Of course, there's some fans of Auburn celebrating early. <laughs> now here's the last series. We put Steve Davis in that last series. Runs seven minutes off the clock. Uh, as it goes down to one minute, you'll see Steve Davis on several key runs. The blocking now. You've got fresh legs at tailback. And this was a critical drive after the five defensive stop. And there's Stan White. Very big play to Sean mm. Carter now on a third down play. Uh, run the naked reverse uh, to the quarterback and then throw the ball. Come off with a very tough win. Very excited win. And again, the fans were right there in the corner. You have to give a lot of credit to them. Now, Auburn did not have the usual uh, rushing yardage that they have, but you don't run that many plays. It, it was a really strange game in a lot of ways. Well, you have about 30 rushing r uh, plays instead of the usual 50 to 55. Uh, and again, that took away. And we had two sacks that were uh, that took away some yardage, but the uh, uh, rushing per carry was very good. We just didn't have many at-bats. Two running teams run a clock out. And you just, it's hard to get a lot of scoring without big, big plays. Coach, what does this do to the team that uh, now for two weeks in a row has found a way to win? Does, that builds confidence. Well, up. I think it does. I think it prepares you for tight ball games. And again, you better get yourself ready because if we're going to win some more ball games with a schedule that we've got up there, we've got to keep these games to the fourth quarter. And now I think we know, not just like Southern Miss where we got ahead and then got 11 points, but a game where it came down to the wire, where everybody's hearts were thumping. This is the kind of game you've got to prepare for to get some big wins down the road. Yeah, the, the meat of the schedule is, is, is upon us now. That's right. It does not get easier, but I tell you, 5-0 and 0 is the best way to go into the last part of this season. Uh, you have that splendid chemistry now. You could tell in the dressing room. I mean, these guys, they believe in one another. They, they, they think they can accomplish anything. Well, I think for the first time in the dressing room, you saw some just unadulterated just love and enthusiasm. Sometimes there are some people who are excited, other people are disappointed they didn't play as much. There wasn't one person that was unhappy with his performance at the end of the game, unhappy they didn't get to play as much as somebody else. That was the team that we looked for, and when you get that, there's, there's no hiding it. Well, it's difficult to close the book on a, a great win like that, but it, it's absolutely necessary because Mississippi State comes in next week, and we'll be back to talk more about that in just a moment. Delta Airlines. Delta, the official airline of the Auburn Tigers. Well, Coach, we've, we, we've got a big hit on our hands. The Auburn best team on radio t-shirt is a rip-roaring success. <laughs> they had a run on them in Auburn. Well, I'm going to tell you, it's the only game in town, the radio, and again, we've had great support there, and I know all those people that weren't in the stands, I know we're listening right by their radios. Uh, I saw a lot of these T-shirts in Nashville. Uh, by the way, the crowd, we didn't mention, six to 8,000, maybe uh, swell to 9,000 because there were a lot of tickets bought by Auburn people in Nashville. And, and Stan White comes to the line late in the game and quiets the crowd <laughs> on the road. <laughs> I mean, it was amazing, the crowd. I mean, we go in and probably have as good a Tiger Walk as we've ever had going into Vanderbilt two hours before the game. Tiger Walk's becoming traditional on the road as well as home. And again, you don't know how much that means to our football program and to our players to go in and feel comfortable seeing the same faces. Back to the uh, T-shirt just a minute. Let me mention that uh, they are on sale at J&M Bookstore, at Anders Bookstore, and at Gaffer's in Auburn in case you just have to have one of those uh, best team on radio T-shirts. Now to the task at hand. Mississippi State played uh, Florida in an excellent game uh, at Florida Field yesterday where it is so hard to be poised, and they were. Well, I tell you, I think the talent level we face this week may step up a notch, uh, um, and they are playing outstanding football. They started out slow. Uh, their record does not show, but we know what they've done. They've played outstanding football. Florida had all they could handle, and we know the talent level at Florida. So Mississippi State, uh, the talent they bring in here, uh, it's going to be a big one for us, and uh, it, it puts us a chance to, uh, to win six ball games. Ty Jordan's having a great year throwing the ball deep. Well, we're going to see a different type of attack. Uh, this is different than even the last two or three teams that we've seen. The ability to throw deep, they've got great speed, and they've got very, very powerful running backs. Uh, they're averaging over 400 yards a carry. Uh, defensively, they have got great athletes. Not the numbers they had last year, but uh, we're going to see a big physical football team that can do a lot of things. And kickoff for at Jordan-Hare Stadium for a big crowd is 1 o'clock. The Auburn Network is on the air at 11.30 with all the guys and uh, if you can't make it, tune them in, and we'll have, of course, the replay for you on Sunday. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you very much.
Coach Bowden's apparel provided by the locker room. say now except you deserve to be six and oh it ain't a mistake it ain't a fluke you deserve to be six and oh because that's what you work for and that's what you wanted it was a great win it was a great win and i don't even have to tell you what we got coming next week great week great week of practice great week we'll bring the gators in here This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Terry Bowden. Brought to you by your Alabama Coca-Cola bottler. Always Coca-Cola. Colonial Bank. Good people, great service. Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos pressure treated pine. If it doesn't say Osmos on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Your Alabama John Deere dealer. Nothing runs like a deer. By Golden Flake Snack Foods. One taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. LDDS Communications, the official long-distance carrier of the Auburn Alumni Association. Likes hot dogs. One bite and you'll know why they say, when it's likes, it's gone. Your Alabama Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. And by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, the carrying company. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Auburn is 6-0 after a 31-17 win over Mississippi State before 84,000 at Jordan-Hare yesterday and an early shower for the coach. My first, my <laughs> first uh, uh, time to be uh, thrown water all over me and the uh, first time ever six games into a season, but uh, we were excited about the win. I like you, you called uh, Rick Trickett to the front there in the dressing room. because I'm sure he was proud. Well, it was a big game for him because like Sanford, those were a lot of his players over there, his boys that he recruited, the ones he coached. And, and, and a coach wants to do well against players, uh, and he did very well, 270-plus yards rushing against a team that was giving up only 83. And at a time in the second half when you needed to run the clock and they were able to do it on the ground. That's very, very big in factor in this ball game. What a, what a contrasting first half, first quarter, second quarter, Coach. It was. I mean, I mean, if you could pick something you did not want to happen, it's exactly what happened. Everything we did to, was wrong. We, 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 we hold them to, to, to hold them. They punt, hits them on the back. We throw a nice pass, deflected interception. Great run by Bostic, extra yardage. He fumbles the football, but, but they only get six points. The defense held strong early, and then finally the offense did their part. That was the key. They only got two field, field goals. goals, six points out of all those turnovers, and Auburn cashed all of their mistakes in the second quarter. Well, that's right. When you get people turning the ball over, you need to score points. You need to put the knockout punch in. Mississippi State had the turnovers. They did not produce touchdowns. They produced only two field goals, and then they turned the ball back over to us on the third uh, turnover. We came back, and we had opportunities. We scored three touchdowns, and ultimately that was the difference that they could not overcome. Okay, we'll be back to look at that uh, crazy uh, first half of play, but right now let's go to the Auburn dressing room and talk to some of the players immediately after the game. It was a matter of uh, keeping cool and waiting for things to come around this week. Yeah, it was. We, uh, you know, we started off slow. Had some, I think we had five turnovers on the whole day, and still to win 31 to 17, we had to have a good offensive effort and uh, came out and, uh, like I said, started slow and came came around with some big big plays to uh, Frank and to Steve and, and to Tony down there. And defense is just doing an outstanding job. I mean, you know, they, they held the game for you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they've done it week in and week out. It hadn't been just a you know off and on thing. They've done it week in and week out, and they they deserve total credit for it. I don't know how many times I've said this, but 
when we needed a big play. <laughs> the coach is making a great call. They, 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 they're picking up the defense real well, and they're making great calls. I'm just so having to be the guy to throw the ball to. Stan laid it up there just right, too. Yeah, Stan made it perfect, though. The line gave him a good time. And we practiced on that all week. We thought it was going to give us that type of defense. Um, so we came out and, you know, executed, and it worked. You made a good cut, though, and hit it for the corner over there, too. Oh, um, I felt buddy on my bike, so I said, I, I'm not going to get ran down this week. There's a team, they joined on me all week to my time. We didn't get Brian Robinson ain't get ran down and <laughs> stuff like that. So I decided to just go ahead and cut and, and go for the big one. Looks to me like you're starting to uh, get comfortable and uh, and see the holes. Uh, yes. Um, a lot of people been, you know, giving me advice. Uh, JB, you know, we talk on the sideline, telling each other what happened on plays and just get doing it, giving each other, you know, Telling each other what's going on, just letting us know what you know what, what the hole is gonna be and stuff like that. So it's it's basically the team helping me out. Y'all were kind of challenged to run it against this team today, weren't you? Um, yes, yeah, going into the game, uh, we knew they only gave up uh, about 90 yards a game, and coach told us that uh, we was really gonna have to get out of them if we wanted to uh, run the ball. But we need we know we needed to uh, establish it so we can get the pass off, and we had success early at it. And um, as the game went on, we kept running it pretty well. You Florida boys gonna get ready? Um, yes, we've been talking about it um, for a good while, and we're excited to be six and zero and have won this game. And um, I'm sure you know it's not gonna take much for us to get ready for the uh, Florida game. It was first interception first for me. Uh, first you know the guys been joking on me about uh, not getting the interception, so uh, today I told them I, I was gonna get one, and, and it happened for me. You probably enjoyed knocking the ball loose from that guy as much as you did intercepting. Oh, that, oh, that was the biggest play of the game for me. Uh, got that big hit on the fullback out in the flat, so it just lit me up. You should is back in the race, huh? Uh, both of us are, really. <laughs> Ryan's still ahead with two, but we're coming for him. Uh, with Florida coming in next week, we're going to have our chances. The challenge today was not let him get up top, and he didn't, huh? We definitely um, prevented the deep ball today. Um, they caught some short stuff underneath, but that's something you can break up on. We did a great job in secondary and the hold them. Other than the one you kicked on the ground, didn't they, didn't they all go in the end zone today? Uh, yeah, they all went in the end zone. It felt good today, huh? Yeah, it felt real good. It was hot out there, a little bit used to what I'm used to, Florida weather and all that. So but against a team like this, it saves a lot of bodies to kick that ball in the end zone. Day. Yeah, they. I don't know what they did on the one. They uh, they decided to hold in the end zone that one time, and I think they're just trying to play us for a bunch yeah, of fools. Yeah, yeah. He just started uh, walking up, didn't he? Yeah, I don't know what he was doing, but he was going to get himself in a lot of trouble. Highlights of the first half, and Coach Terry Bowden's insights when we come back on the Auburn football review. As we indicated at the start of the show, things don't get started off very good. The first thing that happens is uh, Chris Schelling is blocking downfield on the punt, and he touches the ball, and they get the ball in field position. Well, you know, he had three turnovers. This is the first of the turnovers, and uh, they were all turnovers that uh, you can't really get on a, a young man for the mistake. It was a very short punt. It was not a good punt. He was blocking in the area that we teach him to block in. It hits him in the back. No chance to get out of the way. And as you'll see, we have some they other turnovers in. that are just uh, a quarterback being pulled down, interception, Extra effort by the tailback, fumbles downfield. It just seemed like it wasn't going to be our day, but the defense held strong. That's right. Just gave him two field goals with those four turnovers. Now we pick up the action right after uh, a tipped pass that it's three to nothing already. And uh, here comes another turnover, and things don't look very good for the Tigers right here early. It was just amazing how, how they, of course, they chose to go to some gadgets. I think they watched too much of our film against LSU, but they're a great play. I think that's Calvin Jackson. Mm -hmm. Great interception there. Although now it's not a turnover, from an offensive standpoint, we're on the, the, the half-yard line, and all we can do is get the ball out a little bit and punt, but later on... And they kick another field goal at 6 nothing. This is the only good thing that happened in the first quarter, That's really, right. Steve, we had one big play offensively. <laughs> Steve Davis had a beautiful run. I think it was an indication of things to come, though. Yeah. Okay, we're in the second quarter now, and after another interception, uh, State has the ball, but again, the defense is going to stop. I tell you, there are just so many names to mention on that defense. Our defense continually... Uh, put pressure on the quarterback. They couldn't sack him early. They did late, but he, he, he hurried throws. Did not have time to throw it deep. After a roughing the kicker penalty, Auburn still keeps the ball, and that was a big play right there. Right? That right there. We had seen it on film. We knew the formation that we needed. We knew where they needed to be aligned on the field. The block, the penalty on the on the punt gave us an opportunity to run it. It went right for the touchdown, just like we were hoping. Jason Miska played a great football game, and uh, I know the fans are, are excited about him and the way he plays and what he represents and the, the effort that he provides. But the overall defense, super job, and uh, 
And he also did a great job. This is a first, second, and third down sequence here where Auburn really stuffs them and sets up the uh, drive, uh, probably the, the best-looking drive of the day right here. Well, we started, I mean, the second quarter was just the opposite of the first quarter. Of course, James Bostick, what a tandem we have with James Bostick and Steve Davis. He runs with so much determination. It, it's inspiring to our football team and to our fans. And then Stan comes back and makes a big play. Sean Carter catches the, uh, the little slant pass there. And now the offense is clicking. Watch this play. There's Thing of the, beauty. It's short yardage play. We side run the screen outside. And Steve Davis does what we've been waiting for. It breaks a tackle and runs all the way to the goal line. Great block by Gandy. And also Sean Carter on a comeback block there. Really set up the play. Well, it's good. To, I think with Mississippi State, as big and as strong as they are, you have to use misdirection. You've got to catch them off balance. And we tried to do that throughout. And again, the defense played so well. A uh, big interception there being Chris Schilling. The interception, he had a key fumble, caused a fumble. Uh, probably his best game of the year. And Auburn is going to cash this turnover. There's a toss sweep. You'll see uh, James Boston oh, take it hole. down to about the 12-yard line or 10-yard line. Just hard running. And now we'll fake the counter play. Stan turns quick, throws the fullback. The same play we scored on against Ole Miss, the first game that was called back. And it came back again six, five, six games later. Now, State's going to make one uh, desperate uh, try at getting back in the game, going up top, as they have done so successfully all year. Well, this is the thing I think that, that, that people maybe not notice. They could not get the big play. It worked against Florida, worked against LSU. They won the big play. It did not happen. And at half, we're up 21-6 to six, uh, with that excellent uh, effort in the second quarter. That's about as good a quarter as you could have dreamed of to uh, score three times and turn the game around as, as well. It's funny because that's the way the Southern Miss game went. You know, we did not start good against Southern Miss, but all of a sudden, boom, 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 we were up 21 to 7, Southern Miss. And that was the, that was the emphasis of our halftime. Southern Miss, we were up 21 to 7, and yet all of a sudden we were down 24 21. That was our emphasis. We did not come out immediately, but we got the, we, 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 Took it, after, took it to them much better than the second half. Okay, and we'll come back and talk some about uh, halftime after these words. Coach, people, uh, a lot of people are talking about the chemistry of this team. I'm not sure I understand what chemistry is, but I know that when things are tough for the offense in the first quarter, the defense was playing as, uh, as good as they could and, and keeping things in check. And then uh, later on, it's the offense that takes over the game and, and uh, runs the clock out when State makes a little run in the second half. I, I guess that's chemistry, huh? Yeah, I think, I think when you can get the entire team to buy into the goal, to, 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 to say, okay, this is what I personally want to accomplish, and everyone buys into what we're trying to accomplish this mm -hmm. year, then you get a team. You get everyone wanting to do everything they can. One time it's the defense. One time it's the offense. It's the coaches. It's the doctors. It's the trainers. It's the managers. It's everyone. And everyone wants so much to buy into this turnaround, to get the, getting us back. And that's what you're seeing out there on the football field. And uh, it's getting us through some of these tough, tough situations. Mm -hmm. And, and, and then uh, uh, an outgrowth of that is, is suddenly it becomes fun for everyone and practice is not so difficult and all of that. Huh? Well, you know, it, that, that's the one thing about winning. Winning makes football enjoyable because football is very hard work. It's very tough. It's very physical. It's very demanding. But when you win, it's fun. And, uh, and you want football to be fun, and so therefore you want to win. So all these things go together, and right now at 6-0, and uh, the winning does not make us complacent. I don't think it makes us overconfident. It makes us prepare even better. Mm. And preparation will be very important uh, this week. We'll talk about that later in the program. But a program reminder, the Auburn Network will be on the air this Saturday at 11.30 uh, prior to the Auburn-Florida game. And uh, Coach Pat Dye will be on the Auburn Tailgate Show uh, sometime during that period, 11.30, uh, till one o'clock and I'm sure a lot of folks will want to come by and uh, see him and of course listen in on the radio to his comments. Also, it's a big week for the Auburn Letterman's Club. They have a big golf outing planned for Friday. Uh, Auburn fans can join Auburn Letterman in this golf outing. You can put a team together and have uh, an Auburn Letterman play in your group. It's going to be quite an affair and it raises money for the Auburn Letterman's Club Scholarship Program. So you can call the Auburn Athletic Office this week if you want to get involved in the Auburn outing at Grand National on Friday. Back in a minute with the third quarter. 
Okay, we're going to move back into the third quarter. State uh, stops Auburn on uh, out and three downs and then uh, drives and picks up a field goal to make the score 21 to 9. And as we pick up the action now, uh, the Tigers appear to be headed for a long drive and a touchdown to answer that field goal. But you're going to get stopped on fourth and one down on the 20, Coach. That happened. That happened yeah, well, yeah, really disappointed because we need we needed good drives. We needed, we, there's a big third down play right mm -hmm. there to uh, Stan White to Thomas Bailey. And here's a big play to the fullback on a fake counter. Throw the boot in the flat. Big play there. We need to get something going. We started out slow in the first and second half, just like against Southern Miss. Here's Disappointed. third and one. Big third and one run right there to keep a drive going and get us down there. Although we did not, we missed a, short, a fourth down play, we were able to run a lot of the clock out and get the ball down uh, into their side of the territory to change field position and put them back here inside the 20 to start with in their drive. Right, and as it works out, it's going to be a, 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 a good deal because they're going to get the turnover here. Well, that was big. We missed the fourth and one, but the defense, uh, as they've been doing, gave it right back to us. A big hit by Chris Schilling uh, on the pass in the flat. Now our offense gets the ball down on the 14. And this time, I believe, we'll take it to pay dirt now. There's the reverse. You'll see this reverse by... Uh, we run the fake reverse so often. Finally, when you run it, they don't seem to cover it quite as well. We don't have great speed at the wideout position, but we do like to run the reverse every now and then. We get the ball inside. Uh, lead play. Uh, uh, Reed McMillan made a great power block on our, on our lead isolation. And then... Uh, Look at Tony Richardson jumping over top for the mm. touchdown to give us the 28 to 9 game. I noticed the quarterback got a block on the reverse, too. Though. Yes, he did his <laughs> job on the reverse, Dan White. Okay, now State comes back and uh, puts together a drive that lasts for the remainder of the third quarter and now into the fourth quarter. Uh, they are still moving the ball, trying to get back into this game. Well, we coaches are like fans. We sit there and start adding up points. Two touchdowns, two two-point conversions, and a field goal is what they need when we start watching the clock. And we start saying, okay, they've got to do all these things. And if we can keep running that clock, and that's what you're beginning to see. Big play here. They have a guy deep. The new quarterback came in when Jordan went down. Great play. Deflected there uh, by Chris Schilling. Uh, Otis Bounds right there again. And uh, big, big play. This is the thing they did so well against Florida that uh, the Auburn defense did not allow them to do. So the, or, the, or the bomb. Crucial third down right there. They run the shuffle pass like we do on the draw. They did not get a defense, was, was, was wide awake, they saw missed, the play. Miss a field goal, but then they come back on their next drive uh, after an Auburn turnover and score. So it's now 28-17 with about eight and a half minutes left in the game. What Auburn needs now is a long drive. Well, I was very concerned now because, again, we needed to have a long drive. And this guy came back in, Steve Davis, had been ripping them pretty good. We go back to James Bostick. He's fresh. He, 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 he's sharp. Makes a great run. And watch the, the, the determination here and, and how it excites our football team and our fans. Look at the run for the uh, first down. Did not go out of bounds. Knew that would stop the clock. That's the type of thing that's making Auburn successful right now. My, my. Here's Reed McMillan, the old work. Or, uh, no, this is Tony. Tony well, had a big day. Tony, Tony had an excellent day. And Reed and him changing positions at fullback. But there's a big nine-yard gain. Here comes uh, And then Reed comes back. The same play. The, the, the pile kind of wads up there. But he pushes the pile forward. And we began to, to run the clock. And then... Again, Scott Etheridge, six out of seven this year. That's his sixth. Uh, now it puts it pretty much out of reach uh, for the final of the fourth quarter. Is, you got your shower just before you went on the field there, Coach. I've never been doused with water six games into a season. But <laughs> to believe me, the, six, the winning season was so important to our young men uh, as our first goal, our short-term goal. And to get that in six games is very important to us. That we, is a goal. And a we talked goal. about it very much. And uh, I don't know who showered me, but it, it felt very good. Another goal is... Uh, uh, this is the second team that uh, beat Auburn last year that you turned the tables on. That was really our first goal, was to beat a team or beat teams that had beaten us before. And there was Ole Miss and there was Mississippi State. And so we've done that. In doing that, we've been able to acquire a winning season. And now you search for bigger and better goals. And again, these things make the next goals possible. And those are all ahead of us. Back for a big goal. Talk about that when we come back on the Auburn Football League. Fair line of the Auburn Tigers. Auburn, Florida, next Saturday, 1 o'clock at Jordan Hare Stadium. You have seven starters from Florida and at least that many more who play, and uh, they're going to be excited about that game this week. Well, well there are going to be some individual uh, uh, reasons for wanting to play this game very well and to win this football game, but this has become a big game for Auburn. I'm excited because it has some, some national or conference significance. We can't compete for a championship this year. We can't compete for a, a bowl game, but we can make a, be a factor in who plays in those bowl games, and this becomes one that, that we're very excited about. 
of course, against a, a football team that's uh, far and above the best football team that we've played. Uh, State throw, throws it 41 times and only gets 155 yards. That has to give some confidence going against the best passing team in the league. Well, Florida really does a, an outstanding job of, of executing the passing game, not just throwing it. A lot of people throw it. Few people execute it. They, ex stuff, huh? they execute the passing game. Uh, they understand it, and they do it with great athletes. We're going to ha obviously need to have our very best game. But you know, at first there were games that I thought we might have a chance to win, and games we may not. I really don't, don't, don't. Uh, uh, there's opportunities. This game, this team can win anything. I think if they play well. I think they've reached that level where they have that kind of confidence. Uh, we'd like to remind you of the uh, Auburn Tailgate Show uh, beginning at 11:30 Saturday, and Coach Pat Dye will be on the first half hour of that, 11:30 till 12 o'clock, and we'll have the Auburn uh, review playback for you on Sunday. Hope you can join us then. Good luck to you and the Tigers, Coach. Thank you very much. Coach Bowden's apparel provided by The Locker Room. This has been the Auburn Football Review. Brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, The Caring Company, your Alabama Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. Likes hot dogs. One bite and you'll know why they say, when it's likes, it's gone. LDDS Communications, the official long-distance carrier of the Auburn Alumni Association. By Golden Flake Snack Foods, one taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. Your Alabama John Deere dealer, nothing runs like a deer. Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos Pressure Treated Pine. If it doesn't say Osmos on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Colonial Bank. Good people, great service. And Everybody here, I can't say offense, like everybody here, everybody here, great job. Men, you believe in yourself, you can do anything. You go, you go to top four now with the, I don't care, where they rank. They can rank us nothing for all I care. You're there now, you're there. It's a great win, man. That's a, I, I'm so proud of you. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Terry Bowden. Brought to you by your Alabama Coca-Cola bottler. Always Coca-Cola. Colonial Bank. Good people, great service. Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos pressure treated pine. If it doesn't say Osmos on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Your Alabama John Deere dealer. Nothing runs like a deer. Buy Golden Flake snack foods. One taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. LDDS Communications, the official long distance carrier of the Auburn Alumni Association. Likes hot dogs. One bite and you'll know why they say, when it's likes, it's gone. Your Alabama Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. And by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, the caring company. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review, an exciting game, as exciting from start to finish as any you will ever see. Auburn 38, Florida 35. Coach Terry Bowden, no longer can we say this is a nice little football team. These guys can play. Well, they deserve everything. This team showed that they deserve to be considered a, an outstanding football team, not just a lucky football team or a team that just plays as hard as they can. This team can be as good as it wants to be. And, and after Saturday, I believe they, this team can play with anybody. And uh, I'm so proud, one of the biggest wins I've ever been a part of. 
I, uh, big plays throughout, facing, facing defeat so many times and disdaining it and going and coming back. Well, like, again, they just kept trying to make something happen, you know, and, and we just tell them to keep believing, have a strong attitude that, that, that something good's going to happen, keep trying to make something happen. We don't know when, we don't know where, but eventually it'll happen. And we just saw a bunch of fellows out there that, that each of them were trying to go out and win a football game. Just an amazing, amazing football game. Let's go in the dressing room now. And first off, we will see uh, a couple of uh, really great sights. Uh, there's a coach and his quarterback, two brothers congratulating one another. Uh, two great players right there. That's wonderful stuff. And, and there's a former coach and his quarterback. I tell you, Coach Dye was about as excited. I, I, I tell you, he's an excited person and loves Auburn, I will tell you. And the fans w would, would not leave, so some of the players went back on the field. Coach, that's Dennis Collier. He had a big win over Florida in Pat Dye's first year at Auburn. I tell you, the fans were great. I had to go out there and lead them in a war eagle, and the players wanted to go out, and the fans, I tell you, they were a big part of that win. Yeah, boy! What an effort. What an effort in the second half. Man. Yes. Like I said, we all, even though we came in behind, we just kept our poor and kept our companies up. They would come out and ball with them. And like I said, we just came out the second half and turned it up a notch and came out with a win. If I'm not mistaken, Brian may have pressured him when you intercepted that ball. Wasn't he on the blitz? Yes, we had a blitz going on, and uh, he just threw it up, get rid of it. And I was still out right there, just lingering in, uh, in zone, and I just picked it off. Well, why didn't you score? I got kind of tired down at the end. They were throwing some good blocks for me. I was cutting and, and slashing, and uh, I just ran out of gas. <laughs> when you going to Haines City? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Right now, uh, I'm just so happy we won today. And uh, it ain't no feeling like this. I mean, this is a big game. It's our seventh win, and, and it's been a long time since we beat Florida. And uh, I'm just happy right now. And the way you had to do it you know, uh, makes it all the better. Huh? Yeah, it took a total team effort. Uh, it came down to uh, what Coach had told us. It probably had come down early in the week. He said it come down to a field goal, and it did. Uh, we was down early, but we kept fighting, and we had a 60-minute plan, and it turned out how we wanted it. Didn't you have pressure on Chris' interception? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I tried to press, press the quarterback, and I did. He threw it up. How about it, Otis? You got these guys to come up here, and they won a big game. Oh, yeah. It's a great win for us. I mean, we all pulled together, and we played hard tonight, and I'm just glad we won. Nickel, nickel package wasn't working early, but it was late. It's a total package to begin with, and we had confidence in it going into the game, and, uh, you know, we, we, we messed up on a few situations here and there, but all in all, it came out right. And this little dude turned the game around. Short dog. Oh, he turned, short, short dog. Short dog. I'm trying to catch Brian. One more, one more, and I got him. <laughs> I wish I could be out there with him now. I look at the defense. Each game, they're getting big plays and just going all out. Look at Scott. The little man come in and make the field goal for us, and uh, hey, we love this game. But that was that was for the Dillard boys right there. That's for the boys from Florida. Picked a good time running the reverse, too. You're right. They picked a great time. I, Stan said he made the call. Coach was um, looking for another swap boot rail to Tony, Tony at a tight end, but Stan made the call, and Coach, coach let him call him. That was a great time to call him. Had some big plays on uh, coverage, didn't you? Yeah, they um, moved me to defense, and today I just concentrated on special team and just tried to get down there and make a big play. You're learning, you're learning the outside linebacker spot, huh? Well, I'm learning. I'm, I'm, I haven't learned it quite good enough to get in the game yet, so I, I didn't play too much, play at all today, but I'm learning. Uh, I'm going to write across your chest that you're the designated sack man. Well, uh, it uh, just happened to work out well today. It, uh, you have those days where the guy actually is rolling out to your side, and it uh, just was fortunate enough. I, I really can't pronounce the guy's name, whatever it is. Uh, <laughs> Werfel, uh, I really don't know the spelling of that, but uh, he ended up uh, coming to my side. It just worked out well. It really did. What a come back for defense in the second half. Oh, we had a blast. It was just, you know, it was a lot of fun. And what a great memory for Ace Atkins. Of course, his father, the late Billy Atkins, was a great player for the Tigers. Well, he represents really what I think the Auburn athlete is all about, a young man that plays hard, good student, and loves Auburn. We'll be back with Coach Terry Bowden's comments of the game in just a minute. Okay, at the beginning of the game, uh, the Florida offense hitting on all cylinders. In fact, it looked like the uh, fronts were controlling the line of scrimmage early, Coach. Well, I think, you know, that the thing that, that you didn't want to happen was happening. They hit big plays. They're an explosive offense. And they're hard to stop. And uh, it was something we just had to, to adapt to and adjust to. Think Wayne Gandy's ready to play, Coach? Well, you know, Wayne's from Florida. <laughs> Some of those Florida guys, I hate to admit it, but that Florida game is right up there with Alabama. Okay, before you know it, it's 10 to nothing, and it looks like they're going in for another touchdown to make it 17, but watch what happens. 
Well, you're so afraid right here that the score's going to get uh, too much before you can make something happen. And Calvin Jackson steps in front of a, an out pattern, uh, goes 96 yards for a touchdown. Uh, a big play, Calvin, of course, one of our best coverage men. Uh, that got things rolling, as you'll see the offense comes back now and changes the early flow of the game. And the, the defense uh, comes to life, holds them on third and one right here to get the ball back for them. So then we started mixing in, hitting some of our passes. We throw a little screen to James Bostick. This play right here got us going real good. And what happens, we had to mix the run and the pass together, and we click this series. You'll see us move right down. Huge Stan, play here, third and 14. Third and 14, and Stan makes a beautiful throw to, to uh, Thomas Bailey to keep the drive going. Stan had probably as good a game. I haven't seen him play better than he played. Big third down that play there. That was it right the, yeah. the post to Thomas Bailey right there, very, very big. Stan comes back, throws it again. You see about there's great pass to Frank Sanders. And again, we're trying to roll the pocket to keep the pressure off the quarterback, prevent the sacks. And here's the little naked off the sweep. Everybody knows we run the sweep on the goal line, but they better cover the reverse and the nakeds because they're going to come. Nifty Stan White dancing into the end zone there. All well, right. that's, that's, again, he, he handled it very well. He made some terrific decisions, didn't he, Coach? Well, he sure did. We got back the lead. The crowd was getting into it. Uh, but Florida's a great football team. They came back and reestablished control. Rhett, one of the finest backs in the country. You can't cover everything. When you put everybody out there covering pass, you give up the weak side draw. That's what we don't want it to hurt us that bad. We had to go into halftime. They scored, I think, 17 unanswered, yeah. unanswered points there. And now is the time that you would imagine fellows say, gosh, it's over. We can't stop them. There's nothing we can do. But they didn't. They came out still trying to make something happen. Do you think this may be the only SEC football team that's ever given up 386 yards in the first half and won? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I, if you ever get into that, all knows one thing. Florida was averaging 41 points a game. If we'd have given up their average, we'd have lost by three. Isn't it amazing? Just amazing what uh, Hart can do. Because this team was facing... Uh, early in the game, facing defeat uh, if they go down 17. At the half, certainly facing defeat because they are hot as they can be. Come out in the third quarter, miss the field goal, and they, if you don't stop them then, That's they're right. going to win. And then when they tie the game, if you don't drive the football, you know they're going to drive with a hot field goal kicker and win the game. So That's right. I mean, I mean, I just, you're exactly right. I, I just think if you keep people focusing on the positive and focusing on the things they're going to do to help us win, then you don't think about the things that the other t team's going to do to beat you. you. You get away from the negative. Negative. Oh, no, this is going to happen to us. That's going to happen to us. No, this is what I'm going to do to help us win. And by doing that, you just eventually start making plays. And that's the game plan, and it'll work for you a lot. And the Tigers made them yesterday. We'll be back with that exciting second half in just a few minutes. If you've been around any Auburn players or coaches or members of the staff lately, you may have noticed a lapel pin they are wearing. It has the word attitude, but in, uh, with the AU in bold letters. Now, Coach Bowden is wearing that attitude uh, lapel pin you're seeing right there. How did that come about? You know, I've always worn an attitude pin. I, I, I believe so much the attitude is the one thing we can bring into life that makes a difference. And that's been our motto as a team this year. Uh, we have pins for our players and our coaches. And I've had so many requests. I asked Mike Cover and the Auburn Network if they could make it available to our fans because you know we've got the Auburn family Auburn spirit but we have an Auburn attitude that's so important and I want I want I want our Auburn fans to have that available to them and they've asked so much so I think Mike Hubbard's put something together for everybody and in addition to the lapel pin there are now Auburn attitude t-shirts now here's how if you want to get in on the Auburn attitude you can order the lapel pin five dollars plus a dollar fifty postage handling or the t-shirts fifteen plus two fifty postage and handling and there's the address Auburn attitude PO box six nine six Auburn three six eight three one zero six nine six and of course the uh, sales of this benefit the uh, uh, Auburn football letterman's club scholarship funds we'll try to give you that address uh, a little later on in the program if you missed it this time there must, this must have been a very busy half for uh, both sides of the ball. Yeah, it really is because you've got defensively especially. They, they are just trying to make so many, uh, uh, explain to the players what they're seeing out there, how they can play a little better. You'll see an unbelievable change. All that yardage, all those points, defense turned it completely around the second half. Offensively, we really never got uh, that much offense to show them. We made one key decision. Let's get out of the eye formation a little bit. Let's find out if we can go out there and throw and catch with people that do it. 
And you'll see in the second half, we, we got out there and, and threw and catch the football like a passing team. All right. We'll see that when we come back. As Auburn moves into the second half yesterday, they put together a 10-play drive, but you missed the field goal, and this becomes a very critical moment in the game, Coach. Well, it was important for us to get a drive to open up the second half to, to these fellows to see we're going to do it, but it came, we came away with nothing, and that's when they could have gotten down, but it didn't happen. Big third down play there, defense trying to make something happen, gives the ball back to us now a second time, and now things start to, start to get cranked up. Start a touchdown drive here at the 24-yard line. Big, uh, big block by, by Stan White. He, he, he called that reverse, one run reverse, and got it on my mind. I let him call it and uh, threw a big block for it. And then called a big one a little later on, too. And there's the screen to Steve Davis. Steve hurt his ankle. A lot of people wouldn't know why he didn't play that much second half. Hurt his ankle a little bit. I don't think it's too bad, but he couldn't run as well. Look at this critical third down play. Stan White was scrambling uh, at one yard more than we needed. I tell you, he was in a zone. He was, oh, he, he was every ounce of his energy Practically was playing to win. All the decisions were right. They blitzed us. And anytime they got inside the 25, Florida was blitzing us. We threw the little uh, 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 bootleg pass out to the flat, and they couldn't cover the fullback. So Auburn is within a touchdown now. Got to play some more D and get another shot. Well, the defense right now was holding them. They're, they're got down field position. We come up with a huge sack here. Not only does it keep them getting the first down, keeps them out of uh, field goal range. Now they get in the point where we get two sacks in a row, I believe. There was one and then another. Mm -hmm. And uh, now they can't even make the, he gets really hit hard here. I tell you, the young man's a great football player for Florida. We're lucky to get up right there. Like we had three great, uh, great defensive players on the sack. The Look crowd, the oh man, are they in it. The fans oh. were so critical to this ball game Saturday, you just can't believe. Starting at the 20 on this drive. There's that same bootleg pass you saw earlier, but into the boundary. We turn it up the sideline and make a bigger play there for about 30 yards. Fine throw and catch there to get us back in the game. Second and eight at the 39. Look at him hum that football on the run. Well, I tell you, we rolled him out to keep away from pressure. Here's the only naked. Look at him pull up. Usually that's the guy's going to sack you right there on the naked, but he pulls up quick. Hits a little quick out, and it's a big play, and everything is important right now, and you got to make it all work. Fourth and one as the fourth quarter begins, same drive. You can't coach it. You can't coach it. You don't always block it. But when you don't, the JB is going to do it. He's going to find a way to get it in, and uh, uh, that's why you got him in there. Now it's uh, you have the lead. you got to hold the best offense in the Southeastern Conference, and, and you hold them one time on a great play here. Well, you know, we had a big sack by... by um, Ace Atkins, but we had him on a third and four, and we held him to an incomplete, but we hit the quarterback. He's going out of bounds. They get a 15-yard penalty. It leads to their score down the road here. They leads to their score. There's the big, there's a big interception right here towards the end. This was really big here as we go in and get an eight-point lead. Look at that Chris Schilling. The pressure put on by uh, uh, Brian Robinson. The great, look at all the blocks. Everybody blocking, trying to get him a score. Gets us down there now. And we've got the defense comes off the field, and I think this is one of the biggest times where you want a misdirection play. The defense has been sitting. All of a sudden, they run the field. You open with the reverse because they aren't thinking about all that things. And it's often the best time to call a trick or a, a misdirection play is when you can get a, ch a change of possession. Auburn now has an eight-point lead, but it's not over. The proud Gators aren't through now. They're going to come back and march 81 yards in just eight plays. Well, it's just so hard to stop them. They put so many people in the end zone throwing. Again, uh, they had a big uh, uh, roughing the passer, got them down there. Now we had to come back, and now you can sit there and worry about a tie game that if you give it up, they'll kick a field goal. Or you say, heck, let's go down and get the score. And, uh, you know they're going to win if you don't move the football. That's right. They've got too much they're firepower. You might right. hold them, but they've got a great kicker. And so we felt to go down. Here's a big third down play here that we had to have, uh, or we would have had to punt it, and uh, got us the ball back, and now we keep rolling. Third and eight here. Here's the big hit. You look at it. You can see the late hit on the sideline. I know Coach Spurrier said that was a big uh, controversy. Didn't look like much of a controversy to me. That was a critical play. We had a late hit. They had a late hit. Stan Bostic getting down closer now. We have a, there's the big bootleg again. Stan makes it. It's a closed up. He runs for a few more yards, gets the first down. Oh, my. There's, this is a uh, first and 20 here. You're backed up. Had a penalty, and he comes back and gets another good play inside the 30. We're just trying to get the ball down where we can uh, get a field goal. Bostic makes a great break, picks up about four or five more yards to get one, one little bit closer. That's a bouncing you're talking about there. That's right. I, as a kick, Tom, my brother Tommy said, don't even look at the kicker, just look at the fans. They'll tell you what happens. <laughs> and they tell me what happens. I was standing on the goalpost, Coach. I know it was good. It was perfect, in a, as a matter of fact. Well, we have a lot of uh, confidence in Scott Etheridge, and, and, and uh, he's done it many times before. He already missed his one. We knew he was going to make it. 121 to go. Got to hold him. What a big play. We thought that was a fumble there, picked up for a, for a touchdown. We did get the sack, and uh, 
Now the too much time there. I get doused again by the guys. <laughs> they can't even pick me up as little as I am. They can't even pick me up. I, I've, I haven't been on the shoulders very much in my life, but they, they have a hard time with. Maybe I was too wet and slippery. I don't know. But I was. I, I feel bad. You know, we had some. We had two uh, celebration penalties. I should have probably gotten one after the game. And we've really got to work on that. It could have cost us the ball game. But I really wonder how. It's so hard to contain yourself when you have an exciting game yeah. or an exciting play. And I know Frank Sanders feels awful about the two he had. But I was going to say I should have got one because I couldn't control myself either. It was a great win for Auburn. Oh, uh, what a win! What a win it really was. And we'll be back with some final comments in just a moment. transportation for the Tigers provided by Delta Airlines. Delta, the official airline of the Auburn Tigers. I think the uh, the schedule has fallen well this year and particularly now you have a uh, two weeks to get over an emotional win. Well it's you really need it. We, I mean I think we've got people on, the, on so high in the clouds we would not be effective, effective preparing I don't think this week. I really think we need time to celebrate and appreciate but after a couple of days, then it's time to get back to hard work because we're a team that just has to. We have to go out there and play hard every snap. And so Arkansas, uh, in Arkansas, is a major challenge for us. And uh, so we'll take a few more days, celebrate, and it'll be, we'll, have about a, we'll have a week and a half to get ready for Arkansas. Okay, there will be no television shows uh, this coming weekend with the off date. But uh, Tiger Talk will be on the air with Coach Terry Bowden Thursday night. So you may want to call in and uh, give your comments. And let's put that uh, address for the Attitude products back up. The lapel pins and the t-shirts. There you see is Auburn Attitude, P.O. Box 696, Auburn, Alabama, 36831-0696. And uh, they are also available in Auburn at Anders and J&M Bookstore. One, uh, one, one thing about this game again, Coach, uh, we didn't say Auburn played errorless football in a big game. Well, that we probably had, was the difference. Well, yes, exactly. I mean, no fumbles, no interceptions. That, that's so important in a game like this. If you're going to say, gosh, we can't win if they get big plays or we can't win if, if they score 35. Well, if we have a great kicking game and we don't turn the ball over, yes, we can. We can overcome it. And so you never know what part of your game is going to be the critical. But when you talk about they have two interceptions, we have no fumbles, no turnovers. All that goes together and is the deciding factor in that football game. Now, Auburn couldn't win a high-scoring game, but they did. We'll see you two weeks with the Auburn-Arkansas uh, playback. So join us then. Congratulations to you and the team, Coach. Thank you. Coach Bowden's apparel provided by The Locker Room. This has been the Auburn Football Review. Because it was a tough win. It wasn't. It was work. It was cold and it was ugly and it was work. And they came out and gave us the best. Mims, you fought out there and you proved who the best team was in that second half. That's a great second half. You went out there and you did what you had to do. Defense way to go out there and take it to a Robinson. Great job. I had somebody step out there and make the play. Great job, defense, going out there and changing that thing around. Then offense way to run that thing in that second half and stick it down that road. I'm proud of all of them. Proud of all of them. Now, now you're in position, right? It's all in position. Now, fellas, New Mexico State. Now, we got to go rumble. We got to go rumble next week. They know that that we got. We're, we're in position. We're in position. I'm proud of you. It's powerful word of prayer. Well, God, we thank you for the efforts of these young men, for all those that help this team and work with this team. We thank you for the strength the guidance that you've given us to, to strive, to do our best, to work hard, to play together, to love each other, and to appreciate the things that have been given to us. Watch over us and take care of us. Take us home safely. Be with the other team. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good job! Good job. This is
is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Terry Bowden. Brought to you by your Alabama Coca-Cola bottler. Always Coca-Cola. Colonial Bank. Good people, great service. Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos pressure treated pine. If it doesn't say Osmos on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Your Alabama John Deere dealer. Nothing runs like a deer. By Golden Flake Snack Foods. One taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. LDDS Communications, the official long distance carrier of the Auburn Alumni Association. Likes hot dogs. One bite and you'll know why they say, when it's likes, it's gone. Your Alabama Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. And by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, the caring company. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review. The Tigers are a perfect 8-0 after a hard-fought road win in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Coach, what a, what a hard road trip and what a, what a way to play and overcome all the obstacles. I tell you, every season you look back at certain points and you'll see some parts that'll be like no other game you ever play. I'm not sure we at Auburn will ever play a game any colder, about 10-degree wind chill factor, tough circumstances, but we stuck, cut, stuck to our game plan, kept our minds on business, and won a very, very tough ball game. Uh, and, and again, somebody has always come up with the big plays, uh, both sides of the ball, and the defense makes the big play and gets things started in the second half. Well, you know, I, I tell our players, somebody has got to take it upon themselves to see themselves making a play to win a football game. I don't know who it's going to be. It might be a lineman. It might be a back receiver or defensive back. Brian Robinson, the game was tied up 7-7, makes the big interception for a touchdown. We were always a step ahead of them from that point on. And you hold them on four downs twice when, when the game is on the line? Well, the short yardage defense. We say we have to win short yardage to uh, uh, win the ball game. We made seven of our 12 third down situations. We stopped them three out of time, four times on fourth down. They were not going to punt, but that fourth and one finally iced the game. Uh, they weren't going to punt because of their field goal problems, and they, they were... If they're down close, they're going to run it on fourth down. Well, we saw in the papers mid midweek that Coach Ford talked about we're not even going to try field goals. We'll go four down territory. We're going to go for it. We watched it, had some game plan ready for it, uh, and uh, were able to prepare for it and stopped them over and over again. Okay, now uh, we'll go to the uh, post-game dressing room for some comments, but first a little setup. Uh, late in the game, the Auburn offensive line uh, did a tremendous job, and Reed McMillan had his best game. On one play, they give to the fullback to play number 34, and that's what we talked about with Stan and his Stan's roommate, Reed McMillan, to begin these interviews. Hey, man, he, had a, he, was, uh, he was a workhorse on that, on that last drive. I told him, we were running 34 out right the middle every time, and I would yell, hey, let's, let's run something different now. Let's run a sweep, and I'd say, let's run 34 again, right? And then, and then you know, I'd get the defense, but uh, he did a great job. He'd actually come back there and say, all right, we're going to run a new play. All right, 34, here we go again. I was like, I was kind of going when he came back there and said, I was like, well, good, man. I'm going to get a rest this time, you know. I won't have to exactly run the ball, but uh, we kept running and running all the way down the field, and uh, like I said, the line did an outstanding job. Well, I mean, man. I, I I'm not sure. I think any back on the team could have made the runs I made. Had to have a big play to start the half, huh? Yeah, Coach Bowden told us we needed a spark, and uh, I provided the spark coming out in the second half. The guy, you knew the guy had fallen down? Well, I didn't know he had fallen down. I was just breaking to the ball, and, uh, and I made a good kick. The ball felt like bricks. I mean, I think my foot is killing me from kicking. It was not It was not easy at all. At least, uh, you know, I felt sorry for the other kicker. His only went to the two. I at least got mine almost in there, but... You know, well, you got one in there, and it was big, too. Yeah, I mean, I think... I think I hit that thing as hard as I could, and uh, and I don't even know how much it cleared by maybe five yards at most, but it, it was tough out there kicking today. Kicker. Yeah, it was the worst. <laughs> I thought my foot would break off in the, the cold ball. <laughs> I got too many layers of clothes on right now, so I got to get undressed, but no, he's a hero of this day. Let's talk to this guy right here. Oh, man, I, I'm thinking I'm the luckiest one out there. You got to keep with the wind both, you know, both times I had to kick. Uh, it was great to finally get out there and get a start, and I'm just glad I could contribute, and finally 8-0, and, oh, and it's cold, and I'm ready to get home. <laughs> As we uh, just buckled down, decided, you know, we had to play hard to win the ball game, and that's what we did. Time to admit it, this is a good football team. Yeah, it's a pretty good football team. I guess they looked at Vanderbilt's film, and, you know, they figured they, you know, can come in and run the ball on us, but, I mean, we really went out and worked on, you know, stopping the option, I mean, that's what we did. And as you see, I mean, it didn't work that good. You didn't let Big Henry disrupt the offense, did you? No, I knew that going to the game, that's going to be a big key for me to control him in the game, especially on the passing. I think I did pretty well in blocking him. 
You know, it's amazing how the, the offense did not let the conditions bother him. You know what? Yeah, Coach Bowden and all the other coaches said, you already know it's going to be cold, so go out there and play Auburn football and don't worry about the weather because they had to play it just like, like we do, and they weren't ready for it, but we weren't ready for it, but we just went out there and played football. Back with Coach Terry Bowden's comments on Auburn's 31-21 victory over Arkansas in just a moment. This game be began very much like the Vanderbilt game. Long drive, but uh, going into that 20-mile-an-hour win, you got nothing out of it. Well, I tell you, a very concerned first half. We let opportunities slip by. With the conditions like they were, with a coach like Coach Ford and the way he played, I knew if we could not let many opportunities miss. We missed that field goal. We fumbled the snap on the next field goal on short yardage. We lost opportunities. It, it scared me and concerned me that we need to concentrate a little bit more in the second half. You'll see in the first half, very, very tight ball game. And they went into the second. They went into the second half very, very encouraged because of it. That's right. I mean, we just kept them in the ball game. This would have been a big win for them, and we needed something to happen. But you'll see how all this transpires as the game goes on. Okay. After that, uh, as we go to the tape, after that drive uh, that Auburn comes up uh, with nothing on. Uh, Arkansas takes it and scores to lead 7 to nothing, and we pick up the action now. Uh, a, a mark of this very successful football team this year, Coach, has been their ability to answer scores. Well, they had come back down and scored with a critical third down play there. They would not let us throw the ball over the middle like we had been throwing in previous games. We had to throw the outside. Here's the deep ball quickly to Frank Sanders. We recognize man coverage. Safeties were up tight. Frank Sanders uh, makes the catch. Uh, stiff Arms gets down to the six-yard line, puts on the six. First run gets us to the one. Stan takes the quarterback. Look at the surge of the offensive uh -huh. line. Great push on the goal line. Quickly got it tied back up. Need to do that to keep them from being ahead uh, for a long period of time. There's our crazy fans. Had to be crazy to be there, but there's a lot of crazy Auburn fans well, that were in Arkansas. The road tiger walk was a thing of beauty. It was unbelievable. Defense takes over and, and holds them in check. Uh, one of three sacks. Time. Anthony Harris had two of them. We had no sacks against us. We sacked them three times. A critical factor that you have to study to find, but defense really came to play and played very well and uh, jumped right back in the game and shut down the running attack again. Stop uh, them there deep after a turnover. Big, big uh, stand there. Here goes another uh, big stand. Well, it's a great defensive play. There's a, there's a, they moved the ball down to the 10 on a, um, I believe it was on a Long fumble. Pass. Long pass. That's right. Now, here's the, here's the good play. They get the ball. They're pressure on the quarterback. He throws it out of bounds, gets called for intentional grounding, and uh, puts them way out of field goal range now and really helped us there as the defense applied pressure. He threw the ball away because of the pursuit of that defense. And you got to stop them one more time as they get another drive going here and get down deep one more time. Well, Jason Miska, hey, when you play middle linebacker and they run the option, you've got to take the dive from the middle linebacker position. You'll see him over and over. Look at him firing there. Beautiful play, D D Damon Premise. Everybody jumps in there. A great play now. They were not going to kick field goals. They went for fourth down. Four times they went for it on fourth down. We stopped them three times. That is another statistic that was very vital to the outcome of that, that football really game. puts pressure on your defense. It's, it is amazing to me how, how each team moved the ball in the first half under the conditions. I, I thought we would be, you know, 7-7, seven, seven, but I didn't know that... You would have 224 yards of offense, and they would have 175 or something like that. Well, you know, on AstroTurf, the, the conditions are not going to affect the AstroTurf. Unless there's a wet, rainy uh, substance that freezes, water that freezes, that hurts it. But they scraped the snow off. It was in good condition. The winds were tough, but you didn't see too many real long passes. You saw some low-line drive long passes. Uh, but everything was pretty much kept down there. Everybody executed pretty well, much better than you'd think. You thought your team uh, was lacking some con concentration. In the well, you know, when you bobble a snap uh, or you miss something, you may, and we missed a, a running play right before that bobble snap, uh, we, let a, we let, a, let a big pass get by deep on us. I thought there's a, just a little bit of concentration there. Not so much that you're not wanting to win the game, but you're not out there intense about doing everything you can every minute. We talked about that at halftime. I challenged the young men to go out there and make a big play, spark, get something going, and take this game for the importance that it was, and we saw a great turnaround there in the second half. You certainly did, and we'll be back to look at that in just a couple of minutes. <laughs> Coach, the Auburn Attitude pins are a big hit. Uh, you and uh, the Auburn Network got together and 
put these little pins together, and I see more and more of them. How about you and Auburn? Well, I've always worn them. You know, it's great because now I go out and I see someone. I don't know where they're, where they're from or who they're for, but when I see that pin, I know they're for Auburn. I know they got the attitude, the attitude that's helping us win. And that's big. It was, it was a great attitude. The fans had a great attitude up at Arkansas. It's remarkable the attitude this football team has had this year, you know? Well, I, I really strongly believe that, that the, the positive uh, uh, attitude that, you, that, that make things happen was what we wanted to work with. And... Uh, uh, I've always tried to get everyone involved with that, and I'm kind of glad the, the pins got out and everybody's kind of gotten into it. It's just been a great feeling around Auburn right now. The supplies ran out, but they have replenished the stock, and now you can order yours. The Auburn Attitude lapel pin is $5, $1.50 uh, postage and handling. The T-shirts, the Auburn Attitude T-shirts are $15, two fifty postage and handling. And that's the address, P.O. Box 696, Auburn 36831-0696, and a portion of the proceeds go to the uh, Football Letterman's uh, scholarship program. By the way, uh, the Attitude Pins will be on sale at the Tiger Tailgate uh, Show location uh, for homecoming this Saturday uh, for the New Mexico State game. Uh, just look for the banner at the, uh, at the uh, broadcast point for the Tiger Tailgate Show. Now, we'll show you a little bit of tape uh, at the place uh, Auburn stayed the night before. We got up, and uh, this is a shot outside the lodge of the uh, little golf resort where uh, Auburn stayed. And uh, that was a very interesting sight, I'm sure, for some of those South Florida uh, guys, Coach. Well, when we woke up to all that snow the next morning, it, it really was different. And I think it was, it was kind of a shock to some of our players and uh, 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 all of our coaches, too. But it was a beautiful resort. That we couldn't, you can't stay anywhere close to Fayetteville. You can't fly into Fayetteville. We fly into Tulsa. We stay at a place, the closest hotel that had any availability, about 45 minutes away, but it's a beautiful resort, and the Jay Jacobs handles all that. Did a wonderful job, and it'd been nice if it wouldn't been so cold so you could get out and walk and, and be uh, and enjoy the outdoors, but uh, it was beautiful with all the snow up there. And as you saw, the Auburn cheerleaders were able to make this trip, and I know they had a time they'll be talking about for some time. Well, they had to probably dress a little warmer than they <laughs> thought they would, yeah. but uh, it's always good to have them down there leading our, our, our fans and, and with their spirit. They've done a great job, and, and our cheerleaders are just so enthusiastic and spirited we enjoy having them with us on special occasions part of the uh, part of the uh, home advantage is the difficulty it takes to get to a place and and uh, you rode buses and flew airplanes for six or seven hours to get there it's really difficult to get to Fayetteville but but in spite of all of that the players shrugged it off and mm -hmm. did their business I think the important thing is to underplay or underscore anything that happens like that and it's just that it's different I mean when I was at Sanford or Salem College we never had a plane. We bust seven hours to every game or six hours and, and stayed in, in four guys to a room. We didn't have any money to put two guys to a room in a hotel. And so it's the difference. It's the different uh, uh, time before the game that really causes you opportunity to uh, get your mind off the game. But I, I told you, you need to be mature. You need to focus on what is we're out there for. And don't let those things be excuses or distractions from what you need to do. And we didn't let that happen. I was very pleased. Stay tuned now for a big second half highlight uh, package. We'll be right back with that. Okay, back to work on a day that uh, with temperatures around 30 degrees, a north wind at 20 miles an hour, and a wind chill of 10 as the Tigers take the field. And like you say, they need something to happen. Well, we, we, we challenged them, and uh, they knew it was business. They knew we were in for a battle, and somebody had to make something happen. In the very first minute, you're going to see right here, Really, the, t the change in the game, the big momentum changer. Brian Robinson makes the big intercept right there, takes it in with a the block there from Otis Mounds, and takes it through the end zone for the score, up 14-7, to 7, only a minute gone in the first half. And with that spark, the defense comes out, holds them, and you get another drive going and get some distance between them. Well, they're really getting after You start to understand in the second half, uh, there's a little bit more scoring, but again, I still we continue to put pressure on them. There's another almost interception as they uh, worked their tight end. They have an all-conference tight end, very good tight end. They kept working back to him. He covered him very well. He made some big-time catches. There. Here's third and three on the uh, field goal drive. Now. Well, there's twice Stan made critical runs on third down to hold drives going. He's done that all year, and he's done it especially well this game in the last. Another big pass and catch. Watch Frank Sanders now. I believe he had, he had over 100 yards of catches on six carries. Big play, just positioned his body perfectly because the wind just held that ball up. Scott Ethics, I don't know how the ball went. He just came to the side and said, Coach, I can make it. I wasn't going to kick it. He, and he made it. He goes, when he tells you he's going to make it, he's going to make it. He should tell me every time. But, but we'll the, make coaching easier. It's a lot easier. <laughs> 
Okay, now they come back and score, and really this becomes the critical point of the Boy, game. Boy, the quarterback was almost sacked, and there we just fell asleep, let the deep ball get by us, and uh, they hit the deep ball on our best cover man, and uh, yeah, kind of, kind of, kind of wakes you up there when uh, when they do that, and uh, uh, but maybe we learned something from that. Okay, and then uh, a, a turnover, and they have it deep now. The defense has got to come. Well, we're only up 17-14. We turn the ball over and give them the ball in our territory. There's the fourth down play. They would not kick the field goal to tie it. They go for the fourth down. They don't get it. We get the ball back now and try to establish it. And Reed McMillan begins in the second half to take over. You know, I really felt like he was the most valuable player on the offense in this game uh, uh, because of the thing he was able to do running that football when we had to have something to control the ball. Thomas Bailey had some big catches. Thomas continued doing a great job there. Nice critical play there. That's a big third down run right there. It really helped us. Got in the shotgun, ran the split back sweep. We had some nice nakeds off that play where the quarterback fakes it and rolls out. Same drive, fourth quarter. Great blocks up there by Anthony oh, Redmond. Oh, Anthony Redmond had a great block. We faked the reverse and held the linebackers up for a little bit and created a seam. Now we're up 10 points, and that's a kind of a good, good uh, a separation. But, you know, it would not have mattered, though, except you're going to see here, there's a, there's, a, there's a great stop on this drive now to stop them. for a, That was like the second down play. Third Here's third three. down. Yeah. Third down puts it to fourth and one. You'll see Jason miss good. Uh, Gary Walker and the entire D, Anthony Harrison and Willie White. Here's fourth down. Now watch. Otis Mound comes up from the secondary, makes the hit, and wow. everybody else jumps in. Critical fourth down. Pretty much that iced the game right there. Okay, Auburn gets to, gets to going the other way. The, the Auburn offensive line is beginning to dominate this football game. Well, Reed, Jake, the very first play for about 16, 18 yards and gets us to midfield on the very first handoff up the middle. We continue to run that same play. Got the change field position. Although they stopped us there, we changed field position, and we ran time off the clock and put them deep in their own territory. There's Joe Frazier, made three tackles on the day, played on defense and on special teams. Joe Frazier, one of, uh, you know, one of the guys you just love because the way he plays and helps his football team. Stop him one more time here. Well, good pressure. There's another sack by the, by the defense now as we get a lot of our defensive line and continue to put pressure on. And here, here comes the number 34 drive. Well, 34 is just the number of the play that he runs up the middle. We called it six straight times. Uh, no, we threw a naked right here. We ran a naked with the quarterback. We faked it one time, and uh, Reed just took over the line. We're blocking in between the tackles. Now we fake it one time and let him run out. They all step inside. Stan runs for a good first down. Does his little slide in there safely for a first down. Try to keep the clock running once the chains are moved. Watch the Auburn interior line. There's a little crack right there. There's a lineman locked up, pick up linebackers, and sticks him in there. Watch the slow-mo. Watch the lineman. Watch Shannon Robick pick up the blitzing linebacker. Great job there of, of picking up all the players. The safeties are too wide out on the rod right receivers. Leaves the hole out the middle. And so that gives Auburn the 34 to 14, 31 to 14 lead. And then uh, Arkansas drives for a late, uh, meaningless uh, score. And that is the final right there. A tremendous road win. When you go on the road in the SEC and win, and also when you go on the road in conditions like that and win, that's an accomplishment, Coach. Well, we were at homecoming at Arkansas, and they have done, they've got a team that's played very, very well. And they've played their best games against Tennessee and Georgia, mm -hmm. two of the best teams on their schedule. Only had one get bad game against Alabama, and they played well. They had a good game plan. They really did the things they wanted to do, gave us all that we could handle. And it's a credit to them, but our young men came by and played just a little bit better to win that game in the second half. We'll be back with a final comment in just a moment. Lines. Delta, the official airline of the Auburn Tigers. Get you a ticket and an Auburn Attitude pin for homecoming. Kick off at 1 o'clock against New Mexico State Saturday at Jordan-Hare. The Auburn Network on the air at 11.30. Congratulations to you and the team, Coach. See you well, next week. Well, thank you very much. Coach Bowden's apparel provided by The Locker Room. This has been the Auburn Football Review, brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, The Caring Company, your Alabama Toyota dealer, I love what you do for me, Toyota, likes hot dogs, one bite and you'll know why they say, when it's likes, it's gone, LDDS Communications, the official long distance carrier of the Auburn Alumni Association, by Golden Flake Snack Foods, one taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. Your Alabama John Deere dealer. Nothing runs like a deer. Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos pressure-treated pine. If it doesn't say Osmos on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Colonial Bank, good people, great service. And by your Alabama Coca-Cola bottler. Always Coca-Cola.
You went out and you took care of business. A little adversity at first, a little, little turnover to score, and uh, no panic, just took care of business. We did exactly what you had to do. You went out there and you, and you blew the team away, which is exactly what you should do. And I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Now we get down to business. Now we get down to business. We had a team or two drop ahead of us, so we'll move up a little bit. Good job. But we got Georgia. We got Georgia. Man, let's, let's commit everything this week. Don't miss your studies, but let's commit our lives to beating Georgia this week. Everybody here, let's go after it. Sitting there for us. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Terry Bowden. Brought to you by your Alabama Coca-Cola bottler. Always Coca-Cola. Colonial Bank. Good people, great service. Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos pressure-treated pine. If it doesn't say Osmos on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Your Alabama John Deere dealer. Nothing runs like a deer. By Golden Flake Snack Foods. One taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. LDDS Communications, the official long-distance carrier of the Auburn Alumni Association. Likes hot dogs. One bite and you know why they say, when it's likes, it's gone. Your Alabama Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. And by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, the caring company. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Auburn 55, New Mexico State 14. Coach Terry Bowden, had you been able to write the script, I doubt if you would have written it any other way. Well, it was a perfect homecoming. Great crowd, one of our biggest ever, considering they had no one from New Mexico. Right. Uh, we were able to play so many players, including some great seniors who don't get to play a lot. They got to play for Auburn, play in front of their parents, and have a great homecoming victory. And as usual, Auburn gets behind before it uh, gets, gets untracked. This is the last one, and we're not going to take this anymore. I don't know what happens. We have a turnover again. As, as we've had some problems. But uh, thank goodness, quickly, we put that behind us and scored and scored and scored and, and got back in control very quickly. I'm sure the the... the best one quarter output of the season it really was every there weren't turnovers we just every time we drove we drove and scored they got one first down the entire uh, the rest of the half and uh, we scored uh, at will and began to just t uh, do about everything we wanted to and uh, you hoped you might be able to do that against New Mexico but you weren't sure and uh, I think our, our, our thoughts that we might be a little too tough for Mexico were found true pretty quickly and it was a great day, and let's go in the dressing room now and uh, speak with some of these young men who played such a huge part in the day. You guys like it? It was Lonsley T-shirt. Well, I'll tell you, it was nothing like, Ar like Arkansas, but it was close. I mean, you know, it was, it was a lot colder up there, but it, it got a little cool toward the end of the day today. He got to, guy, he got to feel three. like it, what it feels like to stand on the sideline with that wind blowing a little bit today. He, he got to get, yeah, he got to today. get a little cold. <laughs> so. Does he give good signals? Yeah, he takes them better than he gives them, I have to say that. But, you know, he takes them real good. <laughs> hey, this is a great day. Six in a row. Congratulations. Oh, I appreciate it. I didn't, we were talking about it on the sideline, but uh, I didn't know how many it was we just figured we were we were doing all right with our com with our completion percentage but we didn't know it was that many but uh you know it was gr great play calling and uh you know a good team effort this is a good day for you too you need to need to work uh, you know it's always good to get in there and play you know stan's having a great year but you know you got to keep your head up you never know what's going to happen in this big of a year you know we're nine and oh we can't have any slips or anything like that so you know you always got to keep your head in it but it's great to see stan doing great and us winning did you think you all could get something done on the front returns today well, I mean, not, you know, previously before, not looking at the films and everything, but uh, I felt, you know, that I can, it's time for me to do something and try to get something started. And um, um, the, the, our punt block team, they did a great job of making a wall for me, and I got to yeah. the wall. I thought, I thought you would have scored if the quarterback had blocked for you on the first. <laughs> I was, I was, the cornerback had came up stand, so he didn't see him. He, um, he, uh, he was looking inside like the lineman was doing, and the cornerback just came around the corner. I think if he'd have got him, I don't went, went the distance. Stan put on a clinic today. Yeah, he had a great day today. We work hard. We work hard during the week, and it shows on. It shows on Saturdays. Why is the 34 plate so good? Um, because you know, uh, with you know the great tailbacks we have and the success we have in running 46, they pile up on the outside and um, open up the inside for us. Boy, you made a good cut today on that touchdown. Yeah, it was exciting. I saw the guy out there, and I was like, "Oh, ain't nobody outside on the right," so I just.
just cut outside. Just planted that left foot and he was gone. Yeah, had to do it. <laughs> Did you have a little talk with the quarterback? Say, look, we're out there too, or what? No, nah, Coach, uh, Coach Bowden put it in the game plan, plan this week. I guess it's decoy for um, Georgia. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this gets everybody ready to go into the Georgia game, right? Yeah, it's a big game coming up for us. And uh, hopefully after today, you know, everybody will be ready. And they'll be back next week. So we'll be deeper at tight end. Might take week. them all with those guys. Yeah, I hope so. Many catches today. <laughs> well, Stan and I connected quite a few times today, and it, it was exciting. It was a great homecoming for us. Uh, is that a design play, or is it you come back when you see that uh, he's scrambling? Well, I, I read him scrambling because I saw the defense pick up Frank's uh, kind of banana route there, and, and I saw Stan break out left, so I kind of cut my route short and came back to catch the ball. How's bet school going? Oh, it's pretty rough. I'm going to hit the books tomorrow. I got two tests next week. Got to try and fit in that study in some time. Yeah, it was a good win for us because we know we got a big game with Jordan coming up next week, so it was a good win. You're going to have to get the pressure desire. You just can't let him stay. Yeah, you can't let him throw. You can see what he did last week to uh, Florida. And it's going to be a big challenge for us. You know, big challenge, big game. You know we're going to be up for it, so it'll be a good game next week. Zaire? Yeah, um, Zaire's a great quarterback. Probably the best quarterback we're going to face. You know, and this dude here, Cody, he was a pretty good quarterback, but Zaire going to be behind a better offensive line and we'll have better running back we're going to have a better unit to work with so we so got a pretty good pretty good rehearsal for him though yeah it was because you know we're going they're going to pass the ball probably 40 times a game also and we got to just get ready to come off and do a lot of pass rush to get some off i read the papers and they said they were going um, well I, he quoted from the florida game he shouldn't have ran the ball those 15 times they ran it so he said they expect about 75 passes so we'll be up for it shelling is back in the interception race only one behind. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, uh, I'm back in it now. Uh, you know, Brian is headed uh, with everyone. Uh, he, he's had four and I have three now, so, you know, secondary is just looking forward to a chance to play Georgia with their good passing game. You're going to get a lot of opportunities next week, aren't you? Yeah, everyone's going to get a lot of opportunities. It's going to be a great game. It's going to be very exciting. Back with the first half replete with offense and Coach Terry Bowden in just a moment on the Auburn Football Review. Beautiful day at Jordan Hare, a little on the breezy side, and all the uh, activities of homecoming made it quite a quite a day for to be on a college campus, Coach. Well, you know, I mean, Tiger Walk from the very beginning was wonderful. Uh, the fans have just become it's become an, an event uh, that's uh, almost as big as the game itself. And uh, the weather was beautiful, a little chilly, but you know that's kind of we all could kind of enjoy that football weather too. That's fall weather, right? Balmy after the week yeah, four. Huh? That's right. <laughs> but it was a great day, and the crowd got into it early. It occurs to me that uh, as we see some of the seniors now who were presented, uh, they presented footballs to their parents, uh, it occurs to me that you've only spent a year with these guys, but this is an exceptional bunch of young men. Well, I'm so proud of them and uh, um, what they've done and what they've meant to Auburn and what they've been through. They're going to be stronger because of it. And I think people are going to have a special place in their hearts for these seniors uh, and for how they've come and led Auburn back to where everyone is so proud of, of, of this institution as they always are. But, uh, for them and what they've done. And I know Coach Dye is proud of them because he really has brought them and nurtured them. And uh, we're very proud of our seniors. This guy uh, was six yards under his average because all the punts today were in the middle of the field. But look at him back that one up. Now, that's not just an accident. Is it? That was a nine-iron shot right there. Right. He put it right down and set it right there. But he lost a yard of his average. There's Stan. We did a lot of moving. That's our tight end coming across. Derek Dorn uh, came through a big catch. There. He's excited because he's we've been trying to get him the ball a little bit. Get stopped kick a field goal. We're down 7-3 right now because we had a fumble to start the game. And for y'all that, that weren't there, uh, they had like a 20-yard drive. But we come right back and didn't get a touch. But we started moving it good, and I was very pleased. Now it's three downs and a punt for them the rest of the way, and the Auburn offense just clicks beautifully. Well, it was a good tack, a sack by Gary Walker. I think their quarterback wasn't quite used to a lineman having that kind of speed uh, at, at the level that he plays at. And Gary caught him up and kissed. And here's Stan White going through. The first half, Stan was... was Remarkable! If you could have seen the way he was throwing it, the, the, the receivers that he was throwing to, his first, second, and even third receivers, mm -hmm. very calm. There's a little fake sweep. He finds they cover his first receiver. He goes right to his second one and does just a super job. And uh, hitting Derek Dorn again. And there's a little, comes, the belly oh up the middle. Beautiful move by the fullback. Richardson had two carries for two touchdowns. No, and, uh, <laughs> had a great day there, and it catches us up quickly. Okay, back on, uh, they make one first down This is uh, in this drive, and that's the only first down they made uh, in the, after their initial touchdown, really. Well, the coverage was outstanding here, and put a lot of heat on the quarterback, and uh, 
I think it was good because next week, as they said, we're going to see the one of the top quarterbacks in the, in the nation. Defense continues to play well, and they gave up less than 200 yards of defense. I know they were disappointed because the team scored at the end. Good to see Steve Davis back. I know we're happy to see that. This is what we've been needing, uh, uh, a good combination of James Bostick and Steve Davis, and you'll see us mix them up in the second half. Good to see that big fella back. Out of lineman downfield getting blocked. There's a great play by Thomas Bell. He's just coming to himself. He fights to make the catch as the receiver had, defender had it covered and then scrambles into the, into the into the end zone instead of going down after he caught it. Third and one play right here. Great stop there. You see that defense, uh, everybody on the side come in uh, and the right side to stop that play. Uh, great day for our defense. Really needed. And here comes James Bostick back now. First play, he comes in. He takes it about 30 or 40 yards and almost scores right down about the 10 yard line, I believe. And he ran to the one on another uh, on another play later. And yeah. here comes the fullback later. Well, there's uh, uh, Tony Richardson. Is they, and Tony was right in the pregame. If they take the sweep and run to the outside, then the little uh, handoff up the middle hurts them in the inside. Second and five play here at their 25. Good play by Gary Walker again, much improved there. He needed to have a good game this week and uh, deflects it. They had a man open that play. There's the good faking that Stan does. Uh, makes the quick throw to Frank Sanders, and uh, he really mixed his pass. I think six different receivers and uh, twelve different receivers. Well, twelve different receivers, and uh, knows Derek Dorn again making a nice play and getting a big pickup. And I'm sure that's a pickup for Derek to get uh, to get some catches. Well, Andy Fuller was just sick that uh, he was out. We held him out, and Derek <laughs> got to make all the catches this week. Carter is that uh, that little comeback play. He really made it work. Well, that's a super thing. There's there's James Boston catching a touchdown pass. And, Good to see James catch a touchdown pass. Sean gets six catches. Uh, uh, Carter, in his senior year, a big homecoming game. Yeah, in fact, he had six, five career passes, and he got six yesterday. That's great. I tell you, Mike Felton had a super day. He Two sure sacks did. and a tackle for a loss. And he's worked himself into a starting position, and he's got a little, lot of future ahead of him. Got great quickness. Beautiful throw and catch by uh, Stan and uh, Frank Sanders on that one. Yeah, that's bad. If he doesn't get more excited than that, I'll be okay. He has to fight to keep from... Uh, isn't it awful to have to fight to keep from celebrating? It seemed like to me I'd want to celebrate if I scored a touchdown. <laughs> I don't know about that rule. It, it, something needs to be done. But anyway... Jim Five gets to celebrate. Can't the player right. celebrate? That's right. Uh, about as good as uh, uh, 13 minutes of... Uh, actually, 18 minutes of football there from the field goal on to the five scores that you could imagine. It was really a, 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 an outstanding team working together and again I, I think about there are so many bright spots but i still think uh, offensively anyway stan white when he's hot like that and picking people out and moving around against a team that you're a little bit better than you, you it's it's unlimited what you can do and the defense giving up one first down in about 18 minutes you, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna win ball games against uh when things people do stuff like that 19 for 21 i believe and 16 straight passes what a what a, what a yeah, we had two drops it was 19 for 21 with two drops it should have been 21 for 21. <laughs> it was one of those things that just just went but we were a better team than new mexico and we were just doing what we need to do is play well against a team that's not as good as us we'll be back in just a minute with some halftime coming <laughs> And it is certainly no secret that Auburn is having a marvelous year, perhaps a record-breaking year, and we want you Auburn fans to know that uh, the Auburn Network is already at work on a season highlight videotape, and the difference this year, Coach, is they're going to make an effort, and we'll have it out in early December so that uh, people can uh, get it into their Christmas uh, gift plans. Well, I was hoping we would do that, and, and, and Mike Hubbard assured us we're going to have that for... I was thinking about our uh, Auburn clubs and all of our visits and how good it would be, but there are individuals who probably want to have a highlight, and I'm sure they can contact someone at Auburn Network, at the Auburn Network, and, and get that. And we should have some uh, definite word on when the tape uh, will be available and how you can get it on our program next week, so make a note of that. Uh, what a great thing the 38-point explosion was. Now you're in position to use a lot of people on homecoming. I know you were glad of that. Well, that's right. And to get those points in the first half, we usually come back with the first teamers the first series of the second half to make sure we come out mentally sharp and, 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 and not uh, let the tempo go away from us. But we got to put so many people in. Uh, at the receiver position, it almost got humorous. We used eight receivers and three scout team defensive backs. That's one place you can get them in as you rotate every play. And so it was a great chance to play a lot of young men. I think I counted 65 and all. That's a lot of folks. Almost lot everyone. Of 
All right, we'll be back with uh, the uh, second half of play, Mr. Miller. As you had hoped, the uh, offense comes out and uh, takes some time off the clock and gets a field goal and uh, makes it 41-7. As uh, we won't show that part of the uh, of the the third quarter, but now the scene is set for you to use a lot of folks. Well, that and that's what you want to do. Late in the season, you've used so many people in your scout teams, in your organization and preparation, uh, and to keep morale up, to get them into a game like this, really get your morale. Up. The, the players that hadn't played much are going to come back today talking and talk about what they did or the mistakes or the good things they did really helps your team when you have a game like this. And here comes Chris Schelling with his third interception of the year. Yeah, they throw it up for grabs. The quarterback, he makes a nice return. Gets a big hit here. Is uh, coming up, made some good yardage there, and just kept things rolling. And uh, Patrick Nix needed some work, didn't he, to get ready for, for any any situation that might develop. Man. Well, he did, a, he did a super job there. Uh, Sean Davidson getting his catch. He's been a, a great, hard-working fellow. But, Patrick Nix has to do the hardest thing I think in our team. He has to be ready every minute. Yeah, really go Shea getting the catch. He has to be ready every minute all season to take the entire responsibility of the team on his shoulders. And he has to sit, sit in the wayside. We hope that Stan will be all right all the time. There's James Boston. But Pat never knows when his number's going to be called and he's going to be required to lead this team uh, on the rest of the season. Beautiful throw from Patrick Nix to Ramon Malcolm. Good to see him getting a good play in time. We're, we're going to see a lot of him. He could be as good a receiver as he is a running back. Move now to the uh, fourth quarter of play. And uh, Auburn's, uh, what was his, a couple of good defensive plays. Here. Well, that's a way, the way to dominate that line there. Is, uh, Joe Frazier comes off a good tackle there along with Mike Pelton. Joe made a good play. Continue to make pressure, good pressure on the quarterback. Uh, and that was what we wanted to see, a few sacks and uh, make sure these players work hard all week to uh, put pressure on that quarterback. And then Lester in there. Here comes the touchdown drive. Well, I tell you, he ran, he ran real hard on those sweeps, uh, uh, Ramon Malcolm did. And then here's Brian James, James Bryan, one of our uh, senior uh, walk-ons, did, did a good job there blocking and running at the fullback position. Patrick Sullivan at quarterback. Mm -hmm. Most of we're all using second and third team people now. Uh, good block there by Sean, Car Sean Davidson. And, uh, well, it's good to see us. Then we're down to now Pat Sullivan is getting his work in. Of course, he's waiting in the wings for his day and to have to be able to play and have a good show there and lead us to a touchdown right here to finish it off. It was nice to see our, our third team was in there and do so well. And a young war eagle who had himself a, a good day. The only one we didn't get in. He's the only one we didn't get in. This, you know, these guys from their actions seem to be appreciative of the opportunity to come and play a, a major college uh, ranked football team. Well, you know, they really did. They hadn't been able to ever be in front of a big program like this. They enjoyed it. They played hard. Yeah, it was just did. a situation where we hoped we'd be better. I, I read where the quarterback said, you know, it helped us because we got to, we, we, we could play with these guys. Mm -hmm. They were better because they had more people, but we could play with them. Well, that's right, and that's always the case. We've got a few too many at a few too many positions. They really, if they, they really can gain from something like this, and uh, I was just glad that we gained from it, that we kept our intensity up and our emotion up, which is sometimes hard to do, and played a game that should help us as we go into next week. And next week is a big week. We'll be back in just a minute. Delta, the official airline of the Auburn Tigers. It uh, is interesting, Coach, that under the old uh, uh, scheduling system before the divisional uh, scheduling, uh, Georgia had to play Florida the week before they played Auburn, but that's not the case now. They were sitting home watching. Well, again, that's something that's going to be an advantage for Georgia. They have had two weeks to prepare for us, uh, and uh, we did, couldn't just ignore New Mexico State. We had to prepare. And so they're going to have a little advantage there. But these two teams know each other well. Even though I have a new offense, Wayne McDuffie, their offensive coach, it's the same thing. He'd been at Florida State for all those years. Coach Hall has been here running defense. These two teams, the two systems everybody's using, we know each other. It's going to be who out there and plays the best because we've got the hottest team against right now the top team. And uh, they were having problems earlier, but uh, obviously they have corrected their problems. They are, they are hitting on uh, every cylinder throw in the football. Well, and, and, and again, that's obviously a big concern um, that we're going to have because the records you can throw out because what they did the first four or five games is, is unimportant. It's what they have done the last three or four. Even the games they've lost, they've improved their play. And right now they're at the top of their game in their two probably biggest games, uh, Auburn and Georgia Tech, uh, after the Florida game. And so... It's going to be a big one. We're going to see one of the top athletes in the country at quarterback, and our defense is going to be truly tested first. Then our offense is going to be tested because of what we're going to have to do probably just to try to score and keep up with them. Mm. And one of the great series in all of college football, I 
just wish you could see the game, but uh, next best thing, the Auburn Network will be on the air at 10.30. Now, don't, uh, don't miss it. Uh, don't be tuning in late. 10.30 Saturday morning for the Auburn Radio Network, and we'll be back with the replay for you on Sunday. Good luck to you and the team, Coach. Thank you very much. Coach Belton's apparel provided by The Locker Room. This has been the Auburn Football Review, brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, The Caring Company, your Alabama Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. Likes hot dogs. One bite and you'll know why they say, when it's likes, it's gone. proud of you. Nobody, they, they, they don't believe somewhere else, but you believed right here. They can yeah. put you an underdog and you're seventh in the nation, but you believe. Yeah. Hey, well, and then I'm coach. proud of you, because you don't need nobody else to believe as long as you believe. Great. And you right. did. And it's a great job. Defense, great, great effort. Offense, way to put the points up. Yeah. Great overall win, man. Yeah. Great overall win. Wow. We're going to save it all night long. Yep. And then on Sunday morning, it's Bama. <laughs> Uh, you want to say something real quick yes. now? Hey, fellas. Like Coach just said, Sunday, that's where it all starts, yep. baby. That is where it all starts, baby. We got to carry it from Sunday to Saturday, baby. Yep. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Terry Bowden. Brought to you by your Alabama Coca-Cola bottler. Always Coca-Cola. Colonial Bank. Good people, great service. Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos pressure-treated pine. If it doesn't say Osmos on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Your Alabama John Deere dealer. Nothing runs like a deer. By Golden Flake Snack Foods. One taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. LDDS Communications, the official long-distance carrier of the Auburn Alumni Association. Likes hot dogs. One bite and you'll know why they say, when it's likes, it's gone. Your Alabama Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. And by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, the caring company. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review, Auburn 42, Georgia 28, and a wonderful Saturday afternoon football game at Sanford Stadium in Athens. And congratulations, Terry Bowden, the first Auburn coach ever to win 10 games in his first year. Well, I'm, I'm, I thank you very much, and, I, and I'm pleased and excited, but all because of those players. Our players have dedicated themselves, and uh, they've gone out and done it. I'm, I'm glad that I've gotten to come along for the ride. You know, it's time to acknowledge that this is the best team in the Southeastern Conference. They've well, we talked about that. We didn't get in the paper and talk about it. But, you know, you know, we're not eligible for the conference championship. And before they had divisions and a, and a bowl game, a championship game, uh, you won by the best record. And right now, we're a lock. We have the best record in the conference. If there was the old way, we'd be in the Sugar Bowl right now. And so we wanted to recognize that goal. It's not the ending goal. And we have plenty more to shoot for. And uh, maybe the biggest prize of all. Uh, above the conference championship, but they want to be the best in the conference. This team has risen in one year back to be the best in the conference. And they proved it yesterday with a really resounding victory. Let's go to the dressing room and talk to some of those young men who played so marvelously yesterday. Their offense is so potent, and, and we knew they were going.
going to drive the ball, and we just knew we had to run some time off and try to get some points uh, while we were doing that. And, and uh, you know, Boston made some great runs. Line did a great job, and we and we passed the ball when we needed to, and that's and that's what counts. Mark of a great team when you can answer a big score. Exactly. I mean, you know, they came out and, and scored and got another quick one, and, and uh, you know, we answered right back, and, and that's the reason we're 10-0 right now, and, and we just got one more to go. This was an all-day job, wasn't it? I'll tell you what, it was about 75 degrees out there. It was a little bit hotter than we've been used to, but, uh, you know, we got a ring, and that's all that counts. It was a 60-minute game, and um, that's how most of our games have been this year. And we knew that they was going to come back, even though we was up at half. We knew they was going to keep fighting and keep fighting because they really need this game. And uh, we just kept playing and kept playing hard, and, and we ended up on top. We just got after him, and uh, we got Bosco. He just got 1,000 yards this game, and we're real proud of that. That's a big accomplishment for us linemen, for our, for our uh, running backs to get 1,000 yards. And I'm just as proud of that as this, as this win. Yeah, they came out and blocked too hard today, you know. Like that, like that give all the credit to the offensive line and Tony Rizzi and Reed McMillan. Full back and Sean Carter and Frank Sam was good coming in the blocking today. You know, in the second half, we kind of shot ourselves in the foot a couple of times, but you know, a great offensive team as we are, you know, we just picked back up and put the points on the board. One more. Yeah, that's it. One more. That was um, surprising the way they came back. But our defense, our defense stepped it up when it was important. Mark Johnson made a great interception. Our offense went out there and said, look, we got to win it. And the guys on, on the sideline kept saying, we will not be denied. And as long as they believe that, we won't be denied. Um, you know, Coach Bowden just said, you know, the best team is going to win, you know, and we were, I feel that we were well prepared, came in the game. They had time to scope us out, but I feel that Coach Bowden and his staff did a great job of preparing for it. It was all day. It was a tough game. It was a hard fight. The offense ran up and down the field, and they did it for us. Um, defense made a few mistakes. We're coming out fourth quarter. We stuck in there. We put pressure on Zion. You got him a we big touchdown, and you stopped him two or three times deep, too. That, that made a lot of difference. Oh, yeah. I think we just, everybody just, just got together. And we just got, just dug deep in and just fought. The defense, we just went out there, and, you know, we know how to get a good pass for us and uh, keep it moving around. We managed to do that. Well, that was, that was an all-day job. Huh? Oh, yes, it was. We had to get after it all day. We knew Georgia had the type of offense that can score at any time, so we had to stay in the whole game. Brian got hurt right then, so I got a chance to go in, and we were right, right down there on the goal line around the five-yard line. The guy went inside, and I just happened to get up underneath him and caught the ball. It's a good catch. Uh, it was a blitz call, and the quarterback kind of checked off to the man who Chris was sticking, and uh, I happened to back up and tip the ball, and he came up with a good catch. And you knew what to do with it, huh? Yeah, I, I, I kind of knew what to do with uh, when I caught the ball. They've been uh, joking on me a lot about not scoring when I get the interception. So today uh, I had to go out and try to make it. I, I wanted it bad today. That's why I dove in the uh, end zone. They moved the ball up and down the field on us, but we came up with the big plays when we had to, and we prevailed. And, yeah. That's right. It must be remembered that the defense got a score and stopped them on several key times. Um, we knew we had to score at least one touchdown today, uh, get some turnovers for the offense, and that's exactly what we did and came out victorious. Yeah, it was a good game. I mean, it was a good win for us. We went out. We prepared well for it. They caught us in some situations sometimes, but defense made big plays, and we were able to overcome the obstacle. Don't know what your situation next will be next week, but I know you'll be with that one way or the other. Yeah, we're going to take a trip up to Birmingham Monday and have a look at it, and we'll just go from there. Full day's work all the way to the end, all the way to the end. Your guys hung in there a long time. I know. Heck, we give up a big – we make a big play, and then we give up a big play. You know, it's been one of those years, yeah, but it was fun. Remembered that you got a touchdown and you stopped them two or three key times. Oh, Lord, it was a lot of fun. Kids are playing hard. You know, Phil, you look at what we got. You know, they're just playing their hearts out. That's all I can say. Wish we had more than five minutes today. We'll be back with Coach Terry Bowden and the highlights of the great win in just a minute. It was a warm and humid day at Sanford Stadium, and I bet the coach was worried about uh, the pass rush. Going to well, have to rush him 50 any, times? Anytime you got uh, warm weather, and, and warm weather this late, we haven't had that much lately, it's going to affect your pass rush because those guys give out earlier. But it didn't happen, and, uh, and they were ready. Our fans were there. It was a great uh, day. I tell you, fans, y'all are, are helping us win ball games. Uh, and true. What, your, your excitement before the game, during the game, and after the game meant as much to our victory as anything else. You really set the tone on the first defensive series here by this is the first three plays they run, and you stop them every time. Three straight series, and, we, and stopped everybody. Big uh, Anthony Harris knocks one down. We get, we get three good plays, and boy, I tell you, everybody's rushing him hard. Primus was right there. Primus right there. Now, here we almost had seven points the other way right here. You see how close it actually came. Third play of the game, watch this. 
Boom. Oh. Nobody there to get him, but he throws a hard ball. The quarterback does a good job. It's hard to break on it quite the same, and we come right back and, and to get this thing going. Critical third and ten. Nice play from Stan White, Sean Carter. Uh, little out pattern. We had to change some of the things we were doing. Then a big play stand, ducks under the pressure, hits old Richardson, uh, Tony for a big first down, and get this thing going. And uh, we come out with a pretty good first series. At the Georgia 38 now, great block. Steve Davis took the uh, opening call. He started for us, just not so much because of a, uh, uh, anything other than to take some attention off of one. There's Tony Richardson coming back. The same score he had against New Mexico State last week, same type of play field position. Offense cranked it up, uh, defense cranked up. Good start for us. Okay, on their next series, you stop them. Uh, this is a second and seven you're about to see with Zaire getting sacked by Primus. Well, the I tell you, pressure the was good early. Pressure was super. Primus had, a, had an outstanding day, and all the all defensive front, I, I think, Kurt Crane and Joe Witt did a great job preparing those young men for what they had to do, and pressure was there all day. Another touchdown type interception, Brian Robinson, and so, boy, it makes you frustrated, but frustrating them too. In the interim there, though, Georgia went 96 yards to tie the score, and now Auburn has a, 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 a comeback. Uh, Here's a third drive. and two. It's a third and two, and they're trying to stop a short yardage. Uh, too many say, too many of the defensive backs are up close. James Bostick popped it right through, and we're up 14 to seven. And uh, we began to build a little bit of a lead here that they could never come back and, and, and catch up. Two wild defensive plays right here. Well, look at this. Well, see, when you first go the ball right here, you're supposed to pick it up and run. Now, as other people get around, the job is not to pick it up, but to jump on it. And so there's a time to, to pick it up and a time to fall on it. Right here, that cost us. But thank goodness, right here, come back. Watch David, David Primus' hand rip around right there and strip the ball. Great mm -hmm. job there, uh, causing the fumble now as, as he stripped the, the ball carrier. And Calvin Jackson came up with it. And so Auburn's going to turn this turnover into a touchdown for a two-touchdown lead. Put into a touchdown. Here's a boy, I tell you, scrambles. Beautiful play to uh, Stan White to scramble and hit the second receiver. Frank Sanders, who if he had stumbled down, he could have scored. Watch 82, blocking on the uh, Butkus Award nominee there. Boy, Andy Fuller did a great job. We ran a stretch stretch right there and got to the side of the end zone and uh, uh, got in on a quick third and two. Now you'll have an opportunity to to make, uh, to go up by three, but uh, you, you can't quite do it. But you got to stop them first here. This is second and four. Boy, good defense. The defense swarmed and played so hard. It was we had so much riding on this game. Personally, we didn't talk about it much in the public, but this we won this game so much. Oh, there's another one. Almost looked identical to the other, and kind of kind of scares you when you see that. But we go in with a 14-point lead now, and you get that great halftime talk. If we don't, they don't score, we're going to win the game. You must, uh, did they do, with, with the week they had off to prepare and maybe add some stuff, did, did they present you with anything uh, unusual that you had to adjust to? Not really. I think defensively, they, they, we know the best ways to stop our offense, and we know what they know is the best way. They just weren't able to do it with who they had. Offensively, I think they worked a little bit more in the running game. Early in the game, if they had not gotten behind, their running game was going to be a factor. But they got behind so much, 21-7, to 7, they discarded it and went to their pass, and then we got exactly into the game we thought we would have. And we'll be back with some halftime comment in just a minute. The Auburn Network is preparing a couple of items so that you'll remember this magical season the Tigers are having. First, the highlight video, will, which will appropriately be titled Attitude, is in the works right now. will be out well before Christmas, early in December. It will be $29.95. And the soft cover book, pictures and statistics and the whole story uh, in a soft cover book will be uh, just $14.95. And here's how you can order each of them now. Get your order in early. Uh, that's the phone number to call right there, 1-800-488-3883. And I'm glad to see you have your attitude pin on again this week. You got some calls about that, huh? Oh, yeah, I had to wear it. I get nervous talking about the season like it's <laughs> over. I guess we have to do that to get, the, get everyone their, their abilities to get things for Christmas. But it makes you nervous, though, when you got one more big one, because the book isn't finished, right. is it? <laughs> no, there's still a chapter. There's a chapter unwritten. <laughs> there's a chapter to be written. Uh, the Attitude Pins, by the way, uh, can be bought at uh, all, uh, several retail outlets, in particular the Auburn bookstores, and then they will also uh, be on sale again at the Auburn Tailgate Show prior to the game uh, uh, at the stadium. We'll be back in just a minute with an exciting second half. 
Okay, we'll get right to the second half. If you actually come out, put a good drive together, but you get stopped on fourth down, and then Georgia starts the other way, and the big play. Well, that's right. We, uh, we got stopped, and then a big play comes. The very first, here it is, there's nothing happening, and all of a sudden, they're about to score. Uh, Brian Robinson bats the ball up. Chris Schilling, he just wanted to score. I'm not sure he's faster than those other two <laughs> fellas. But he just wanted to score more than they wanted to tackle him. That, it's a great effort. I think he was exhausted when it happened. And he made a great cut there to run to the other side and put some distance between them. You know, that, that could have been one of those turning points in the ball game. But, you know, within, within 45 seconds, we kick off them on the very first play. They hit one going across the middle, uh, caught us uh, out of position and score. And this, it negates that in one shot. But there's a key right here, a key third and eight. We get eight and a quarter. You got to come back You're on this drive. And Here's a key third and 12. Stan steps around. Wow. He gets 17 to, to Reed McMillan. Uh, offensive line just continues to block well with Coach Trickett and uh, Stacy Searles it continues to block well. Now there's a key play, and then there's that counter. We haven't run that but three times in the last five games. It showed on our self scout, uh, self scout analysis. But it was a big play. The counter play was a big play to Stan Boston. St uh, not Stan Boston. <laughs> James Boston. The fade in the corner of the end zone. We haven't seen that all year. Wow. Stan's been wanting to throw that, and uh, uh, Frank's been wanting to catch it. My brother Tommy made the call, and I said, let's go with it. And it was something I never get to watch them practice work on that when they do it during kicking practice, and they were perfect. There's our fans. They begin to drive. Now it's in the fourth quarter, and, and they go all the way on this drive, and they're still in it. It's 35-21 to 21 now, but with the with Zaire throwing the football, they can score very quickly. Well, that was a, I, I thought it was a little bit of pass interference there as he pushed off and worked back the outside. There's that counter play again. And boy, I tell you, every time they scored, this was frustrating for Georgia. Every time they made something happen, we countered with something else. And, and, and Bostic, 180-something yards on uh, less than 20 carries. Uh, boy, does he super in the backfield. And, and again, when you're heading towards that end zone with our fans down there and those shakers, uh, boy, those players, just they just want to get in that end zone. But the pressure, see how they put pressure after pressure on him. Hmm. Another near interception, the third one for Brian Robson. He's going to see that in his head over and over again. Here's the step up. Big Mark Johnson, what a great play. Maybe the play of his career that helped win the football game for Auburn as Mark Johnson made the interception that probably uh, was the, the, the broke the camel's back with that one. Mm -hmm. But later in the series, we had scored. They come back and score uh, much later in the game, and now it's in the last quarter, and it's only seven. Only seven, and they're going to try the onside kick. There's about three and a half minutes left. They got a chance. Chris Schilling makes the big play right there. And now if we can just run some time, three and a half minutes, if we can just run some time, move the ball uh, down. Here's a third and two, and they expect us to run the football. You take Stan White, you throw it to Frank Sanders. That's as good a chance as anything else. Key first down, and then watch, this, watch the little play right here. Reed got a great block on Great the block corner. by Reed. Uh, Tom, uh, Todd Bowen had a great day on the offensive line blocking for us on several plays. And uh, sure uh, there's the difference right there as the defense held on. Our fans, uh, boy, I tell you, the fans were there every minute. And, uh, of course, it's a, it, was a, it was a tough loss for Georgia. I know as they had wanted to go to a bowl game, the win might have helped them. But uh, they've had some great days the last few years, and we've struggled. And this conference is tough. Why's well, the coach? Remember the crowd. <laughs> oh, the, you can't help but help to thank that crowd as they're there. Uh, as strong as they are during that game. And uh, it's been, it's so far, I mean, and, and we've got maybe a, a whole season ahead of us. But so far, it has been a, it has been, you talk about the Auburn family and the Auburn spirit and the Auburn team. It's all been together and it's been responsible. Everybody's been, been, been helpful. Back in just a minute with some closing comments. Transportation for the Tigers provided by Delta Airlines. Delta, the official airline of the Auburn Tigers. A couple of comments now, and we will put this great win to rest. Uh, this was a textbook case of what the run can do, because Georgia actually gained more yardage than Auburn did, but those 300 yards uh, rushing were vital to this win. Well, I think, I think any coach would tell you if you can have 300 yards passing or 300 yards rushing, you would like to be the type of team that can have 300 yard rushing because the type of team that can rush for 300 when it gets to be short yardage or it gets to be goal line or you've got to just hold on to the ball to stop the clock to run the clock out it's the running game that helps the defense out and helps you win ball games so the excitement is passing and we're, that's always going to be a part of our future but the running god can never you can never cast away that running game i believe that's that's i don't care where you are that is still part of football it's always been there and always will be there now the big one yeah, now the big one. I, you keep wondering, can it get bigger? But you really know it can. The, you throw the records out. You know, the 10-0, the we've said what we're excited about, what we've accomplished. 
but now you've got one where you throw the record book out, Alabama, and and, uh, and uh, my players. I'm going to ask them to help me on this one. Help me, help me prepare because I'm. It, it's just uh, it's. To me, it's always been something I've had to look from the outside. And uh, we've got to play a great game against the defending national champion, the defending conference champion, for the state championship and for the level of the season. Auburn fans will never forget the 1989 game, the first ever game played at Auburn. This is the second one, and uh, there have been some incidents in college football this year where emotions are high that have really been bad, and I know Auburn fans want to avoid that. And you have some plans for Tiger Walk. Well, that's right. You know, everybody that I've talked to that, that's associated with Auburn thinks that the 89 game is one of the greatest experiences they had at Auburn Stadium. They never forget it. Their children never forget it. And the Tiger Walk is a major part of that experience. But we have got to really think about how we're going to conduct ourselves because the Tiger Walk is only for Tiger people. If someone got hurt, it would just be one of us. And we saw what happened at Wisconsin. We have got to really do some thinking about we, how we handle ourselves because one child, whether it be mine or yours, to get fall down and have problems, it may jeopardize the Tiger Walk forever. And we really need to do some thinking. We're going to come out with some things, I think, from the university to help each other. We're going to communicate that to our fans. And I hope we will all get together and have the, the most beautiful Tiger Walk we've ever had. But we'll all be careful in how we conduct ourselves. It will really be a, uh, just a, a marvelous occasion. I, I, I'm so sorry we don't have television, but uh, that's, that's the way it is. Alabama is, uh, has shown some improvement. 20 seconds on Alabama if you got a coach. Oh, they're, they're just, I mean, they, they're going to come here with the, the best defense that we've played all year, uh, the most explosive player maybe in the country in David Palmer, uh, a quarterback that's now healthy, and uh, he has led them to no defeats, never been defeated, I don't think, Jay Barker in 20 or 21 uh, games. Uh, a great football team. Really will be a great day, and we'll have the replay for you on Sunday. Thank you. See you next week. Coach Bowden's apparel provided by The Locker Room. This has been the Auburn Football Review. team in here if there's ever been a true champion you have stood the test paid the price done everything that you can do when you got an O at the end of it men that's all you can ask and you've done it in style and you've done it in class and I congratulate you and I ain't got to tell you what you mean to me and I shall enjoy this cigar oh, listen man Today, and I don't have to tell you, but today, you have set the standard. The greatest football team ever played at Auburn University, 11-0, because of what you did on the field, 11-0. It's never been done before. There's better teams, maybe. There, ever, there, there can be better, but you have done something nobody else can do, and no one will ever take it. You'll be the benchmark that they look to. And then one more thing. Absolutely. Today, I became an Auburn man. <laughs> took so long. <laughs>
Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos pressure-treated pine. If it doesn't say Osmos on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Your Alabama John Deere dealer. Nothing runs like a deer. Buy Golden Flake snack foods. One taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. LDDS Communications, the official long-distance carrier of the Auburn Alumni Association. Likes hot dogs. One bite and you'll know why they say, when it's likes, it's gone. Your Alabama Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. And by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, the caring company. Auburn's dream season is complete. Auburn 22, Alabama 14. Congratulations, Terry Bowden, on a record-setting year. Well, I can't say enough about it, all the players and all the people and the fans. I really think we could take this team, if we could take our fans with us on planes to anywhere in the country, this team would beat any team in the country. And I think those pollsters uh, need to step up and look at this team now because this team may be the best team in the country. Uh, I can't think of a better way to uh, go and uh, into the dressing room now and talk to some of the players after this marvelous Saturday at Jordan Hare. Oh, how many times I've heard you say, "I have to be ready. I have to be ready. I have to stay in the game." Well, it's just—it's unreal. You know, I—I I thought about it all week, and you know, I do every week. I get those gut feelings that this is the week, and you know, I prayed about it all week, and just. You know, I just wanted to do my job, and I wanted to be the part, whatever part I had to play, whether it be, you know, signal the plays in, just look at the defenses, tell, stand what's going on, you know, I just wanted to do whatever I could do. I hate to end my season like that, but there's no greater win than I've ever been associated with. Patrick did a great job coming in and, and keeping his poise, and, and uh, the offense got it going, you know, started moving the ball. You know, I've just never been associated with a win so big, and, and heck, I, I, my knees kill me right now, but it doesn't feel near as good as the way I'm Phil, you know. Tony Knight, you know, said, you know, if we don't do it, we're going to lose. We had to do it. What do you see? Somebody on fire here? I think it's Harold. <laughs> <laughs> what turned it you around? You <laughs> what turned it around? Um, we just believed in ourselves and came out in the second half, played hard, played together, and we pulled it out. Ain't nobody take this away from us. It's the best year it's made. Five years is beautiful. I love it. <laughs> when my grandchildren are on my knee and I'm sitting there sucking on Werther's original I can sit there and tell them about the great day that we beat Alabama and went in 11-0. We gave them, you know, two touchdowns this year, guys, but still, they didn't come away with the W, though. It's ours. And Auburn is back. Well, Patrick came in, did a great job as far as coming in and take over. I can't take anything with Patrick. He's a great quarterback. He's going to lead them to a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of more success in the future. He did what he had to do. He came in. That's all we've been doing all season. People have been stepping up and you know, doing what he had to do. He did his part. So, hey, we're 11-0. We're, we're champions. To go out and everything's against you, the only people believe is your teammates and your coaches and a few select fans and win 11 games, I, I couldn't even, I couldn't even, I don't even know the word. I mean, I, I don't know what else to that good to, to tell you. I thought he was going to punt. But Patrick came and said, oh, it was 4th and 15. Then Patrick said, well, two, he just said, 278, um, Z takeoff. And I was like, what? <laughs> I thought we were going to punt, but, you know what I mean? I guess, I guess it's just something to come in with confidence boosters. Coach Biden did a great job of calling. I mean, you know, he, he stepped it up when he had to. And, and Antonio didn't go to your side that time? Nope. Um, coach, the Coach Bowden had read it that Tommy Bowden had read that um, he was playing me just to the field and wasn't playing me to the um, boundary. And he kind of had tricked him up with that play. And I guess I was on gas to him. There were no hops. Stan being hurt, Patrick had to come in and step up. And like I said, he had been playing that much the season, you know. But everybody we knew he had confidence in him. And like I said, he came in, threw the touchdown, and got his team started. And Coach said in the um, locker room before we went back out that we went out to run the ball. And like I said, we just geared down and got with the running game, and like I said, it was working for us. What a player, Coach. Well, I mean, there's so many of them. And, you know, at halftime, I said everybody believed they're going to be the guy to make a play that wins the game. And if everybody tries, one of you will make it happen. It was Patrick Nix, and, and, and I'm not sure everyone would have guessed it would be Pat Amazing. Nix. Wonderful story. Okay, due to our time constraints, we're just going to show you a couple of three plays of the first half. And it was during this time, really, that you established the things you had to do to win the game. Well, in the first half, it, it, was, a, it was a strategy battle. Our seniors come onto the field, but you'll see the first half, it was a, a battle. I mean, I'm sitting there trying to find a way to get, the, get past the line of scrimmage. And they had an excellent defensive plan. We could not get much past the line of scrimmage. And our defense was doing well. They had a couple of big plays. 
but really one of the key factors of the game was our deep Wayne Hall and our defensive strategy to take David Palmer out of the game. Don't he, let him run after the catch. He didn't. He was not a factor in this game whatsoever in any phase of the game, and we go ahead three to nothing. Uh, but they had two big plays, two big offensive plays. Uh, I think three plays for two scores, right. and really those were big, big scores. Mm -hmm. And you'll see here again where they get the ball to a great athlete. But see, gang tackling is so important. You, you can't beat a, a one-man uh, like that with one guy. You have to have a lot of people in our team hustling to the football field. I'm very nervous. It was my first Auburn-Alabama game <laughs> in my life, and I was very nervous. Great pressure on their fine quarterback, Jay Barker. And uh, defense, it, it was just intensity for 60 minutes. And um, uh, to give us a 7-5 game, I think we haven't seen the safety yet, but you're going to see another coverage. Or that was just the safety, but... but, but you know, the kicking game was so vital with this guy. He can beat you so many ways, but he never got started. That's right. And, and again, the key, the funny, because the first half, the highlights are our ability to contain Palmer, and that being an important strategy of the game was very, very critical uh, to the final outcome of the game. And so it was 14-5 to five at the half, and uh, I think the, some of the fans, uh, maybe uh, including myself, did not believe, but but this team has come back seven of the last eight games. So why not? Well, you know, it, it, again, it was a very frustrating first half because, again, uh, uh, Brother Oliver, their defensive coordinator, had put a defense there that we could not beat. They had us in a situation where they had us in the right fronts, their personnel was matched up, and they were just beating us. There's no excuses. They were just beating us. Uh, so in the second half, there was no change. Someone had to step up. It was going to be player against player. And in the second half, some players stepped up, and they the big plays made the difference. In the second half, our defense played well the whole game. And they certainly did. And we'll be back to see that exciting second half in just a minute. Okay, as we move to the second half of play now, get your pen and pencil out because we have some important uh, information for you, telephone numbers and such that uh, we'll give you in a few moments. Time to uh, to play, Coach. Down 14 to 5. I walked a pair of shoes off my feet, I think, in this game. And again, the press, the first, I'm going to tell you, people always talk about the turnaround offensively. The defense changed the game because of the way they set the tempo in the opening series is for Alabama. Sack after sack. Look at that. Look at Anthony Harris jump over top and two sacks in a row. Ended up being fourth and 29 and gave us some field position. Here you'll almost see, and here's a great punt return. Almost a breakout right here if the punter hadn't, hadn't made the tackle. It was going to go all the way. But gave us great field position there that began to get at the game swung around now. Now you have an interception here, but still the momentum doesn't swing with the interception. No, we did. We were they, they, now we were mixing it up. We were mixing it up. They try to make something outside. Wow. Just great pursuit and great third, effort to pursue. Third and seven, right here. Right here, we're just making the plays again. Defensive hustle, uh, defensive uh, effort. And uh, we begin to help the plays, and Stan gets this thing going now. Watch the great effort. We, they cover the pass. Watch this now. Wow. He makes it by one yard on the fourth. You don't just you don't win games unless you do things like that to make a play like that. Reed McMillan comes in. We're now we're beginning to bust it. We've got him watching the pass. We've got the things going east and west, so we can get back inside. Stan now gets the ball down to the 30 with a beautiful pass to Frank oh, Sanders, wow. and now you've got him guessing a little bit. It okay. took a while. Two plays later. Uh, Stan is injured, and here comes Patrick Nix on 4th and 15. Well, it was 4th and 15. He wasn't warmed up, so we threw a short side takeoff. Beautiful play. I don't see any pushing off or any penalties whatsoever on that play. Just a beautiful play by Frank Sanders and a beautiful pass that was thrown high for a completion. And that was the turning point, I think, in the ball game. Now this place is going crazy. It is rocking. Well, the, the number of the, the, the fans, if you knew how much you... Uh, can help a football game or involve number of maybe procedure penalties that are caused by people by players that can't hear and here comes i mean james bostick i mean all you got to do is keep feeding the ball and it's going to happen he's powerful he's tough and he says bring me the ball and bring it to me third and two great third down play you know great point Alabama was one of 13 on third down conversions, and we were six for 18. Six but yards rushing in the second half. They six had yards six yards rushing. rushing. You know, we had 38 minutes of control clock to their 21, and we had 218 yards of rushing. Those were the things that helped us win a ball game. As the fourth quarter begins, they hold on the goal line, and you kick the field goal to go ahead 15-14. Well, that's the, that's the one that put us up. Now we turn the pressure over to them. They've got to score to win, and they've got to kick into the win in the fourth quarter. There again is team. Look, watch how many people come to jump on and help. Uh, Kevin Lee was hurt, but thank goodness he was able to walk off the field. And, and boy, it was a physical game. I, it was big play here now. Watch the big play. Uh, 
Brian Robinson makes a big interception, brings it back down. Now we've got the ball in their territory again. But I'm going to tell you, that was a very physical game. If you ever thought you wanted to go out there and play in a game like this, you better be tough. <laughs> People were knocked around all day. Right here is a critical third down. Third and three. And it puts up a fourth and, fourth and inches. And Alabama decides to go for it here early in the fourth quarter. Mike Pelton, he doesn't even come play. close to the line of scrimmage. And it's just by a host of tacklers, let's mm. just say. Great defensive charge, low and hard. And it puts us down there, deep in their territory. And now, Pat Nick's comeback hits a little under route. Watch the effort now, the fullback. Everything's extra effort at this point in the game. Everything is heart and desire. There's the great run down here. It puts it down inside the 10-yard line, down to three. And a critical series here that makes the game a heart stopper for everybody. Let's remember, Alabama's we, a great defensive football. That's, that's right. They did a great job. That's not a fake field goal. <laughs> it's a muffed snap. Not a great call. A muffed snap. Scott Etheridge's got to work on his blocking. <laughs> that's right. And uh, here we are. And, that, boy, I'll tell you, all I could do was see was eight points. Touchdown, two-point conversion, Tennessee game yeah. for Alabama. Yeah. And somehow this game could be hurt. Darrell McGee, great interception there. Great comeback. He got beat against Georgia on a big pass play. He makes the great play, Daryl did. And now we've got a chance to continue to get our drive going. Tony Richardson kills a linebacker. Killed a linebacker. Watch him use his blockers. And he was not going to be stopped this time. James Bostick is, everybody's here, 140-something, you know, 143 yards for mm -hmm. the day. If he's not, everybody's all SEC. I don't and know the hardest lick he took was when Tony hit him in the end zone. There. Tony, I don't know where Tony's <laughs> helmet went between the, the line of scrimmage and the goal line, but he tackled him full speed. <laughs> now it's Holdem, that one final time. Well, again, the, look at the, the pressure after pressure after pressure. You've got to give the Alabama young men a great effort. They gave great effort, and they never quit at Alabama. And this was two great football programs playing the greatest rivalry in the country, and it went down to the wire. But look at them come back. Jason Miska a sack there. And one now, final time now. And all you're thinking is, is, is Palmer going to make one play? That's all you could think the whole game. Right here, oh, one interception could stop it, but it wasn't going to be. And every play just kept it going. And then it ended. It was a great, great win. Oh, my. What a victory. What a victory. One for the folklore of Auburn football. Well, like I say, this was a win for everyone at Auburn. We could not have had the season that we had without Coach Dye, who brought this thing back to, to Auburn, who brought that game to the Plains where it, it'll never leave, uh, without those fans who this year showed that they could be the best in the country. Okay, we'll be back in just a moment uh, with some very pertinent information. Get your pen and pencil. As we speak, the Auburn Network is preparing a highlight video of the Alabama game. A lot of exclusive video, a lot of great things that you wanted to, to see. The title of the video, Victory at Jordan-Hare, Part 2. It's only $19.95. will be available at Parisian stores beginning of December 1st. J&M and Anders Bookstores will also carry the video. Now, the network is also working on a season highlight video, which will be out very soon. It's called Attitude, the story of the 1993 Auburn Tigers, available in early December, well before Christmas. It will sell for $24.95, available at Parisian, local Auburn book outlets. They're also working on a hardcover book chronicling the 1993 season. I should say a softcover book. It's $14.95, available at Bookland, Books A Million stores, as well as local Auburn outlets. Now, that's the phone number where you can order all three of those. The phone number is 1-800-488-3883. We will give you that number one more time before the program is over, and we will be right back for the biggest celebration you have ever seen. I have never seen a post-game like we are about to see. It was the... It's the last game of the year, and, and such a situation, Coach. I guess the fans and the players and everybody just felt that they had to stay and celebrate for a while. Well, it, it was just an occasion meant for everyone. And I think, uh, you know, you can't, you can't plan it. You can't decide what's supposed to happen. We thought we would try to get out and say something early, but that really didn't work all that well. It just has to happen. And uh, I mean, I, it was cold. That was real <laughs> yeah, cold. That. <laughs> it's the greatest, the greatest thrill of my life. Uh, Oh, uh, I've had being a part of that. My wife and well, I. Well, the first so thing excited. you have to do now, you have to go through the uh, regular stuff. You have to greet the other coach. Reach the ritual thing, yeah. and again, coach and coach Coach Stone is very gracious uh, uh, there at the middle of the field, and, and our and the 
fans and the, the players. Of course, this is, a, this is a game about players. It's not a yeah. game about anything else but players that probably went to high school together, grew up in the same neighborhoods, and sometimes were made out to be a lot different, but they're not. And the and Alabama uh, fans are still in the stands. It was there. just a great day, and I, and I wanted to go see the students. I'll tell you, our students have become a big factor in the future of Auburn football again, and, and I want to come over and see the stands over here because everybody was such a part. <laughs> <laughs> I was so proud of them. It started at the... Uh, the pep rally Friday yeah. night, it all started, and we had a little pep rally, and it all it started. It was amazing, wasn't it? It really was. Gee whiz. And it stands out there, his, his knee doesn't hurt at all uh, oh, after my. the season he had. And what I a way to my, finish his career after all he's been Wayne through. Hall, I tell you, the guy's done so much for Auburn and been such a special part. And this is just to make sure he stays with us forever. <laughs> Look at perfect attitude on the Matrix board. Then. That's what it's all about. It's not a new attitude. It's a renewed attitude. That's all it is at Auburn. No. Oh. And there they come. <laughs> Breaking out the cigars. Well, these guys wouldn't smoke them because their mamas watch this show. I did my mama watching, so I definitely wasn't going to smoke a cigar. <laughs> and there's all the players so happy. And, and the coach died of coming to be a part. Yeah. Coach Trickett is a great, one of the best country country dancers. What a so. job he's done. Oh, he's done a marvelous job. I knew it. I knew when I wanted to get I got the job. I said, I've got to hire Rick Trickett. Uh, there's a lot of great coaches. He's one that I, I totally believed in. But they're, they're, and, he, and he's about my height, which makes it nice. <laughs> But uh, Reed McMillan has kind of always been the spokesman for as long yeah. as I can remember. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I think the person who orchestrated uh, this team and, and brought this team together, I was honored to share the, the, the stand right there with, with Coach Pat Dye. Eleven War Eagles in the dressing room this year, Coach. That's I was going to say, I never, nobody ever told me, do we do the War Eagle if we lose? I don't know. I've no. never been there. No, you <laughs> Somebody better tell me. I don't want to know. But, <laughs> and, and I think we all know that we've been through a very special season. And we have set the stage for building a future, recruiting-wise, completely, that's going to help. There are going to be some losses somewhere in the future, sure, and they're going sure. to be some, but we have built the foundation of an Auburn program that can go up and match anyone in the country. Back with a final word. Air transportation for the Tigers provided by Delta Airlines. Delta, the official airline of the Auburn Tigers. Okay, we'll put that uh, phone number up one more time for the three products, the highlight videos and the soft cover book, 1-800-488-3883. And, you know, I'd just like to take this time, too, to thank all of our sponsors. You know, seasons like this, programs like this, this couldn't be possible without a lot of people giving a lot of support. And we need you now. We need you in the future. Thank you so much for some, what you've meant to us and continue to mean to us. Coach, this Auburn story may not be over. It rests in the hands of some AP voters, really. I feel that's exactly right. And, and, and I'm dead serious. If we're the only undefeated team at the end of the, end of the season, I want those AP voters to get out there and vote for the best football team, the Leather and Auburn Tigers, if that's the way it goes. Got to spend Thanksgiving with the family? And I'm going to be there with my father down there in Tallahassee. Good. I don't have a house Good. yet and hope they win a couple more. All right. We will see you next year on the Auburn Football Review. Coach Bowden's apparel provided by The Locker Room. This has been the Auburn Football Review. 